sound of going live. Yeah. The sound of, oh. the sound this is of the sound going, of live. going live. That's all of the, uh, the electric internet going through the pipes. Oh up. boy. It's working. So maybe what happened last time will happen where everything went glitchy and weird at the beginning and we'll have to restart. I hope that's, that's exciting. not exciting, but uh, you never know. We'll see. Chat will let me know soon enough. What do you have against you glitchy like weirdness? Glitchy weirdness. Yeah. Pretty bigoted, if you ask me. It's yeah. just me, they say, as the third comment. Loser. Uh, nice try, idiot. Three's a crowd, <laughs> okay? That's what they say. That's the, that's the saying. See, we've got lots of hellos. I don't see any... Oh. Uh, Hello. Any goodbyes? Oh, no, that would be odd if they you. said that, Mahler. Uh, well, why would you want to say We just goodbye? begun. No, I'm saying there's no there's no goodbyes. Okay. Anyway. It would be odd if they said that because we just started. We just arrived. That's we a really good here. observation. I agree with you. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm just trying to pull my fucking weight around here, if you don't mind. <laughs> Give us another one. You said before we went. Now listen, this is not acceptable. <laughs> before we started, wow. this motherfucker said, "Hey, we need to do some banter." And some Elden Ring was mentioned. I don't know. I'm sure Theo's gonna shit on all over it for whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about a gardening <laughs> or a tree or whatever. And then Baller was like, "We got a banter." So here I am bantering about greetings and whatnot, and he's like, "Oh, the the rags of fool." I'm not. Put on. I'm your doing what you said hat. to do. Do it. Little jester hat. I did. I am wearing a hat right now. It's a black hat. And do some somersaults while going. <laughs> yeah. I am not, however, even though I'm wearing a black hat, I am not a black hat. That's right. And do a little dance. Go on, dance. Go I, I can dance. Anyway. Well, I'm not going to do it right now. Oh. oh the visual okay. component Isn't that, that is... what they all say. Listen, they don't all say that. I'm not gonna right now. <laughs> no, I that's, know the answer, that's not but I'm something not gonna a lot of people you. say at all. What you need to understand is that dancing is very heavily implied to have a strong visual component, and so without that, mm. it's just, you know, like, I'm not gonna bother. Plus, I'd have to take you off know, the headset, you know, I'd have to hop down off this chair. have sufficient imagination to Yeah, uh, I, the dancing of the right mind, though. as they say. That's right. All right, all right, okay, fine. If you fine, uh, look, I'm doing it. Here I go. Wow. Whoa, look at him go. Wow. Really yeah, yeah, see that. Well, yeah, I'm a fast dancer. <laughs> I don't believe it. Look, I I just, because we're, just because we're trying to imagine it, it doesn't mean that you have the right to lie to us. I do have. I I do though, right? I, I think he does have the right to lie to us. Right? Yeah. Or that rather that you 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 ought not you should you should dance for real. Is Ooh, lying a protected here, right? I don't know actually. <laughs> Surely I could like how many skittles are in the cup? I can lie about that legally. I assume, right? Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> maybe. I think I'll do oh, nothing maybe. about that. <laughs> I'd watch yourself. Maybe just don't comment on the number of skittles in the tube. You know, <laughs> I was under the impression that there were seventeen skittles, and so the reality <laughs> of there being eighteen does not make me a liar. It makes me confused. I cannot confirm or deny the allegations as to there being eighteen <laughs> skittles in the tube. You want you want some banner? I'd skittles like a lawyer. Suck. Oof. Wow, well, I think they suck. I like M and M's more, but I don't. M and M's are the better, superior. But, you know. Yeah, M and M's are clearly better. It is not a credit well, to M and M's that they're of, better because it's, it's just chocolate, effect, really. Right? If if somebody likes uh, if somebody likes Skittles, you know, for like being sour, or if they just prefer that. Oh taste, you know, like, yeah, oh, sour right. Skittles. Those are all right. Sour Skittles are all right. They're better than oh. default Skittles. Oh boy! All right. Well, I mean, you know, it's. it's... You can have your opinions here. You don't this agree? Opinion podcast, every frame oh, no, of opinion. I personally, I personally frame like M&M more, but I like chocolate more. I mean, on mm. the sour Skittle question. I like those more than the regular Skittles, yeah. Yeah, I do too. All right, well, that, that's oh. settled then, yes? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Excellent. We've I, wonder, we did, I wonder if there's we... any viability to, like, coffee-based Skittles of just, like, it's just totally bitter. <laughs> you know, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some coffee Skittles. That sounds revolting on... There's probably a, coffee... a market for that. There's probably just a, a market. It's just a coffee bean with, like, green paint around it or something, like food coloring. <laughs> some guy in a factory just paints some S's on them. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's, he's, like, everyone... he's got his tiny little paintbrush and... Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Everyone, when they were kid, had that moment where they tried a coffee bean and realized, oh, this is awful. Well, I mean, Rax, how do you feel about coffee in general? Yeah. I'm not a coffee guy. I will drink coffee if it's got a lot of stuff done to it. Milk and cream and sugar and stuff like that. But black coffee, I think, is just... I think it tastes vile. I hate it. I think it's awful. It's, it's um, that, And that's what I drink every day. I I like my yeah, my mom does. Coffee. I don't know how she does it. Jesus. So do you have, like, a little machine that makes the thing? It's really easy, actually. Like a, like a Keurig? Sure. Well, because there is a difference between one of your words, black metal. coffee if you make <laughs> no. it. You no. Know, putting the coffee in and then pouring the hot water in. And all right, well, my job's done. But I don't like black coffee myself. I need milk in there and sugar. When I was, when I was younger and I first experienced the broken promise of the difference between the smell of coffee and the taste of coffee, that was like oh, a full. No, moment. right? Oh, my, I love the <laughs> smell of coffee. Coffee <laughs> smells wonderful, but the taste is. Uh... It requires heavy moderation uh, and experimentation and tampering from its natural state for me to be, you know, into that's, it. Uh, that's what the barista arts are all about, you know? Yeah. Okay, oh. brilliant. How about them another, all right, next, another, uh, next banter topic. Another, yes, another right. banter done. With, another case with, closed. With so much <laughs> mediation and conflict that. resolution here. Yeah. I'm so great at this. Kind of really intense, actually, in my opinion. So. Um, you know, we uh, before we get started on the main event, everyone is here to see us uh, be re-educated into the world of loving the acolyte. It'll be very exciting. Uh -huh. Ooh, I love the there. acolyte. Oh, I can't wait here. until the next episode happens, we and we get to watch it together. Very much indeed. Have a little. Uh, is it still okay to say chin wag, or is that offensive now? I haven't even heard that word before. But I was about to say, are you referring to the main hexer? Because that's really offensive to call him that. <laughs> it's when you have his name is not chat. Chin Wag. Uh, it's wonderful, <laughs> I, I think personally, and 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 I just I wonder how many words are they going to take from us. That's all I have to say. How long before like they take more. the word word? Wow. Well, I don't know. Take the phrase phrase. Oh my god! I believe you said that so 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 just like this. Kind of fucked. Offended greatly. Now, Offender Rooney. Um. Okay. You let's yeah. we'll. We, we, I'm just sorry. I'm just. I'm just moving things around. Okay. You, this will make sense. You, you never. Uh, this is great banter. Nice. Why don't you know? You know. You all came out recently. A little DLC for a little video game, and we happen to be in luck. We were waiting for uh, the wonderful people to pour in. So why don't why don't we have banter about that? Metal, Thea, why, why don't you tell Whoa. us what it's been like? And I will inject my opinions here and there because I've played some Wait, of it as well. You didn't, what about me? You've never played it. You suck. You're the worst. You you could well, go listen, talk about I, people saying goodbye or whatever. I know that I, <laughs> I I would have liked to have been offered to be included in this. Okay, fine. Little platoon, you can talk about it if you want to. Now I have not got... played it. Oh, I will be honest that's about okay. that. There I do go. suck, and I haven't played it. You played any Souls game, you loser. I Big have student. played, like, base game Elden Ring for a bit, but I'm incredibly impatient, and I very quickly lost patience, so I stopped. Mm. It looked good, though. Well, All right. let's find out. Is it good? Metal, Theo, report back from the trenches of video game you land. Wanna, you wanna so go should, first, Metal? I was about to ask, should I talk, or do you just want to hot, spit hot lava immediately? Uh, <laughs> you know, no, Metal, you, get them, get them ready. Get them warmed I'll up. I'll go first. Yeah. I mean, go I'm first. not as harsh, I think, but there's, there's so... I think it's, I haven't finished it yet, but I got through the last boss, I tried him, and that was not a great experience. Uh, and I didn't even get to the second phase, but that's, that's a whole other thing. Uh, from all the bosses I've fought so far, which was like seven, uh, two of them I found enjoyable. One of them is really good. Uh, the rest either just kind of exists or is big wompy guy who moves around fast and the camera almost breaks its neck. You know, the classics. Uh, they did like this weird thing where they so normally when you get a DLC in Elden Ring, you go in there with your with your guy. It's like, yo, I'm gonna do the thing, and then you start doing the DLC. Here you go to the first boss and you get fucking shafted because they have this weird scaling going on, which I still don't know why they did it that way. Uh, and you wonder, well, so you just go and level up more. It's like 
I mean, you could do that, but my character that I went in there was level 171, which is very high for a new game. Gee, that's so many... Le Holy fuck! <laughs> 171? Yeah. It's only 171 levels. Each individual level in a Souls game doesn't give you that much <laughs> on its own. Yeah. You get one point in one stat. Yeah. It all scales. And then... And then, I don't know, they, they make you go explore, which I guess is their idea. You go around, explore, and pick up a, a skibbity uh, blessing. So I, th I think Mauler's Discord uh, uh, called him that. And I I'm just... patient zero for that, I'm afraid. Oh, you were that. <laughs> oh, blessing. see? Yeah, All right. I found yeah. it really funny. Skadu enough. tree is now skibbity blessing, yeah. Yeah. So you have to pick those up, and you get like... Uh, I actually don't know what the percentages are now, but in the beginning it was like four percent more damage and two percent more defense or something. Uh, they Any they scaled it up now for the first ten levels. I, I haven't checked the numbers though, so I, I don't know about that. But yeah, basically you 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 need to go around and uh, pick those up so you get the scaling, and you, the scaling is pretty crazy. Uh, the more you go on, like I think I, when I first checked, my damage was like seven hundred something, and I'm now like. 1,300. Like, I've almost doubled my power just by picking those up. Most of them, they just lie around, so you don't even need to really, I don't know, beat up enemies for it. Uh, a bunch of them are behind bosses. I think there's, like, one boss where you get two that I've encountered so far. I haven't picked them up, all of them, yet. Um, There's five of them behind one boss. Five? Jeez, okay. Five. That's interesting. Um... But yeah, that's not even my biggest problem with DLC. Like, I guess they just, you, you, I guess it's kind of fun to explore if you if you're into that in the beginning. It's like, oh, okay, I found these things, these things, these things. Uh, but then like con consecutive playthroughs, I feel like it's like, oh, that's just another thing of busy work I need to do now instead of just picking up all the, uh, well, all the stuff for upgrading your weapons, getting the levels, and now when you want to do DLC, you need to go around for like forty five minutes, an hour, and just pick all those up. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's fine. But I just think, my main thing with, like, uh, Souls games in general is the bosses. That's the thing I'm looking forward to. I want to go to the next boss, have a great time fighting the boss, and that's it. And most of the bosses, I didn't have the greatest time in the world. They, I they, they have like fight the Fireman. He wasn't even a boss. <laughs> the fi Fireman? Yeah, he was like oh, the, you... the mob, the big mob at the beginning. Oh yeah, he was like a bit like a big guy that they showed in the trails. Like, ooh, look at this big, uh, big man with the fire and stuff. And it's like there's like three of them or four in the DLC that just wander the area and takes forever. They to are the new Earth down. Tree avatars. There ooh. is one of them for every level, and they drop the physic tears. Ah, right. Uh, so yeah, the, most of the bosses they either just uh, exist until they die. <laughs> Which is like a weird thing to say, but they're not very engaging for the most part. They have so much HP. So I don't even think the problem is the bosses themselves being too hard in a way that a Souls boss would be too hard. But a lot of them just have so much HP that it just gets boring to just repeat it over and over again because it takes too long. Boy, I love tanky, spongy enemies. That's my favorite thing in games. Yeah. I mean, you could always go and get those tiers, uh, the, the mimic tier or all other whatever tier you prefer to summon but i would like, i was already felt about this in the base game i feel they just break the fights they for absolutely me. i can confirm yeah uh, <laughs> they still the, break the fights okay i haven't tried in the dlc yet I, I was wondering if they if that it maybe was, works a bit better because they're so tanky it was downright nostalgic taking in take you my so uh, my lad I, I took into the dlc i i forgot that i had a regular like long sword and the pizza cutter I had the long sword out, and I was just like, I don't even remember this character. And then I like was scanning through all my items and stuff, and I hit the the right arrow key and pulled it out. And I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> like, I forgot about <laughs> this guy. It was so funny. I'd forgotten so much. I had to ask Theo, How do I even uh, two hand it? Um, but yes, I had. The oh, it's like a, it's, it's a common. I had to look, Google that as well. Yeah. Or I think I asked for Tia when I wasn't a call with him. It's like, how did Because it was just it's like uh, Y normally. I was like, Why isn't wait? It's doing another thing. It's like, oh, it's like uh, Y and R or something. But uh, uh, um, I ran around and I ran straight to uh, first. First was Renal, Renal, Relana, Relana, and uh, sister of Renala because FromSoft. Yeah, it very was good. just a matter of I think it was the fourth try. Uh, as soon as the right 
combination happened of my clone doing the uh, pizza cutter spam at the same time as me, she was dead. It was over. Oh, so, you you did the pizza cutter with two people. That's insane. That's, yeah, that was the meme back in the original <laughs> game. Like doing that at the same time, some of the bosses actually couldn't do anything. They would just get instantly staggered, bleed, and die. <laughs> like that's all that happened. <laughs> um, yeah, and I tried it on the big floaty lion man, and uh, eventually got him as well. It's just I can confirm the game is still broken with the uh, the mimic tears. Yes. Yep. Because yeah. that boss Relana, she took me multiple hours. You know. Uh, so, but you did it, and I, yeah, I'm playing without summons, without you know all that good stuff, um, and I've seen so many other people just brute force her through a combination of skibbity tree fragments and <laughs> mimic tears and so on and so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, on my, on my first really stream, cool. I tried her like multiple hours, uh, probably like two or three, I think. And I was like, okay, it's getting late, I gotta go down. And <laughs> there was like a point where I should have probably just stopped and just started collecting shit, but I'm, 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 you know, stubborn like that with bosses. I mean, I've fought often, of course, nine hours on my first time, so... <laughs> Until yeah, that's what we call her. commitment. Uh, but then I just offline just uh, collected a bunch of those trees, and that made me get, get, get her down, because I, w I got to a point where she had like, I don't know, like... A fifth of her health left, and that's every time. That's every time I died around that time. Uh, I was like, man, if only I had like a bit more health or whatever. And then I just it was very exciting. I went around, collected like I don't know eight more skibbity fragments, and then I got four more levels, and then I was able to brute force my way through it. I do, I do wonder. I've seen a couple of people fight the fight that boss by just dodging away for the most part and just waiting for the openings and then just poke and then just repeat that i think my my tactic was dodge to the left and back and hope for the best because mm -hmm. my my range wasn't great with my uh with my build so i had to, had to stay kind of close mm -hmm. i even switched builds to rivers rivers of blood because millennia sand just the the proc wasn't fast enough and i yeah. I, I, I feel like you really want to have some kind of elemental damage going on because uh if you can see, oh, oh you're showing the my stream right now yeah yeah that's the damage you deal uh just with one hit and that's like a is that rivers of blood already yeah it is yeah that's like plus 10 with like tons of decks and arcane already i think millennia sand i had like there's like a full dex weapon and at like also 99 dexterity I assume that was the solution to uh, it being too easy for everyone is to almost regenerate a new leveling system through the collecting of those uh, skibbities, as you referred to them. That, that's, my, that's my understanding, is that it exists probably because they have absolutely no way of accounting for your possible progression and level by the end of the game, or the approximate end of the game, or even by the time you're ready to fight Mog and get your way into the DLC. So the way they dealt with that is reduce their own upgrade system. The unfortunate fact is that while this is probably a good idea, said upgrade system isn't really gated by anything. You just sort of walk around the world and you find them lying around. Like imagine in imagine in Dark Souls, like let's say Dark Souls 1. Imagine if in your exploration instead 1. of going around and like fighting oh, enemies right. and whatnot, um instead of finding people to kill to get souls and whatnot, you just look around and eventually you find a soul, like just a level, like eight levels or so, just sitting on the ground under a cross, like next to a bonfire. And that's your primary means of like leveling, is you just find weapon upgrade materials plus souls just sitting under a bonfire. Gets pretty uninteresting. Mm. Uh, yeah, so... I, I want to get this in here quickly because um, I'm mad. Uh, oh. <laughs> Shadows of the Erd Tree or Shadow of the Erd Tree is is not like it, it is currently the most unpleasant gaming experience I can recall. Yeah, I cannot recall having had less fun with a video game. I just want everyone Jeez. to know yeah. before you <laughs> sure? start saying this. Really? This is a very well enjoyed and well received DLC from what I gather. That people are very happy with it. Theo, Theo is aware of this. A bold claim. But for anything, really. That's well, true. Actually, yeah. Golem. Like, I, I, I thought about this. For, <laughs> I thought about this for a while, like because I understand it sounds like hyperbole, but I cannot currently recall having less fun with the game. 
that yeah. maybe that will change as like I dredge some fucking repressed memory of some awful game I played. <laughs> but at current, I cannot recall having enjoyed something less than playing this. It is everything about Elden Ring turned up to 12, because Elden Ring was every already everything about Dark Souls 3 turned up to 11. So we're just at the point of like, by the way, that magic wave did not hit you, Metal, but it hit you, so that was cool. Um, I just saw <laughs> I, that I, in the I, footage. I, I, that, was not, that one is really hard Dark to dodge Souls anyway. Hey. Oh, in this game. <laughs> so, this game has gone so far with the delays and the funky telegraphing and the strange behaviors and inconsistent senses of emotion that I've reached a point where I am completely unable to trust anything I see when I'm fighting a boss. And we have reached a point of 100% rote memorization. You just go in there and you just die to the moves until you know what they do. Once you know what's happening, you then start making attempts that have a chance at winning. But you just try and see things until you know what they do and you know how, how it's possible to win. And the camera doesn't make that much easier for you because, you know, the Souls camera has a tendency to spin around while people are doing big fancy moves covered in shitloads of particle effects that make it extremely difficult to tell exactly what the fuck just happened to you. I, I have a clip, I don't know if you can show this. This is from a friend fighting the Lion Man. Um, it's really the good Johnny? for showing... <laughs> I get it. But, uh, no, uh, the, the Divine Beast Dancing Lion, probably the worst camera I have experienced in a Souls boss. Um, mm. Yeah, this is, this is really good. This is peak Souls, if you... <laughs> Jesus Christ! Not sure that one is a bit of a shame because I think oh, if damn. if you could actually if you could actually see the boss, it would actually be like a decent boss because the telegraphs, if you see them, are actually pretty good. Um, That's what I'm I noticed. Sort of, I'm sort of mixed on that insofar as like there is distinct telegraphing, but a lot of the time that telegraphing doesn't tell me much about what's about to happen. My best example for that with the lion is the second hit in his big flying combo thing. If you remember that move, yeah. I, don't really know what the second hit is. It's just sort of like flying in my face in a mix of hair and cloth particles, oh. lightning and wind and frost in phase two, and then it lands. Um, and then also it does another hit of damage by pulling its face out of the ground because there always needs to be another hit and then immediately <laughs> starts spinning while vaping all over the floor. That's Again, funny. I think just... I'm already at the part where it's like, oh, this does damage. I don't even care what it is anymore. I'm just dodging here. <laughs> yeah. I... We've all felt that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't get over it. I, I can't get over it. Because there's a big dragon boss in this DLC, and the people I was streaming to can attest, while I was fighting him, once I had the rhythm down, I was dodging, like, abstract art on my screen. There was nothing <laughs> visual that I was paying any attention to. I was just, I just knew timings, so I was just rolling at the timings that I knew I was supposed to be rolling at, and I could not see shit. But I was fighting just fine because it has nothing to do with what you can see, where you position, anything like that anymore. It is just a game of rote memorization until the boss is dead. I fucking hate this DLC. It's also <laughs> incredibly overindulgent. Everyone's got a big stupid anime move. Everyone's got two big stupid anime moves. Everyone <laughs> puts ground explosions and fire particles and huge like radial beam weapons and lasers and second phase transformations and incredibly bloated damage and HP pools. Like, and before yeah, anyone fucking... You, you considered two points. First, <laughs> you're, not mm -hmm. good at the game. you're not good at the game, you just need to get good. And okay. second, right memorization is all of the Souls games. Ooh. True! true. <laughs> just bang kind your head against the wall until it's fun. Kind <laughs> of true. Kind of true, honestly. But the older Souls games had more going on outside of just memorizing fucking boss patterns. Also, I have got good. I'm better than any of you fuckers in chat. I know many of you are saying skill issue. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have done I have done shit that you people could not believe in Souls games, okay? Alright. So you, now that we have that established, bosses you couldn't even imagine. That hide behind me, I'll protect you. I'll protect you. <laughs> So now that yeah. we have that established, yeah, um, I fought all of these bosses straight up. I didn't, su well, I summoned for one boss. It was an NPC boss, oh, and that was. it was oh, worse Jesus. than Bed of Chaos. Oh. Yeah, I once again, like that's a very strong claim, but I've thought about this a lot, and I think I'm of the genuine belief that this DLC has two bosses that are worse than Bed of Chaos. 
Mm. It's it's kind of fucked because the I, final I need some convincing to be them. honest on that one. I think it's really bad, but Bed of Chaos is actually horrible. I feel like different kinds of bad. Like uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so DLC fights are already not DLC. What am I saying? NPC fights are already uh, really unpleasant, right? Because yeah. they behave really awkwardly. Now imagine you are fighting three of them. Mm. They all have infinite stamina. They all have rush down combos. One of them has a super armored delayed charge move to run you down with. They all do unbelievable damage, and each one of them, bar one, has an Estus that full heals them. Yes. My gameplay of this fight was hit one of them twice, space away as they swing at nothing. Hit one of them twice, space away, they swing at nothing. Repeat this for legitimately multiple, like, five minutes, I think, it overall took. Just doing the same thing over and over and over again. My fucking eyes glazed over. At least Bed of Chaos, you keep your progress between attempts, <laughs> and once you somewhat understand what is going on, it is a fairly quick task. Never thought I'd hear the sentence begin, at least with Bed of Chaos. It's like, no. <laughs> I know, right? That's how I feel. I didn't think it could get this bad. I went into this DLC without many expectations, right? I wasn't expecting a huge amount because I was very down on Elden Ring and the design principles of Elden Ring. So I didn't think, you know, this would be something I'd be all that into. But I was ready to be surprised. I didn't think it would be anywhere near this bad. I thought there would be more good bosses. I thought the level design might be better after the comments <laughs> Miyazaki made in interviews. I thought the legacy dungeons might be worth a damn whatsoever. They weren't. I thought there might be anything really enjoyable here, but like, it's all just incredibly unpleasant. All right, so, yeah. well, uh, Gary, what do you think of Elden Ring? I totally <laughs> agree with that statement. <laughs> wow. Wow, you didn't just, you just know just Gary had such hot takes about Elden Ring. Theo is just terrible, Lamau. Go fuck yourself. It's, oh, oh come on. You, how could you not expect people to say that after? <laughs> they're I know, almost like they I'm, have to. Super yeah, easy I'm sorry game. You're brainwashed by FromSoft. I'm sorry. <gasps> well, um, since the, 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 this is very awkwardly organized, but I am more than happy to welcome you into talking more in depth. That, that's like foreshadowing, perhaps, uh, uh, once mm. we reach the end of our acolyte arc, because the thing is. You know, we got we got some other people here who are who are ready and raring to go to talk about Star War as opposed to medieval war. Um, but what Whoa. a great uh, <laughs> you see you're making a video for this, yes? Or hello? No, <laughs> no? maybe. Yo, what? That was, uh, yep. Yeah, that was for you. That question. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely like zoned out for a second. I am. I'm gonna. I like this game is my white whale right now. I need it to die. <laughs> <laughs> I need it to die. Oh my god. Well, wow. all right. I need. I need people to understand. Like, just quickly, I see the sentiment around a lot. People being like, you know, they get hit by a super delayed and deceptive attack, and they're like, ah, oh, I just need to learn the timing and whatnot. I, I need people to understand it's not their fault. FromSoft is actively like manipulating them into rolling at a bad timing and forcing them to completely disregard the visual information they receive to try and avoid things. They're disregarding oh, yeah. like there's, any sense of animation or physics while they're at it. There's so many weird moves in Elden Ring, like in general, where it's like, oh, he's like at the peak uh, at his jump, so he's going to come down now. And it's like, no, it's going to... He's just gonna sit there for like half a second and then come down at breakneck speed. Yeah, <laughs> it's like everything like that this. Was something that uh, Matthew Matos has talked about in one of his uh, videos: the uh, the idea that like it used to be a lot more unconventional for a boss to have like really kind of strange sudden movements, but that it had become yep. more and more prevalent as games went on. Yep, like that video, Lost Soul Arts of Demon Souls. The more Souls games come out, the more prophetic it becomes. You'll never be right about <laughs> Bikalash, okay? <laughs> it's, it's so funny, though, because he points out, like, oh, here's Pontiff Sullivan holding his overhead for, like, a beat longer than you'd expect. And then you see an Elden Ring boss, and every attack is that. Every single attack is <laughs> I, held for I a think... beat longer, and then comes down at an inconsistent timing. Is that Just not quickly. what people are supposed to enjoy about these? Because I'm not a big expert on these, but I kind of always assumed that they were weaponizing your autism to drag like 40 extra yeah. hours out of the game. <laughs> it's definitely something that's I mean, happened over time, but uh, yeah. it's splintering players in terms of whether or not they think that's a good decision. A lot of people are more than happy to just have a new set to memorize. 
Because that can Theo be fun just wants itself. easy boss moves. Go fuck yourself, dude. I want boss moves that are difficult in interesting ways. You can make difficulty without making people be behave as no creature ever would. Without having a hippo rear up and hold its posture for 3.5 fucking seconds. I counted <laughs> before it comes down. Well, I was actually going to say, uh, for me, Sekiro, uh, chat, this is your fault for making me play it. I, uh, job, I, can't, I, I struggle to go back to... Um... Stuff like Elden Ring now. I've I've experienced from software's peak content and their peak uh, mechanical f systems. I I can't be dealing with just uh, what they offer in Elden Ring anymore. You you it's all your fault. You destroyed me. Uh, there you go. Made it their fault now. I can yeah, feel it. You're really showing me dying up and over to the boss. Easy. Yeah. The hippo being easy isn't the point. It's the design <laughs> of the moves and the way the boss is designed. Please keep up. It's not difficult. It sounds like you've had these conversations already. It sounds like you're already I've been at your wits' end. Fighting so many people already. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for the record, uh, this DLC that I rated like DLC. It's beloved. Kind of, like, the beloved. Yeah. Like a ninety-five on Metacritic. The was definitely a wave on an people... island here. <laughs> there was a wave of people taking issue, and then they just gaslit themselves into liking it again. Because Damn. there's plenty of people out there who say things like, you just need to use all of the tools at your disposal, like the Mimic tier and the summons and whatnot. And I'm sorry, but that may make it easier, but that turns the gameplay from shit bad, like shit difficult, to shit trivial. I am i don't really care. Like, the gameplay experience is bad either way. If I'm at a point where summoning is a thing that should be being done, I don't really want to play anymore. I'm not interested. Well, I'll be... Thoroughly interested in seeing the video you produce. But I will warn you, this 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 tactic can be very unconvincing to several people. <laughs> Just I mm. assume you know this. Yeah, I'm well aware. The the video will be much more composed. Oh yes. Very measured. Very One measured. last thing. Oh no. Just, do you guys do you guys remember when it was like a thing worth pointing out that a boss would track you heavily? Or an enemy would track you a lot with uh -huh. its moves? Mm -hmm. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> where they'll like, spin you know, on, like, the, on the it were, spot. Where it'll like, yeah, yeah. it'll rotate yeah. and it'll stare at you, and then it like attacks. But yeah, even like, when it attacks, it's still like rotating to follow where you yes, are. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. I, yeah, remember yeah, when that was something about. worth pointing out? Everyone just does that all the time in Elden Ring. Oh That's yeah. Every boss, every move. I've watched a man spin 360 degrees as I roll around him, tracking me with a spear thrust. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I don't know. I thought we did. It's like, like an, it's this, another one of these moves. Just fine. It's another one of these moves. Of like, oh, he does like the big charge up. So obviously, I'm gonna move out of the way, get behind him, maybe even get a backstab. And it's like, no, it's just gonna move with you on the spot while he's holding the hand, the sword. I was like, no, no, yep. you're gonna dodge, or you getting hit. You're gonna get hit. Get Prepare fucked. to roll again and again and again and again and yeah. again. Prepare to die. I still think Dark Souls Two was a, such a huge mistake on Dark Souls culture. And... <laughs> yeah, God. if we're being there's a death honest. counter in game. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, well, what about Dark Souls Two is the highest rated Dark Souls game just by like aggregate uh, critic reviews. That's great. <laughs> it is. It's higher than Dark Souls One and Three. I think it's higher than Sekiro as well. All right, enough pain. Well, yeah, oh, he didn't even, so didn't even show me beat the boss. Yesterday. Now everybody thinks I'm a screw. No, that's the, it's all foreshadowing <laughs> for what will happen later. Everyone's super excited about that. Uh, Whoa. We'll reopen, we'll reconvene. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quality may vary. People are discussing the latest Elder Ring gameplay from popular streamer Theo. <laughs> <laughs> they did it again! Fuck! Viewers are divided, <laughs> some praising Theo's skill level, others mocking him for his perceived arrogance, and for crying about the game's <laughs> difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, clearly difficulty is, yeah, that's what I said. The AI is coming for you, buddy. All right, I've given you all a link to watch together. I have put together a feast of arguments that mm. tell us in depth and extensively, with named mentions of at least one of us here today, how we are I'm going to be so surprised if it would be me. How that would be the biggest shock. There is toxicity among the fandom, how the acolyte, you know what? Pretty neat show, and Ooh. I've got some red letter media in here as well, because they've had some opinions lately that, my goodness, what interesting yeah. opinions they had. Let's just put it that way. You so you, you said all that, and then I clicked the watch together, and there's just like Metal's face there, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> A very controversial. The, the betrayal. <laughs> it's just gonna stop, it's like, yeah, I'm just been fucking around with this EPAP guys, man. Acolyte is awesome. Acolyte's so good. <laughs> 
playing this uh, Darky Souls game, it, uh, it's making me think about the Acolyte and how much that <laughs> fucker Moller is being a big jerk <laughs> who hates Flame. women. <laughs> you heard from me, I've known him for 10 <laughs> years. He, he, has, he killed like seven children already, I, never, I guarantee. Uh, in a video game, in a like Minecraft. That. In a Minecraft. <laughs> in Minecraft, in Minecraft. In Rust. Okay, so... Y'all ready? This is a this is like I said. Um, ready? Well, this is not a coherent we... video. This is a selection of clips from different videos that all advocate in some way for the acolyte. That sounds like the well, other videos we've watched are coherent. Start, start, let me use the loo real quick. Grab Ugh. a drink, and then we can Ugh. we can get in there. Theo, carry on with your Elden Ring. Could he not have uh, pissed while you were know. ranting about Elden Ring? No, because yeah. then yeah, me, me, I want to hear me, 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 go opinion. pee. We're not doing this again. Well, why don't you go pee? Go fucking pee. You go pee. I, don't need uh, pee. I thought we talked about this peed. last week. You know what's we funny is about it last week. I, I actually did pee before we started because I'm normal. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we talked about this last week. About we really did. Whole... Yeah. No, just let's stop so that I can go. All right, see and everybody. Then he has to just go on a rant for like ten hours about how he shouldn't oh, have to, and then he pees himself. Out. Terrible. Oh, I don't know about that. I want to hear maybe. it. <laughs> or you're lying. <laughs> Prove it. What then? When he comes back and sits down, you just hear a squelching sound <laughs> as he hits the feed. Look, all right. There are consequences for pissing yourself. Like squelching. <laughs> that's down the, that's the sentence down. I just came back to. <laughs> like, there are consequences to pissing yourself. Oh, there yourself. are? <laughs> like, yeah, no one really do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's uh, it, the, the Telltale like the game thing will pop up in the top right hand of your POV saying, you will remember e? that. You'll play Life is Strange, you'll get the yeah, little butterfly the icon Oh after you. no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll reference that. Why it's not? Yeah, they're making, they're, a, uh, they're making a new one, right? A new, uh, Another new, a new one? one of those. Yeah, I think yeah. It's a, they're Mount making the like a new one that's character. a sequel. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't had like a TV adaptation yet. It feels like I think that's on the cards, it. isn't it? I thought, oh. I feel like that got announced at some point. Because those games are oddly popular. Scarily popular, you might even say. Mm. Do I need to resize the Discord avatars? You can see Fringy and Theo. It's fine. I was just asking. See, you I'm trying see, to make like, right undercover, there. professional, and in now fact, you're just snitching like on how, me. I like how Meta was so courteous to just ask in text rather than making it a prominent <laughs> part of the conversation, and then you just nobody, decided to drag it Nobody out knew the, he asked. I asked it in general, but now you've made it obvious it was him that asked. It's too late now. Nice one. You Man. exposed uh, the German. I did it myself, well, no. to be honest. Yeah, that, I, look, right? <laughs> to be fair to me. <laughs> but uh, I've always liked this because the two people are doing little sneaky peeks from behind the corner. They're, uh, they're like, hmm, what is, is this? Is that cringe? what's happening here? I'm, I'm peeking out, like, ooh, what's going on here? Yeah. The Fleam Brigade. <laughs> Don't you? Fleam Brigade. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Let's find out. Who are the Flea Brigade? Yeah, I don't know whether it's good or bad, though I think it's leading towards negative, but Flea Brigade sounds more like they're a bit clownish. I feel in, like in if nature. we had a fake universe that was cartoon, like animated, and there was a team called the Flea Brigade, they'd probably would be the good guys. <laughs> they probably would. They'd be like the bumbling heroes. You yeah. Know? They'd be, they'd be the, the, you know, look, all right, they try their hardest and they sometimes screw up, but they've got good intentions. Yeah, like they spray a building that's on fire with acid, and they're like, "Oh fuck, it's the acid one! Shit, get the water one!" <laughs> like, God damn and, it. They, and, they, and they're fumbling to put it on as the house is disintegrating before they rise, and the fire is leaping to the next house. And you have people in there being like, "Oh my god, I probably could have survived if not for the acid." <laughs> like, oh damn it! <laughs> the acid. Imagine that. Um, I, I, I imagine that they're all very uh, like if you're thinking about cat, because obviously this is an animated show. Um, they're all very sort of like bulbous would be my guess or, or frumpy. They're all like kind of, uh, you know, they're all like yeah. sort of squishy characters. Yeah. And like s several of them just have features. They're like smiling friends creatures where they have like a big eye on the back of their head and a small one in front and he gets confused. You can't see properly. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah. He's he's had it his whole life, and he still can't orient himself because of three sixty degree views. <laughs> but goddamn, oh, he's feels trying. Like there's a premise there. Yeah, I feel like there's a premise there. So um, how is it? Uh, season two's over. It is. I'm a bit it's hungry, over. actually. 
It was like an hour wait, long. Like two more years. It was easy to watch, yeah. and that's, somehow I hate that. I'm <laughs> two more years until the next one. Okay, probably. Rags is here. Epicness here. can be begin. I can see that everyone is in too. It's an EFAP first. I don't have to tell anyone to get Woo! in. Hooray! All right. So, like I said, this is a combination of several portions of different videos talking about the acolyte. Some clips that I thought were of uh, interesting for conversation. Some that were just hilarious. Let's uh, let's take a little look, see, shall we? Let's let's uh, look. Let's begin. The acolyte is a story about what it's like to be good then be punished oh, over and over again moment. for your good actions. You trust the Jedi, they abandon your training. You trust the Jedi yes. again, you I miss out on Jedi. a jailbreak. Why, why, why was that? Why did you, why why did you, play, why did you play that? Someone what forgot is, to... Live in a Buddhist temple? What the fuck I don't know. <laughs> I was about to ask about them, but that's, that's an interesting background. There's like a big mirror over there. Uh, yeah, he a has A weird his, chair. I don't know what chair. they're called. It's, I call it... Um, let's call it the... Ooh, what what are those called? The mirror of your set. Oh, that's the mirror. Yeah, from the Harry Potter movie. Yes. I was actually it about to ask if any of these desire. are recognized. It shows yeah. me a... I, d I most desire a roof. Ooh, Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, so the Acolyte is about doing good things. Uh, well, good people doing good things. Um... And being punished for doing those good things. And one of his Wait, examples was training backwards? with the Jedi and then they abandon you. But that's not what happened, and she says that explicitly. When she yep. says, it was my decision to leave, and it was the most hard thing I'd ever did, but it was my choice, Sol. So, no. Yeah. Like, you can get all the way to episode 5 and the protagonist hasn't actually made a positive affirmative decision, because she has no agency, because that's how we like our protagonists to be. So she's not really being punished by... Hey, she freed that random things. prisoner man with the thing on his mouth. Oh. Good job. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I successfully... He made one affirmative decision. Successfully even... defended the acolyte. Yes. Didn't even save a zebra. Don't care. He chose to miss the lady <laughs> on the yeah the. Speeder. How good she yeah, could she be? True. Yeah. You try to help your fellow man, and he betrays you. He... Well, he doesn't know what's happening. Was, he's oh, the, kind of freaked fair, out. Yeah. To be fair to that guy, he had just got like dragged out. Of some crazy like form of of uh, being stunned by like an alien, right? Alien yeah, asses. Yeah, he's told. yeah he's, he got no clue what's going on. He's terrified. He's what was not, funny not, was how he, call, like a rational entity right now. And yeah, he. It was interesting how he was able to get up and he was he like he could laser focus on running to the escape pod and being able to press all the buttons inside it to to jettison it. He could do that with pinpoint precision, perfection, accuracy level. But when it comes to just a woman being like, hey, Didn't what's he, um... up? He screams his head off and he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Was he Which trying to frame her as well? I can't remember what his dialogue no, was. No, the, the other they guys all... were trying to frame him. So like, he's mad. They she she was told explicitly that you put the weird face hugger on violent prisoners. So when she takes it off, she's already a fucking moron. Then <laughs> it's fucking stupid that the escape pods unlock in the event of a security breach because that's dumb. Then yep. they somehow pick up all the escape pods and the other prisoners who are not violent people are the ones who say, oh no, it was her, she did everything. But he's mad until Sol goes and mind reads him because he can do that in that scene, but then forgets to do it later. <laughs> yeah. But he never tries to dop her in. I think the entire construction of that spaceship's cockpit where you have the, the prisoners there who are not like stripped right of their belongings the, yeah. and they made mm -hmm. to change clothes or shackled or anything like that, that are right behind where the pilots are sitting and prisoners are allowed to, yeah, prisoners are allowed to keep like equipment that can wirelessly hack the pilots because we can't use people. Yeah, that's a bad idea. We have idea. to use robots for stuff. It, it's a whole, it's a mess. The construction of the ship the logistics are it's like they designed specifically so that prisoners could escape yes well, but yeah. that, having one robot be the guard too that that's a little bit of an error but luckily that facilitates a delay that allows them to go on their little uh their bonus mission in episode two that lets them allow the main villain to escape you know like we need all of this stuff to happen and to allow stupider stuff to happen well, mm -hmm. it's even more than that, because she shouldn't have been on the ship anyway. Yord and What's-Her-Face should have taken her to go back yep. to the Jedi Temple instead of dumping her randomly on this prison cage to go to, I assume, Coruscant to meet up with them where they were where they were going anyway. But we had to split them up so we could have that ice planet um, <laughs> waste of time. So that you don't understand, guys. Designed to let them escape. It's a plot ship. Mm. That's uh, actually uh, an actual class. It's not bad. Yeah, Maybe that, it's the... That, 
Maybe it's a trust system. Maybe that's how the the New Republic um, op or the High Republic operate. It, they're interchangeable. If I mix up the names, it I, I promise it literally does not matter. Um, mm. But I, I maybe they just they operate on the trust system where it's like, hey, if they're really you know if they're good prisoners and they go along with it, then it means they they really do want to repent and pay their debt to society, which means we can just let them go. But the ones that escape. I mean, well, they're they're gone, but now we know that they really were bad the whole time. But what it may be worth, I think someone being able to betray you presupposes you having an accord with them. So, yeah. you know. This is, this is what I mean. There's no betrayal. He has no idea what's going on. This, this, is, this, is, this is nonsense data. Being good isn't so good. Being good isn't so good. Mm. People... Are we arguing that's what the Acolyte's about? It's like, maybe. <laughs> that's the point she's trying to make. Then, you meet another you that isn't so good. Your evil twin. Attack. Your shadow. The Acolyte. She's not, he's not a shadow. A shadow, the like, follows twin. you around wherever you go. If you shadow oh, you, someone... You you're the vaccinated the version. With the COVID the mask. The Acolyte is, uh... The Acolyte is a very Jungian, uh... <laughs> yeah, Rag, get your, get your media <laughs> literacy up. The shadow <laughs> self. Oh, about yeah, it, the, the, lo the loser's journey. Yes, <gasps> I, uh, I, I remember, yeah. <laughs> is good Star Wars. Which will surprise many people prejudging the show on its dire rotten uh, tomatoes. Yes. Prejudging. Well, yeah. clear. <clears throat> Just to be clear, we're not prejudging this show. We are post judging been, this show. Yes. We've been um, seeing it. It's still well, bad. Luckily to for us, fair, at no point uh, in our videos did we say the show is bad because it has a low rotten tomatoes audience score. That's not why it's no, bad. No. Yeah. But I did prejudge it and I did think it was <laughs> gonna suck. And I was right. Yeah, it yeah. is kind of well, funny. It's also, like I did think it was going to be bad. You got me. You're like you know what? I did prejudge it, and I was fucking it right. right. The yep. point of a trailer is to be judged. Obviously, their intention is that you will judge it favorably enough to watch the show. But you know, there's the other alternative that you judge it harshly and don't want to watch it, or you watch it and then you find out that it's bad anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, that's the whole point of a trailer. It's to be judged. Well, so like the idea in that his... you're not allowed to judge something before it comes out. I mean, to some extent, yes, you can. He was barely complimenting the story at all, and we already had like 17 issues with what he had presented. <laughs> Just like the yeah, tiny what amount. He's presented is essentially the premise of the show is not the case. Not Pretty close. obviously. And the low quality of almost everything Star Wars since Disney bought the franchise. True. All everything is so bright. These clips are so I, bright. He's fucked with them, obviously. Like, uh, maybe he did it for yeah. copyright? I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably don't need to. This will maybe be it's for, this is this is called profound lighting, and uh, this is a it profound. Evokes... Oh, this is sense. this is what we call oh. n lighting. Ah, oh, it's an aesthetic. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's wow. it's enlightening. A aesthetic. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah. I feel enlightened. Nice. Or by the endless number of. Outraged YouTube videos oh, from oh, 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 Look, at, look at these really monsters. Oh, Look, it's all of you. I recognize that theory, man. He's the <laughs> worst. Oh my goodness. Not as bad nerd as the nerd daily. erotic, though. Ah, <laughs> stop the Asian hate. Okay, leave Perry alone. It's all your fault. Angry middle-aged yeah. men shocked to discover... I am That's not middle-aged. <laughs> I'm old. I'm <laughs> fucker. Why oh, dear. Angry middle-aged well, men. I am not living to 100. Gender, you can't be caring about this if you're middle-aged. Yo, he don't wait. He, that's not fair. He double dipped on you. He yeah. Murdered yeah. Murdered yeah. Daily and Murderotic, you also fucker. Does, also, those are all thumbnails after watching the uh, episodes of the show, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so these are all from after watching would. episodes of the show. This I wish is this an man incredible would thumbnail. Normally. No. I thought that was Gina Carano for a second there. I'm like, why is her face <laughs> it's on there? Gina Carano. <laughs> why is she want to... Does she want to... What, what is this? What is the scissors implying? Oh, uh, really? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> uh, mm, who could like, say? Arts and crafts. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're women. Yeah, that's true. Is this who what is this women want? For? That's a television show. <laughs> that's a funny thumbnail. Primarily Mike made Zeros. for 12-year-olds. Used... Oh, they're all... This okay. shit is Wasn't... made for 12-year-olds. 12-year-olds. Listen, I despise children in all their forms, but <laughs> even I'm going to stick up and say this is... Like, a 12-year-old would hate this. Come on. I don't even... I know I would. Wasn't I... For...
Is it is it really designed for twelve year olds? I don't. Think in, in the last think, episode, someone exactly got their necks snapped and got penetrated snapped. three times by this, a lightsaber. Yeah. Like, yeah. The one guy really... kills himself. Like, like, yeah. This is designed for adults with no sense of quality. I think Leslie yeah. Headland has said it's the most important work of art she's ever created. So it's going to yeah. be used to her that it's intended <laughs> yeah, but for twelve year olds. Mm. Hey, to be fair, like Judy Bloom, right? Uh, you know. Well. I mean, I'm it's, just so uh, bored by the whole argument. It's made for 12 year olds. It's just like, can you just make something why, good why for them? Yeah, for them? for for the record, this argument has never yeah. worked for anything, and he doesn't believe it either. Nobody believes in this argument. Uh, as soon as they what realize how stupid it sounds, when they like just apply this, like no deep analysis should be made of Toy Story. It's for kids. You're like, oh, yeah, well, stop oh it. okay, stop it. Wally is for babies. So stop talking yeah, baby about movie. it. And, and by the way, you Little never hear movie. anyone say, you shouldn't like this so much. It's meant for kids. Well, then again, you probably did get that about My Little Pony, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's always an exception. <laughs> Age men shocked to discover that a television show primarily made for 12-year-olds wasn't fully satisfying their... Didn't this you is just... uh, doubly odd, considering his profound description of what yeah. the show was supposed to be mm -hmm, about yeah. being good and evil. The shadow and self. Of that nature. The shadow as, self. As if a fucking 12 year old's gonna be familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what? And who what's is with this, this guy? music? Yeah, this music. This comes, he, is this like a philosopher? It's yes. like he's, yeah. throwing yeah. Out, he's, throwing, he's throwing out both sides of the argument because you'll fall on one of them, surely, so that, you know. Yeah, covered all bases. It's might, they might be me. them they into some, some one very singular, very clever argument, which is that the acolyte is designed to tell twelve-year-olds that there is no point even trying to be good. <laughs> yeah, don't bother <laughs> being good. So incredibly based of Disney. It's just funny. Just, like, just, just be shit. Just the be show, awful. The show is excellent. If you think people. it's bad, it's for twelve-year-olds. So shut up. It's like wh what? Mm -hmm. The show isn't supposed to be good, but if it is good, and it is, then that is good. Uh, good. Yeah. Adult yeah. emotional yeah. needs. I'm just waiting for Nerd Rotic to give Ooh. his outrage take on how Bluey the Australian cattle dog has betrayed fans. Bluey went woke a long time ago, <laughs> all right? And I'm done with Bluey. <laughs> He's betrayed the fans. <laughs> He's betrayed the fan and betrayed the lore. I knew I it. I don't know anything about Bluey lore. lore. All I know is that Bluey's a. Who's the dad? The Bluey's. Is Bluey the kid or the adult? I have no Which idea. Which one's Bluey? <laughs> Bring you would know. You're Australian. All I know is that the dad's a cuck. So. That's Damn. <laughs> also, Fring, Fring not going to bat for his Australian doggo. Damn. Oh, well, yeah, yeah right. I think I think Bluey's the kid. I I haven't watched Bluey. I think yeah, I've seen one or two episodes, either. and I don't remember everyone's names. I'm sorry. I've seen like a like maybe like a handful of of clips on like Twitter about how the show is like really good. But well, so yeah, I haven't watched it. That was actually what I was going to add no to Phineas it was. From what I saw of Bluey, I did think like this is a solid show for now, its demographic. But we have for one, as the chat correctly pointed out, Acolyte is TV fourteen. Number two, if this guy can't differentiate Bluey and the Between Acolyte, and it says more numbers. about him. Okay, so well, what even uh, like the original like Star Wars? What was the rating for that? It came out uh, PG. So PG, right? Well, that then, was prior, before, to, prior uh, to PG thirteen, uh, but that was yeah, that was well the time just, where uh, you would get you would get boobs in PG movies like Airplane, like that was a it's a different time. Return of the Jet, yeah, Return of the Jedi is PG two, but that was eighty three. So yeah, first, that was, it wasn't until Red Dawn, right? That was the first PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah, but thanks yes, to the, Indiana the Jones and Temple is, of Doom. It's just a tired fucking argument. Acolyte is, is mm -hmm. M rated, so yeah, the idea is like, oh well, yeah, it's for kids. It ain't. It's explicitly Super. not. Super Smash Bros. Melee was rated T for teen. That's right. right. It was. I'm just tired of the yeah. argument. So many people use it. Like, why? What are you doing? Why do I think it's a good argument? And also, yeah, I mean, I presume that, like, like, I mean, why are you dragging down, like, Bluey and being like, oh, well, you know, you can't assess it in any way that would be... Like, that's what people do for that show, don't they? They, like, assess it as being, act, like, like, better than would be expected. It's... Yeah. Adults create it, and adults have to clear it before showing their very young children. Why do you think that is? It is a very fascinating trend of, like, you can't defend the things that you like without tearing other things down. It's a really it's a really fascinating thing, because, of course, with Star Wars, the thing that we've seen is, in order to defend Disney Star Wars, 
it's not uncommon for people to shit on um, what came before that, whether it's the prequels or the original trilogy. Well, it's a very bizarre way of defending the things that you like by shitting on the other things that belong to that series. And let's just stop uh, pretend or not pretending, but like thinking that things have to be retarded for kids. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're watching Star Trek, the original series. I watched that when I was like five and six. All right. That's that's what I was watching. It wasn't made for a five and six year old, but that's what I was watching. That's what we were watching because like there was there was kid shows. But most of the stuff we liked wasn't particularly made for or specifically made for little kids or 12 year olds. It was supposed to get adults in there, too. They wanted as many people to watch it as possible for advertising and for money. Crazy time. I mean, I grew up watching Indiana Jones and that was like people getting shot and thrown around and sliced and all that good stuff. I watched Temple of Doom when I was a kid and I'm like, dude, he fucking pulled out his heart. This guy's this guy's up to no good. It was mm-hmm. that movie where the guy with the blue light sword chopped off a guy's arm in the cantina. It was horrifying. True. Oh, I couldn't believe true. it. I loved it. I loved it. It's coming. Race I wasn't going to watch shoot the people. acolyte. I'm a 46 year old man. That has nothing to do. Okay. Well, you're 46 year old. Let's <clears throat> chill. You look. You, yeah. You look. At the up, same 56. age as Star Wars itself, and my assumption is that. Anything Disney Star Wars will be made for children. I'm not going to so that, that, That's his section. Um, I just oh, don't. Is that it? Well, yeah. That I mean, there's there's way more, but there's way more for everyone here. We've got to give everyone a chance. Have you been? Oh, yeah. to Star, have you seen Star okay. Wars Celebration? How many children do you see there? Well, like I don't. Andor is just <laughs> not like many. clearly made for adults. Yeah. Yes. It is a mature show that yes. a kid is just not going to be able to understand fully yeah. it's just got more going get some on. kids out there who will really love it right oh I'm, I'm i'm curious now did you watch the full video of his i, I assume you did oh yeah uh, I, so i let him keep the intro and in his uh, it's not for you it's for children argument now we're moving on to yeah the lad. No, no what i'm wondering is so d- does he watch star wars because if he goes like oh I'm, i assume it's made for children why would he even watch it then if you're not interested in that you know or what? Or is or is this or is this just his way to judge the show? It's like he watched like, oh, this is for children, so it's allowed to be really, really stupid. I think what he was saying was he wouldn't have expected that it was gonna be some amazing thing because it's not for him as a demographic, but that he was surprised, you know, that actually it's pretty good. And then obviously mm. we didn't like it because we came in looking to not like it straight away, which right. uh, is a sentiment that will be shared by others in this video. But this next, uh, it step, was. This, it- his whole point was to say he was more mature than us, yeah. which is true. And uh, he is, uh, uh, and and we're a bunch of assholes, which is true, but we're more fun. So fuck that guy. <laughs> it's, just, it's just funny because I still feel like we have detailed analysis of every scene. Meanwhile, the people who love these shows oftentimes are like, yeah, but the fight was really cool. Like, uh huh, yeah, okay. Episode five mm-hmm. redeemed the show. Anyway, this is a, uh, a, a video called uh, The Acolyte is Actually Good, or Good Actually. And, uh, open with a question mm. so actually classic actually. title i'm gonna say episode five completely redeemed the acolyte but uh, for me it was among the best episodes of star wars tv yeah, but... the best? <laughs> full stop Holy you know fuck. what i'm i'm gonna be honest he looks like the kind of guy who would say that <laughs> well but there's the think about it though if we remove andor it might be yeah. <laughs> like, uh... Oh, wait, it actually hmm. might be true. Yeah, yeah because oh, because we have because the the guy the the Darth Smilo, he said uh you brought her here and I was like, "Oh, that was like a good line." Um it was a line that people died. That was nice. Yeah, some people died. Some people got fucking The choreography that wasn't was cool. like complete cringe. Always terrible. Yeah. So, did Yord guess, have like a good moment as well? I, yeah, I of, didn't yeah. actually factor in the fact yeah. that the bar was so subterraneanly low yeah. that he might technically be correct. Oh boy, the bar is oh. like buried uh, Ooh. two miles beneath the surp- surface, right above the magma. I mean, most people oh, yeah, agree the bar that's is, where the bar is. It was right better there. than episodes oh, one, yeah, two, the, three, four, right? That's most people agree. Oh, with well, that. someone in chat has pointed out the Doctor Pershing episode in Mando. That's <laughs> well, probably oh, right. to be yeah, fair. That's, that's the best. <laughs> it might not be better right, than Mando. Yeah. Uh, season one, episode one, as well. I'd have to I'd have to that's really think true. about it. I'm not that's sure. True. I just... oh, really, it, it has true. some difficult competition here. There's some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Pershing episode, though, 
It is the best non Andor I Disney do like episode. It. My attempt to agree with him, I'm like discounting this and 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 this. Maybe <laughs> you might be onto something. Yeah, We're more than we halfway just through forgot. the acolyte. We forgot how so here's what I think is working and what isn't, just based on the show itself. Because honestly, right. the toxic discourse around this thing can catch the nearest purgle to a faraway galaxy. I mean, I would hope that you were <laughs> going to be a oh, because the space that whales, right? Crazy. That was, what? That oh, was they're really called cringy. Purgles? They're called Purgles. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's no, right. No, they're not. You learned that in the show. Yes. You, you clearly weren't paying attention to Yeah, Ahsoka. you loved no, Ahsoka. I, no. At the time, David I was Tenet paying told attention. Us that. David Tennant told us that. What I was going to say is, like, <laughs> it's weird to preface. I'm assessing the show for the show. I would hope that you're assessing yeah, the show. That's, that's what <laughs> yeah, you normally do okay. when you talk you about a show. Well, he separated himself Purgles from the toxic like a people. Tribble. Right. He says, so what, what, what does he deem? I think like a little bird, like a little penguin. Also, or like, a, just, uh, just like a, a, a piece of advice. Make sure that like the images that you select to put full screen are not like 480p. You yeah. should get higher resolution images if you're going to make them this big on screen. Well, well I don't know why drawing them from the episodes. What's I don't the know point? why they're, uh, they would be low, you know? Why the, I don't know why they're so like low quality. Yeah. Why is it so, like, why is it so pixelated? I don't know. Well, he's done the, uh, he's made the mistake of giving himself a lot of unnecessary work that looks terrible. So it's worse than wasting your time. It's, it's time spent actively making your video. I, I like the visual reference, right? It helps me follow the narrative. Okay. I'm getting confused yes. otherwise. Start with the this. Power I found the many. backstory in episode three to be pretty compelling. The dilemma community Why? goes through when it has to give up a child to the Jedi is really rich material, and I think That's worth exploring. We didn't get really we didn't to do material. that. We didn't explore it either. Yeah. We didn't get anything mm. on it. Like, I'd love they to like, know what's rich about it. The, we went they right up to the actual decision being made. We didn't get, actually get there. Yes. Like, we had we the had girl no wanted to, discussion. the other girl didn't, and the mum was like, nah, you shouldn't, but you know what, I'll try and make it work. And then they all died. Yeah, we, we, we didn't, didn't actually it. address anything. No one no. had any conversations. There wasn't any back and forth about really anything substantive. Remember, we got about as far as exploring, the Jedi are evil. No, they're not, they're good. Okay, okay kill you. Yeah, that was about <laughs> it. Like, all right. <laughs> Like, I think it's a joke that <laughs> exactly anyone would went. consider this an, <laughs> an interesting exploration of the Jedi, like kidnapping kids or, or you know, dragging them away from their families. Like we did not get that story. We, who knows? If 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 all that's going to happen in the super flashback episode is just they have a big fight and everyone dies, I don't I don't think that's an interesting exploration of the Jedi at all. But obviously, we'll have to wait and see what they do. Exploring. In that way, this episode felt like a live action version of a Star Wars Visions episode, for example. And I appreciated what? how the show Why? encouraged the audience to see uh, both sides of the good. argument. Both Visions sides of the argument. argument. There aren't right. arguments. They don't talk. No arguments. They, argument. they don't they didn't discuss have an anything. Argument. I am so no closer to understanding we get, the Jedi now than I was before this episode. We get yeah. Soul letting her play with a lightsaber like a fucking idiot, and then she starts torturing Torbin. How is this an interesting back and forth where we understand both sides? He's the closest these people thing to they invent stuff. The closest thing you could get to an understanding is informed by like other content. Like you might refer to Kotor and why the Jedi are like why the Jedi go looking for force sensitive people. You'd have to explain that through Kotor because you're not getting anything from the acolyte to explain why they might want to do that. We are getting that, but with additional incompetence, which is always nice to see. I, I like I like the bit where the Jedi all walk into this very obviously inhabited fortress and then say, oh, sorry, we thought no one was home. That's good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I hope they give us... I, I was going to say, make that make sense. I was like, why would I ever assume that? This, it, it's so mm. fucked. No. They're trying to do a bit of that in episode five as well. And Jodie Turner Smith was excellent. That said, it's oh, come on. Okay. But I mean, she was fine, I guess. <laughs> I mean, was it the power of one I... scene that made you think that? <laughs> she wasn't distractingly bad. The story and the characters were that, but not the acting, I suppose. Climax felt a little bit rushed and made it. Oh yeah. Really? Uh, like, it felt, a little, felt a little bit. It Ooh. felt a little bit rushed. It's funny how it's designed so that we're not supposed to understand it fully, and that's the best you can come up with. It's like eh, it seems a bit rushed. It's like there are literal Ooh. scenes they have cut out. It should feel that way. Obviously. You're not supposed to understand it. It's meant to be retarded. You guys exactly. just don't. You're not media literate. Okay. Yeah, something, something twelve-year-olds. Yeah. 
something. something. Also, Done. I didn't think that Leah and Laura Brady, who played the younger versions of May and Osha, were very good. Episode four was the weakest of the series for me so far. Pick it on well, child I actors. trying to sell dick. us on this thing. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Right. By the way, this the fucking part. little fella, the tracker. Why do they hate Brazil. just? Why do they just fucking My, hate his name is Basil Rags? Sorry, I don't, go ahead, Metal. Brazil, why do yeah. they? Why do they just fucking hate just scanning devices on their spaceships? Why do they just have to invent everything except just using a scanner? Star Wars <laughs> has this sense of aesthetic sensibility around it these days that doesn't want to really acknowledge the tech level. It wants to be some sort of weird space Wild West like adventure thing a lot of the time, there... and it, it doesn't want to think about the fact that there are laser guns and spaceships very much. This is so well, funny to me. The... They get on the planet, it's like, here, sniff this, like a, you know, like a canine. It's like, oh, okay. And then it's like, yeah, I'm going to sniff out the evil men. Or, yeah. well, to, to be clear, enough. I would have done it, I would have done it way faster. Yeah. Second, Obviously. The, the original trilogy, one thing I really liked, and even growing up, uh, when I was really young, I, I, I noticed this as a difference to other things. Like, it's different from Star Trek. What, 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 um, the original trilogy had with the Star Wars universe was that the technology had this very analog kind of quality to it. You mm -hmm. didn't really get these bright hologram displays like you have now. Everything's electronic in the terms of it. The bright lights, touch pads, things of that nature. Things had buttons and knobs and not like that, not the Star Trek original series kind of buttons and knobs, but they had this, they had this tangibility, this analog quality to it. Yes, there was all there was lasers yes there was life scanners and shields and stuff like that but it all seemed to be connected to metal boxes and wires tubes hoses um like plates of uh you know plates of steel and things of that nature you could just reach out and touch it it felt very real and unfortunately i think that as the years have gone on this got translated into everything is everything is I mean, someone said Wild Westy, and that's kind of a good way to describe it. It's like there's such a technology disparity everywhere you go yep. that we, we see this in the presentation of pretty much every village we walk into is the same fucking one where everyone mm -hmm. it's a it's a bazaar with market stalls and fruit packed up and people wearing the same nondescript semi-tribal sort of outfit and garb. We've lost that Star Warsy feel where everything's like tangible and you could touch it. And yeah, the towns were kind of empty. The towns are kind of empty and everything looks scavenged and G rigged and put together. Uh, that's that was the difference. You know, you saw Remember, the economic difference. When when they were gonna fire the um it's been a while since I've seen it, but when they were gonna fire the Death Star, they had the guys with the helmets and they were like click click and they were like punching buttons and you could feel the click of the button when they touched it and they had that mm. one that that beam not beam they had that that lever and they would like slowly pull it down to imply it had a lot of weight to it and you'd hear the noise as yep. it was charging up mm. there's this physical touchability to all the technology and everything and we had those the, those visual dictionaries um, for the Star Wars stuff, and they had all the close-ups of the guns and everything, and it just felt like, oh, this is this is really cool. Like I believe this is real. It's very, it's not too clean and sleek and perfect and sterile, which unfortunately I think a lot of the stuff in the prequels kind of was. But um, the I just, prequels were like... sterile, that's right. But then the Return of the Jedi starts going in for this sort of thing, which is we're moving away from any attempt to be relatively serious science fiction, and now it's cutesy animals because the kids will yeah. like that. Oh, yes. If you've got droids which run your prison ships, and yet you use a beaver to track things through forests, that's not quite as consistent as I think it used to be. They just pull some fucking 10-year-old rag out of cold storage. I can't get over <laughs> it. And they just hand it through their handy beaver they made up. Master Kildaka left his socks here. <laughs> it's okay. We can use these. Uh, is there, do you guys have a weird Wookiee cult going on here where you all smell his socks? Is this like a weird Zack Snyder just, cameo? He's, where leaving, you have to uh, smell it? he's leaving the Jedi Temple and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa before you go, can you like, can you just like put this under your arms for a little bit, just like five minutes and then give it back? And he's like, yeah. why? Oh, like, uh. it's just in case we lose you. <laughs> so we can <laughs> <find> even... <laughs> Something that really stands out as being a great example of that is in Return of the Jedi, the speeder bikes. The speeder bikes are like that perfect kind of, it hovers and it goes fast, but when you look at it, it looks really, not, not Mad Maxi or anything, but it looks like you could just hop on it, like it's a real thing, like you could go up to it 
and you could lick it and you'd know what it would feel like on your tongue, you know, and then it would make the noises and you go, yeah, it was just so real and relatable. <laughs> Kelnaka, we need something with your sands on it. He pulls that out and they go, what is that? He's like, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know. <laughs> this, <laughs> this jock strap. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's got my it sand out. on it. That's what you need, right? They're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, he does the Zoolander thing where he reaches in and he pulls out his underwear. <laughs> No. <laughs> Appreciated some of the creature designs and how the jungle stuff felt very Scavenger's Reign. The episode okay. was a I lot of... What? what? Oh, look how fake The jungle that. stuff felt very Scavenger's Reign. It was a bunch of people walking around a f like, I don't understand. <sighs> it was just wandering least, around. Uh, Endor around felt like a real forest. Set. Yeah, like this was a really obvious set with like yep. fake shrubbery. It just sucks. It's so crap. Just go to the woods and turn your cameras on. You're Disney. Just go to the woods. <laughs> that could be dangerous, Rex. It could be bugs. Good. There's people outside. Very wordy and kind of poorly performed dialogue, compounded by the fact that Amanda Stenberg is just so flat. For me, damn. Anything to say, Jesus. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a toxic fan racist. right here. Her wow. performance wow. in both roles is the weak link of this series, and that's a big problem because the wrong. show rests. I was going to say agree. I don't disagree. I do with agree. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's yeah. a totally super agree. flat actress. Apparently, I don't know if she's being directed to is be like this, get a but like. Now? The defense is that she doesn't really have a character to play. Like, she plays two different people, but while May has about 14 different iterations of who she is and what she wants, uh -oh. Osha doesn't really have any. And so, like, even a good actor would struggle, I think, yeah. to put much into this role because there's nothing to work with at all. I don't think she's very good in the role either, but I do think she's being let down by people above her. I, uh, I also kind of think that the big difference, especially when editing these, uh, I mean, Fringy have uh, definitely noticed, between her performance as May versus her performance as Osha is that she is much louder as May. She will do loud things. Pretty much. She'll um, she'll do, she'll have like unhinged screaming at times, whereas Osha is like completely just bland. And I'm just begging like, for that interview boring. where she says the difference between them is loud and quiet. That's how I played it. <laughs> I well, she, said it was, uh, she said it was like yin and yang. Right? Oh. That was what she said about it, which is funny. But I have heard <laughs> those words. Yep. <laughs> yep. On her shoulders. There was also some inconsistency in the writing. You're... Oh no! Oh, oh my god! Oh, no! Let's oh, do it! Whoa. I'm excited. Hey, you, 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 you said you distanced yourself from the toxic yeah, stuff. This is pretty. Uh -oh. This video is very toxic. I would say. Yeah, he's very careful. But this is he's saying the things that they say. <gasps> is he the one word of them? "some" in his sentence though is doing so much heavy lifting. There is there some, some, in some inconsistency. He's in holding back the train in Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some inconsistency in the writing. Yord right. says to Osha, I've known you since we were younglings. May has always been your wound. But I thought that no one knew she had a twin. And then May's- No, he he thought she was dead, right? Yeah, he thought she was dead. So that's not a, an inconsistency. The, the only How did they miss? Potentially How did they miss? <laughs> well, no, wait, wasn't Every there- Every time! Wasn't with X-23 they were going, they said she was never in the records? I could have so they yeah. know that she had a sister, but then they do say we didn't know she had a twin because the twin isn't in the record. So like it doesn't yeah. actually completely mesh up very easily. I'd have to There's check the lines because of... yeah, I spent too too much time with the lines. Uh, he, he references her sister when they first meet. Um, he references the sister before when they're on the ship heading to to rescue her, and it's Yord, Jackie, and Squid Game. And uh, Squid Game is talking about what uh, yeah. Osha's backstory is, and Yord says, I didn't know she had a twin. And then Jackie says, it's not in her files. So it's not great, but... So the way that makes sense is it? he believed she had a sister, but he didn't know that the sister was a twin? I, I, that would be how I would read it. Um, All right. But that seems like a really trivial thing to leave out as opposed to the sister generally. But I Oh, well, don't... I figure they left it out because of the... <sighs> I don't even want to get into how stupid the first episode. They're all stupid, but the fact that, like, you didn't tell us she had an identical twin. It's like, well, I saw her fall into an abyss. I figured she'd be dead. But it's like, oh, you're right, though. She's killing the Jedi ever... or something. Well, isn't it weird that we we brought this person into the Jedi Order and we didn't ask her questions like, do you have any brothers or sisters or mother, father? Do you have any other, like... What was Soul's Like, reason? if anything happens, to call the... someone? She was dead. That's why he didn't want to enter her into the records, I guess. 
Well, there's there's got to be something else going on, isn't there? Because like they are doing a bit of a cover up, and I think they are harking yeah. to the missing records and clones, for example, is to suggest that there is this conspiracy. They are keeping things back. The, the The problem with that then is that as soon as say Green Bean learns that there's stuff that's been deleted from the record, she should be asking questions, which well, she doesn't start asking until four. So, wouldn't Osha be a huge breach of that secrecy? Like she would you have would to think? know because she would just casually be like, "Yeah, they took me from a world where everyone died." Yeah, everyone I ever knew as a child died when, when the, the Jedi, Jedi came. showed up. Yeah, it's a bit weird. That's weird. This POV shift in the episode felt really abrupt, and the answer to the Sith mystery became very obvious by the end of Episode Four, which is why I'm glad they revealed it pretty quickly in Episode Five. Oh, okay. Episode Five, honestly, is exactly what, what, what? Okay. They, they revealed it quickly in the fifth episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, yeah, I was at five out of eight. I guess quick, within I guess the fifth so. episode. Yeah. <laughs> episode maybe five. they what maybe his helmet came off fast. Helmet, dude. This helmet, dude. It's, it's just terrible. It's oh, awful. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. Hey, they're selling it on uh, Haslab it's, for ninety nine dollars. Of course. Oh, God. It's, well, it's for twelve year olds who have a hundred bucks of disposable. <laughs> yeah, <life>. right. <laughs> that they can buy uh, your helmets with. I just can't Naturally. understand it. Someone thought this was a good idea in terms of visual design. It's because they're trying to make him creepy. He's even more failing. edgier, yeah, like, it gets worse and worse as more time goes on. Like, Vader, Vader ruined everything. <laughs> he ruined Vader, that yeah. guy. According to, according to Ryan, so this is, I, I forgot the name of the metal, and, and I don't care. But, Botosis. um, it's, Botosis? it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a difficult metal to forge, mm -hmm. uh, and it's brittle, but they took the time to cut a smile in it, and then put <laughs> little teeth, little bling teeth in it. That's nice. That's great. Well, where that wasn't part of the original construction because it looks very worn and beaten, but that's a level of charitability I'm not sure I'm willing to extend. Mm. Oh no, I'm sure it coincidentally ended up looking this way because of ah, all yes, kinds of things. Course. What happens if you five? mix this one with Frig? Ooh. Be careful, you could break the whole Star I think you just universe. instantly kill Palpatine. Yeah. Like Shit, wherever nice. he is, like you do that and it just breaks the code somewhere and he just explodes. <laughs> Honestly, it's exactly <laughs> what I want out of Star Wars. The dueling and fight choreography throughout the entire episode was spectacular. The villain no, is no, a you need to, oh, no, you need to watch no, you need to watch no. more movies, man. Oh, no. Like I don't know what to no. say. You need to just fucking watch actual well, um, the rage. Is it better, is it I think better than Disney Star Wars typically, yes, but is it better than the Phantom Menace? No. What we that learned is that lightsaber fights it. need to score at around a at least three range, and then they'll be fine because if the colors take care of the rest. As long as you get enough going, it's like, yeah, that's fine. It looks great now because of the colors. The colors are so fucking awesome. I can't believe that they I actually like promised that it was going to be as good as The Phantom Menace when it's like, yeah, sorry. I don't know that anything to this day has come close to when Obi-Wan runs They need runs to stop out, doing that. You know? They need to stop oh, overhyping themselves. Just yeah, don't do really it. Do. Just shut <laughs> the fuck up and let it show. But, plus, they've seen no movies prior to 20 years ago. Oh, and also, I don't know how, something I noticed is um, shows. when you watch the fights, what you'll notice is that uh, the camera is generally behind Soul or uh, Jackie, like you can't see their face, yeah. because mm. I presume that they got someone else to do those fights. Part yeah. of what makes it impressive in the prequels is that the actors did the fights. That makes it really, oh, that's something they that they are intense actors battles, they are sweating. Yeah, and that's, that's really cool, and that adds on. So, like, when you say, well, it's going to be so impressive, but the actors aren't doing it, I mean, already that kind of, like, isn't as... That already isn't as cool. Um, it's also... And so then when it's not even as good anyway... No, and it's, also, it's a completely deracinated idea of what choreography is anyway, because choreography isn't just supposed to be, oh, they can move really fast and it looks cool. Yeah. It's like saying, like, ballet is just flips for the sake of flipping yeah. and, and spins for the sake of spinning. That's sort of not the point. Like... Choreography is is purposive. It is an artistic medium. It is supposed to tell you things about the characters involved in the fight. It's supposed to tell you things about the story that they are all wrapped up in. And if anything, the Acolytes fight scene does the opposite of that, because it tells us that a, a Padawan in Jeki, who can't be trusted to train with lightsabers, is better with a lightsaber than 15 Jedi Knights who he massacred previously, which he shouldn't be. So there's no character, there's no backstory sort of going into the choreography at all. It is just, well, it, it moves quickly, and some of the individual sort of uh, like fight stances look impressive, but that's basically it. That's as deep as it goes, and it, that's not impressive. When you compare it to the story behind the choreography for the prequels and the reasons those things were done, and the philosophy that went into defining the fight styles for the different characters, it's just that they are different art forms entirely, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. even as simple as the part where uh, in in the fight with Obi Wan and Darth Maul, where he does the flip and then like taunts uh, Obi Wan. Even as simple as that, like doing the big somersault and then mocking him. 
It's like, hey, nice character, even a little it's, bit. It's a really frustrating, almost lost art at this point for in a lot of cases where the most communicative content in an Acolyte fight or even a lot of just a lot of modern fights, especially in Star Wars, is whoever's pushing who back. Like, that's the best they can do in terms yeah. of conveying something, in yeah. terms of what's going on in the fight narrative. Yeah. The person yeah, who is pushing the other person around is winning. There's no difference in their motions that can convey some difference in how they behave in a fight or how they fight. It's just someone's well, moving also, forward while the other's backpedaling. The one who's backpedaling is losing. And also how... just that a, a character could just sort of randomly win out of nowhere, because, I mean, yes. that's... A... It's as know, was yeah. pointed out, like, Jackie should not have done as well as she did, but basically, like, it it didn't actually matter how well she was doing, it was just once they decided, no, he's gonna yeah. grab his second lightsaber, then it's over. Uh, and it's the same <laughs> with Yord as well, it's like, well, we just decide, like, he does this little spin and then that's it for Yord. Like, there's not, it's not like a character is gradually, I mean, you talk about, you know, like, getting Luke and Darth Vader, yeah. right? the, whole, the whole point of that is that he's getting worn down right until the end, like, it's it's obvious who's winning compared to just, well, it's fighting, 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 oh, you win, okay. <laughs> like, you just win, I guess. There yeah, just the rest element, of the fight just uh, feel like noise. Exactly. In, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, when, you know, Indy's fighting the, you know, the Nazis at that plane, you know, in the desert, and he's just, like, getting really worn out, and he's tired to the point where he's on the ground, and he's saying, like, give me a second, I'll get up, I'll go, just give me a second. All of the, like, combat doesn't mean that you completely remove a character's personality, backstory, training, style, all of the little mannerisms that make a person a person, those things will come out in the way that they interact with other people, whether it's you know, obviously dialogue and just the way that they, you know, the way that they fight and everything. But when I see stuff like this, like it's in the Acolyte, it seems like the people who make it think that combat is completely separate from the character all right, let's bring in, like, let's bring in some new actors, they'll do all the things, and then once they're done, all right, we'll bring in the actors again, and then they can do whatever, instead of making the character a part of their own actions. It's like this weird compartmentalization, like, oh, combat has started, this is no longer a person, this is a prop swinging around a light stick, and then that's that, and then the plot happens, and then we can go back yeah. to the other mode. Uh, Combat-themed themed interpretive dance, that's what it turns into. Uh, and it's not, if you want to see a spectacular sword fight, it's, uh, from, uh, the court jester with Danny Kay. It's got Basil Rathbone. Basil Rathbone was a real sword fighter and it's freaking spectacular. Uh, it's a great movie too, by the way. Another angle people always want to a... analyze from is going to be the emotional stakes for the conflict in the characters. It's like, nobody knows who this guy is. So. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess just, he doesn't like the Jedi because of you know, something. That doesn't mean the fight can't be interesting. I'm just saying there's, there's nothing to draw from at that angle. So it's like we have to try something else. You know what else we got? It's like, well, how well did they do with incorporating the environment? Well, not they much. cut trees. Some trees got some trees got down, cut, but it wasn't even fell the wrong way. way. Yeah, that was like yeah. that was like between fights as well. That wasn't even you know. Well, remember in the I. Uh, I will be, I will give a little bit of praise, a, a little tiny bit of praise to Ahsoka. You had um the guy, the the who's the big guy, the, the big old man uh Ray who Stevens the Balin? actor passed away. Balin, that's it. When he fought, he had this sort of distinct way of moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, like that that's different. You are distinctly different from other people. And I can believe that based off of who you are and that you might have, you know, you split from the Jedi or you had your own style. Or the way that you fight and move is not the same as everyone else. You're not just completely interchangeable with all the other people around you. That was like, oh, like that's mildly interesting. And in the Phantom Menace, when they first, or when they meet uh, Darth Maul at the beginning in the hangar, and he uses the Force to flick a piece of battle droid on the the door panel so it opens the door so they can go through. Like what we need to like be that. seeing that. We need to be seeing that all the time. Like I've said, telekinesis is your like it. Telekinesis is your primary ability. The lightsaber is there in case they get too close, I feel. But we need to be using the environment. We need to be kicking up dust. We need to be throwing shit at other people. We need to be having rocks getting picked up and chucked. They they had this fight take place in a jungle, but there's nothing jungly about Like, take the Predator, right? The first Predator movie. Like, that is such a jungle movie, you know? If that, was, if that took place anywhere else, it would just be a different movie. So much of that 
plays True. into the story with trying to find this guy, someone being hunted, them shooting into the foliage, not knowing where this thing is that's coming after them. They play so strongly into the environment. And that doesn't happen in the Acolyte. No, that's what I mean. I think we've now gone over just how much they haven't taken any advantage of almost every single aspect of choreography outside of, you know, sometimes he throws a couple moves in a row on a, a single shot and there's dodges that look like they're about accurate. Like, okay. Whoa. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, sometimes they pull out and it's like, yeah, I, I feel like our standard should be a little bit higher. Well, they just they at least a little what... bit higher. But then even even if we're just saying, well, on a couple of technical grounds, it, it's above the rest of the shows. There are also a couple of technical grounds in which it falls way below the, the other yeah. shows that even Disney's put out, like having characters teleport in and out of existence and then keeping them out of scenes because if they were in the scenes, then it, sh that they, it wouldn't work the way they wanted it to. The way, like, Jackie jump-kicking from fucking nowhere, and having <laughs> then late, later seen how good she is in the fight, realizing that how much better the fight would have gone for the Jedi had she not disappeared for all of that time. And then Squid Game later on also disappears out of the scene for ages, and then comes back when it's convenient for him to do so. Like, technical stuff the has only to one too, right? that has the ability to defeat smilo ren and so it's, it's like so convenient he's just gone for so long while everyone gets killed mm -hmm. and then he watches the remaining two die oh that was so annoying so crap inaction is character as yes, well unfortunately mm -hmm. yep spectacular the villain is a badass and gave us two Dude. truly shocking right. moments. Oh, and it's gonna just be the two times shocking. he killed a person. That's like, whoa. Person. He's, he's a badass. badass. He's so badass. He is, he is cringe. He he is one cringe. of the things I find normalized cringe as this man. It's really strange that if he hates the Jedi so much, he kills them with this unfeeling, almost like apathy. Like he takes no joy or pleasure or catharsis and killing them it's just so mechanical and um uninteresting when he supposedly has these very deep reasons like mother well, mentioned darth maul you know when he had you know obi-wan on the ropes there when he was dangling and he was you know doing the sparks and everything is like haha you suck <laughs> like that that's that's he like oh, yeah, a, he, hates, um... he gets the jedi he does have his little, like, Joker smiles when his mask comes off because he wants to pretend to be unhinged and stuff. The Smiler Ren. When he's, like, locked up with, um, I forget if his dialogue for it. Someone you might remember, but... <clears throat> you know, because Soul is like, Whoa, Roar, you're mean! And then he was like, yeah, I am pretty mean. <laughs> I am actually mean, yes. Shadow the Hedgehog. Like, yeah, I was going to say normalizing Shadow, Shadow the Hedgehog as what we want <laughs> out of our Sith. I think we can do a bit better. Yeah, he kills Jake. And that and performance? Always, it, you killed her. And like, is that what it was called? Ooh, edgy oh, line. Oh, I like yeah. it. Very, very good. Reveal. Why didn't um, you introduce that idea earlier, you know? Like... <laughs> And, it's, and it, like, even his motives at that point, I think as Rags mentioned as well, but like, they, they do kind of fall apart really quickly because they do have that brief conversation about why he's here killing everyone. And he's like, well, May betrayed me and risked me being exposed. So now I have to kill everybody here. But episode two establishes that May doesn't know who you are. So if you hadn't turned up and started killing all of these Jedi, then you probably would be less exposed than you are now having killed all of the Jedi. And if your goal was always yeah. to kill her and leave, then why are you holding her hostage? And if your goal was always to like kill her and the rest of the Jedi, then why are you holding her hostage to talk to the Jedi rather than just killing everybody, which you're very capable of doing? Like, you're just inviting this to go wrong for you because that's what the show needs to happen. But the well, they think the galaxy is 17 rooms, so <laughs> you can't just like go off and live a life and just be normal you can't do that you have to act as if oh they won't leave me alone like what they're tracking you down wherever you go just live a normal they, life they they'll never know existed until you turned up on this until you did the inciting incident sake. of the show which is tell some chick that you trained to go and murder jedi yeah that's just been a fucking failure like, <laughs> just, like that'll get them snooping around and poking about <laughs> looking for who you are it is funny though, right? I, I don't want anything to do with the Jedi. You guys ruin everything. Anyway, my acolyte, go and kill the Jedi. <laughs> go kill Trinity. <laughs> okay. And, and go kill Trinity in a very crowded establishment. It, with no he weapons. to rest upon the assumption that his existence is made very difficult by the Jedi existing, which, you know, there's plentiful ways for that to make sense, but we're not, we don't see any of them. So what's even the point? This thing is going to be also, that episode where they gonna... make them ridiculous and kill everybody or whatever. Yeah. Have we gotten anything on the whole you you can't use a weapon to kill them? Was that 
Did that ever like come well, out? To I mean, they just said that again, again, right? Considering that uh, he, he killed most of them with his lightsaber, so you know. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, like at this point, that. I'm wondering. Like they might literally just forget that that was set up to be this very important. Well, remember thought. he, he asked about it. Right? They can't, they can't have forgotten. They've they've mentioned it too often for like even for a show as stupid as this, it's got probably going to be a flashback you know, episode. and It's going to explain it for some reason. It'll probably be really stupid. It'll probably be really stupid, but I imagine that they're going to address it at some point. My vague guess at it would be: I think there's some backstory for the sith where they to get their own lightsaber they have to take one from a jedi and use that to kill them and we've seen her trying to grab lightsabers and that was what uh team oeza Kai kaime suggests she does before we like learn or what well, we already knew before it is revealed that he is smilo he suggests to her hey what about taking one of their weapons does that count so my, uh, it's a vague yeah. guess but i think it might be something like that you have to steal a jedi's lightsaber and use that to kill one to become a true sith acolyte um, and even though the lightsaber is red, and that's a specific dark side ritual that only really the Sith do, that will still confuse the Jedi because they don't read history and they don't know what that is. Also, uh, in retrospect, what a stupid fucking plan to go after Indara with no weapons first. She could easily have captured her, like, instantly. I mean, yeah, she's a, then she's a Jedi master. So taking her back to yeah, Coruscant, they get into her head hardcore and they're like, so there's a Sith running around. <laughs> just there you go like <laughs> that simply then smile red would be like wow i have to kill all of you now yeah like go kill the one in a bubble who just sleeps all day or whatever like if you <laughs> it, like let's start off easy right if you can you, get him to drink poison or whatever then we'll then we'll talk about the rest by the way chat i hope you guys all understand that they will come for the old republic soon enough okay they, oh, yeah. they yeah. cannot day. resist the idea mm. of a, like a thousand jedi running said... a thousand lightsabers they they cannot resist we that said idea. they were coming for throne for unironically about four and a half years and then they finally did yeah They'll do the old Republic they come and they're going to ruin it. They will ruin it. And they will probably make it so that Knights of the Old Republic, they'll probably decanonize aspects of that story in doing so as well. I hope you're ready for Revan. I hope yeah. you Kotor mm -hmm. fans are ready for Revan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's going to be amazing. <laughs> Revanina. Really shocking <laughs> moments. And that performance was also incredible. I just really appreciated oh, the show. But why? It was, it was, it was edgy. Incredible. It was edgy. It was it was it was channeling it was, Shadow the Hedgehog it energy. Flat, it was flat and edgy. It was very uninspired and dull. He might as well have said hey, "kid" at some point. Like, dude, that <laughs> that, that screenshot. No, yeah, that, screen, that screenshot does not help it at all. No, dude, it's so <laughs> funny when he grabs Soul's <laughs> lightsaber and headbutted it. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> this is a screenshot of really a funny. photo from a computer screen taken. Buy a phone from across the room. From a toaster. In. Yeah. This is yeah. my yeah. my Mazda's key fob can take better pictures than this. <laughs> dude, th this show thought it was so cool. They th it's punchy. they thought it was so cool when he grabbed the second dude and pulled him into the lightsaber and then locked Fuck their heads yeah. off. They thought, ah, oh, yeah, that was so cool. Never mind why he allowed that to happen to himself, but you know, oh, yeah. So what do they cool. teach you in that Jedi Academy? Red. Nothing, I guess. They teach you about no. the ocean and fire. Yeah. <laughs> Joe for not fire. pulling its punches here. I'm also digging how the Acolyte is echoing the prequels by interrogating oh. the dogma of the Jedi. I'm still finding No, it doesn't. Is it? Is it, is it, it at all? There is, we there haven't is no learned dogma. anything about the Jedi. We've learned nothing about them. Like, not only is there no critique, but there's no philosophy to critique. There's nothing. They're just a bunch of assholes in the jungle. <laughs> Imagine, like, two people just burst into your house and started pointing at each other and saying, that guy's the evil one. No, he's the evil one. That's what we've got <laughs> we were, here. We were exploring their philosophy, Theo, yes. yes. I, I don't know that we were. Yeah, and just like the Echo, I just want them out of my house. I mean... Jaime's <laughs> speech isn't particularly interesting to me. It's like, I want to do Sith stuff, but the Jedi are mean and they make it so I can't, so now I have to kill all of you. I'm just sitting here like, oh, okay. So wow. deep. It's so yeah. edgy. Like, oh, so I edgy. guess I have to go on a murderous rampage. So complex. What a bother. Truly. We'll get something about it probably in the next episode. I mean, it's so, yeah. it was so easy to call coming anyway. I think I actually put this in the end of my episode 4 video. But it's like, obviously, Osha will somehow end up with Smilo, and May will somehow end up with the Jedi, and Smilo will tell Osha what really happened on her homeworld. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the place when they'll try and launch this critique of the Jedi as creating, effectively, evil amongst the dark side by their rigid and dogmatic views. The problem is, though, the closest we've had to interrogating any philosophy so far is the episode 3 stuff about the threat. And that is just empty. So I don't have any confidence 
confidence in them actually doing yeah, something with this. It's just like a like it's one group using a metaphor and another group using a different metaphor for things that we can't tie to anything else. So it's uh, that we got nothing. I got nothing. Imagery all... does not. Imagery doesn't tend to stand on its own. It needs to like it ties to something. It is used to demonstrate something about a worldview or an idea or make it easier to communicate. You but, explain like, things based off of things you imagine. You're know, an ocean. Yes, we don't know anything. Imagine you're a droplet in that ocean. Imagine you were the droplet the whole time in the ocean that you were. Fire. Yeah, they just no. firing the ocean. <gasps> That's, once fire. that scene is over, it's like there we go. <laughs> now we can do anything else. Lee Jung Jae We have, we have your... done philosophy. Yes. Really compelling character and performance, and I'm interested to see the reveal oh, that's coming for him. Okay, the acolyte okay. is far from perfect, but enough of it is working for me to keep going. Well, I you, you go. were gonna say that no matter what. I just you know it's uh, I guess it was a fair and balanced review because he said the good stuff was the good. the fights and the performances sometimes. And Spectacular. Then... I mean, it's just it's just <laughs> interesting how much work audience members have, uh, end up having to do for these shows anyway. As in, like, oh, wow, that was a great exploration of the philosophy of the dogmatic view of the Jedi. And you're just sitting there like, what are you referencing? No. Uh, so this said, is a reminder. Your eyes. Okay. Because we've played with yeah. the next character in this selection we've come across before. <laughs> The uh -oh. Fleam Brigade. Yes, and I'm, I'm going to show us where we first came across this character in the Fleam Brigade. The Fleam of Shlurpo. This is uh, from... I don't remember what episode of Mando this was, and I put this in here. <laughs> so it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You ready, Rex? One thing about Slave 1 is I noticed in the Rogue Squadron games, it's really easy... No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, these guys. Oh, that yes. seems like a waste. Yeah, pretty intense waste, but whatever. Oh, two ships, yeah. And plus the precision. <laughs> yeah, well, yep. whatever. The two ships have to be in a, you know, exactly. right there, right, and right there, yeah. and they, uh, and they have to see that thing coming and not do anything about it. It's like, how do you still? So this fella, he's got some opinions to share. You guys, uh, you guys ready? Bosh okay. and Bosh and Shad. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Like That's stuff. an unlikely like team up. Why do you like it? Because I don't engage with the. Oh, sorry. I should roll it back a bit because he starts straight away. Um, okay, okay. Uh, who is this? It doesn't really There's matter. a net above their head that's got robots in it. Think about oh. it. It's like, how do you still like stuff? You like everything. Why do you like that? Because I don't engage with the feedback on the internet. Like, so the okay. He answers the question, why do you like everything to do with Star Wars? And his answer was, because I don't engage with feedback on the internet. Why are you still a Christian? Oh, because I don't watch a, I, I don't watch any religion debates. I, I don't or even talk yeah, to any what a, people from any other religions. Is that just admitting you never want to explore any other point of view than your own? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, yes. like okay. I know pretty much. Yes. I know if I hear the arguments, I might change my mind. So uh, <laughs> I can understand, understand the idea, like, like, right? I just I can understand the idea of being skeptical of internet discourse. Like, sure, but. The idea that there's nothing of value ever said by the millions upon millions of people screeching their opinions into the <laughs> void. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, I generally don't. I hang out with you, with, with my friends, you know? Mm -hmm. We have, like, that in-person experience. I have a feeling that this, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of looking at this set and all of the construction that went into making this Star yep. Wars-themed set, and it makes me wonder, how much of you can afford to not like Star Wars? You know, yeah. there, there is there's that element of you you've hitched your wagon to this very strongly, as evidenced by this this production I see. So yeah, I, and just to clarify, if the question were reflected on us, how can can you afford to dis uh, to like Star Wars? We're like, yep, Andor. We did a whole bunch of <laughs> Andor, stuff on that. Mm -hmm. Love Andor. We oh. like the original trilogy. Yeah, we even like the prequels, the goobery yep. movies that they are. So, you know, it's easy for us. We'll, uh, we'll just take them as they come. We don't go, I don't, uh, we go in hating it, and then we don't check anyone what everyone's saying <laughs> so that we can maintain our hatred. Totally it's fine when you do it in like the positive how much direction. Of, like, a boring, insufferable sap do you have to be to say, oh, no, my default position is that I love absolutely everything. 
It's like that that it's so tedious. Like there's that old line about it's better to be is it a a, a pig? No, sorry, it's better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Um, sort of advertising himself as the satisfied pig precisely because he doesn't critically engage with anything. What does he have to talk about? Like, doesn't it just get really tedious if you're just saying, "Oh, it wasn't that good." Yeah, wasn't that good. Yeah, wasn't that good. Yeah, yeah, wasn't that good. Well, you like yeah. the um the seismic charge from the uh, slave one. So that was... Oh, sorry. Well, I, should, I, shouldn't I, mean, said, I didn't mean to see Slave One. I'm sorry. Fire spray, right? Yeah. Or Boba Fett uh, ship. Is that what it's called? I wouldn't want to upset anybody by calling it Slave One. So it's fire if, spray. If you really like this stuff, then just don't even talk about the the discourse. Like yeah, you wouldn't be aware lot. of it. If you if you don't engage in it and you're not part of it, then you're not aware of it. And just tell us why you like it, how much you like yeah. it, do all that. But that always gets brought up. I don't pay attention to all this stuff. I completely pay attention to all the fucking time. And now I'm going to tell you why I disagree. Whatever. Look, all right. It's life. It's it's like it's like what's the name said about uh about the show, the yin and the yang. All right. Look, the good and the bad. All right. Yeah. The duality of existence. You know. Yeah. How are you going to appreciate the good if if there is no such thing as bad? What does it mean yeah. to be good? You know. All that. I mean, I, 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 it's like, it's a philosophy. Follow. It's me, so it, cool it just, to take yin yang and just make it good bad. It's so funny. I, yeah, to me. no, I know. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it means, right? Yeah, that's, it's that's certainly bad, what those right? concepts are on about. <laughs> Goodness and badness. Goodness and like I said, it refers to loud and quiet, and you know, people are just figuring that out. So it's okay. Hmm. And then I usually don't engage with it, other than just like rewatching it on my own. Uh, every once in a while, I'll be like, well, what are some other reactors? What do they say? You know, that type of thing. But, ah, yes, every uh, once in a while. Exactly. I, I, believe, I bet the I ones believe that you believe watch. You, Gary, it's, it's, uh, I, it's, you should watch EFAB reactions. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A fresh new perspective Yay. on uh, how much these shows are well constructed Woo. and definitely will stand the test of time. Yeah. Just the fan response has just been so, like, vile and full of why mm. Mm. Interesting. I wonder why. why would that be why would that be? Like, what happened what it happened? always feels like asking a flip reverse i'd be like what's the equivalent on the love side of vile because you, you know, he says full of contempt it's like so what would be the reverse because it should be positive adoration well yeah. that's the thing isn't it they get they're yeah. like yeah that's a good thing though you're like no <laughs> no i mean <laughs> like uh, what is toxic love what is things love bombing what is like yeah ugh, there needs to be words Why can't you just let people hate things man yeah, Being yeah. a hater is <laughs> fucking fun <laughs> like i just want to sit over here with all my friends and hate star wars every week for profit all right i just leave us alone okay <laughs> like if someone said toxic adoration i think people are like toxic adoration that's like stalking. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> so I mean, it exists. It's, it's the real it, thing. I mean, so. it is. You know, if he just defines it as like vile, right? It's like, oh, well, there's, is there, are you, sh do you think that there's really not many people out there who have substantive criticisms of the Acolyte or other Star are, Wars shows? Disney are you, Star Wars shows. Are you saying this guy needs a restraining order from Star Wars? Well, you know, he's watching it <laughs> sleep at night. <laughs> It's worth mentioning a lot of these broad criticisms are made by people who don't even watch the fucking videos. Of this it, it does, you know, because we're watching these directly. I'm just saying, like, have you actually watched them, or are you just saying it's vile because there's articles and Twitter posts about how it's vile and horrible? It seems like it's probably going to be Twitter posts, like, uh, this is the downfall of stuff. It's like, oh, I don't want to do this. I want to watch the fun show or whatever. And it's like, yeah. As Gary already said, just don't mention it. Then just talk about why you like the things. Yeah, you don't need to talk about because it's funny because then you, they, they say people. they don't, they don't care for the feedback on the internet. But the, him talking about this definitely lot. comes from the feedback that he got from the internet of his fan base, right? Like that's probably where it came from. So I guess he does. Yes. Pay attention he to something. He definitely pays attention. He definitely he has does. to. If, if he didn't pay attention, he would have never brought it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, which I can understand if it's if you're a person that I just haven't liked Disney stuff for a long time. Now it's come to a head. I got... Oh, OK. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. All right. That's yeah. that's us. I'm not fond yeah, of yeah. a lot of Disney we, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Pretty bad track record. I get that. But like some of the things that are being brought up as of like objective facts like this thing breaks canon like it, it doesn't. <laughs> Oh, what thing? Tell well, us. So, so, but this is just first? this is just an entirely different thing. You this is just yeah, you, you disagree. Well, also, that. to be clear, he said the playing field. 
he said it doesn't break canon, not who cares if it breaks canon. Yeah. yeah so he is defending the Just... he's defending the idea of they are wrong in their criticism because their criticism is incorrect, not I do not care about that criticism. He has stepped up to bat, so to speak. Like he's well, in basically, the ring now. Yeah, he said you're wrong. Well, yeah, we need to teach him about uh he's confused. He thinks it's vile contempt, you know, evil doers online saying things and it's like, no 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 no. They have a point of view, you have a point of view. And they're different points of view. That's all that's happening. Okay. Yeah. And and it's because they care. That's the audience you paid for. Kiati Mundi, they had to rush and change his backstory. Now, it turns out that he had a shortened life. I didn't know this. I didn't care. Um, that he had a shortened lifespan. And the reason was interesting that he got an exemption with the Jedi to go out and bang women. He had three wives. Well, yeah, all of uh, To keep perpetuating his race because the males didn't live as long. And then they just changed all, all that. That's fuck changing now. canon. Yep. No, no, it doesn't. I, I don't know how to like kindly say that without being like uh, insulting. Sure. Well, no, you can just you say just it's wrong them. for these reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can just say, say it's easy. The, you can just say it's wrong for Man, these reasons. That, that sounds like you're really angry about this. Yeah, you sound mm. pretty vile, dude. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> it's yeah. actually remarkably easy to have like normal conversations yes. online. It is, yeah. it is <laughs> really easy when you just talk about the subject at hand yeah. without well, getting think, into all of yeah. this annoying, insufferable fucking. I do it with people all the time. I call them yeah. my friends, even. I know, right? Just insane. Talk to people that's like crazy. human beings have conversations. It's really not that difficult. I um well like with with the Sith, right? So it's not the argument on whether or not they existed. It's are the Jedi aware of them? Yeah. And then you have to make us believe that they're not aware of them. Although dozens of Jedi just fought a Sith, a guy with a red lightsaber that uh, maybe one of the people paid attention in history class and went, "Oh shit, that guy looks like a Sith." And uh they get on their little communicator or they I, they do something to record that knowledge. That like that would be pretty Absolutely. effing important. But that uh, doesn't happen. And, that's like the first thing in the next episode that has to happen because Squid yeah, Game yes. is now back on the ship, and the first thing he has to do is to radio Greenbean and say, "Hey, by the way, we just fought a guy who called himself a Sith." Yeah, he like, said he explicitly that, that we would dumb. call him a Sith. So yeah, yeah just put that it's out like, there. A yep. bunch of Jedi have fucking died, so this isn't going away easily. No, you're right. You know, okay. It feels like you're just looking for problems, like. I personally, I'm sorry, our brains work and we notice things. I, just, like, I don't know, man. I, I don't you're know looking, what to tell you. Like, you're, I, I, you're looking I for solutions, care. and you you find them everywhere when you're not actually finding them. How about that? I don't personally don't go into art looking for problems. I go into art to have <laughs> they just Dude, they're just evident. We just who notice does this? Them. Yeah, we, who we, is this apparent person like the fucking critic from Ratatouille who goes <laughs> to every film like with their little notepad like. Okay. Mm, Mm, to yes. be fair, Anton Ego looks like the opposite human being of this person does. So that's an <laughs> I guess so. Like these people don't exist. Things jump out at you. You notice them. Yeah. I don't yeah, choose don't, what I do and don't, don't notice. It's literally not my decision. I it, it just it happens. Yes. If it snaps, it snaps. It snaps at different places for different people, depending on I guess how yeah. lenient or harsh they may be, or their particular knowledge about a given subject matter. But everybody has a line. And like, that eventually will just get crossed, and you don't decide when a story breaks your immersion or your suspension of disbelief. To, to extend, like, an olive branch, I guess, uh, the amount of you've been burned by a studio before will inform your willingness to give them a shot, right? Which informs your charitability towards the thing you're watching. So when someone with a track record like Disney starts putting something that gives you things that require explanation, you're not exactly confident that you're going to get satisfying answers. I think yeah, that's yeah. pretty reasonable. Let me give you have it, no it, trust it, that these people are going to satisfy your concerns. Let's go with a strong example. One of the, you know, Jedi gets fucking stabbed with a lightsaber and he falls to the ground. We're all going, well, he'll be okay, right? And yes. that's when we're like, wow, yeah. you're just trying to bitch about the fact that Sabine didn't die. And I'm like, no. It's just you, pattern recognition, Do you want me man? to take it's it seriously? Brain, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> brain. If you want me to take this stupid-ass show seriously, then my brain is telling me more times than last people survive this shit, so I should assume that guy is fine. I actually yeah. called it out for praise in the script for the episode 5 review. It's like, hey, they, they got stabbed and they died. This is a crazy. thing. That they've good done job. Absolutely I mean, nuts. It really needs to be said, but that's the state we are now in. I've seen people say sentence. that... Uh... They got stabbed and they died. This is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good thing. I've seen people say that Smilo watched Ahsoka, and so he's like, I got a triple stab and neck break. I can't be just, just be single sure. stab it. Yeah, it's not going to work. You want to get people like this to like, legitimately answer the question, 
why has so much changed? How come the attitude for Star Wars has shifted so dramatically? They always say it's money. Into the negative. They always say it's money. Mm-hmm. Oh well, there you go. All right, but just to be clear, we're not we're not the people well, here with uh, these for big, fancy Star Wars themed sets. Uh, Theo Th Theo so. Theory put out a video recently addressing that criticism, and he said from a first hand account that he made a lot more money when Star Wars was good, and he was celebrating it with everybody. Well, of course, mm. you have a vested yeah. interest in keeping your thing alive and healthy and well. It's like, what happens when you, you have a channel that's devoted to a franchise, an IP, a specific video game, a specific whatever it is, and it starts to, like, what do you think happened to all, that, all the Halo YouTubers? What do you think happened to all of these other, you know, YouTubers that had hitched their wagons, so to speak, to this thing, and it starts going downhill? Well, like, oh, shit, that's not good. They want that thing to be healthy and to thrive and be praised mm -hmm. and to be positive and constantly generate more, 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 more. How happy are the Game of Thrones YouTubers? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, sure they, they were thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they're right, the good fucking, with House uh, of the Dragon. Yeah. The, the several YouTubers I, had, I was following to see if they was coming out, where well, they had to review like three, four, five, six, and you could just tell listening to them. They were like, uh, so this happens, and this uh, <laughs> reference is this, and uh, <laughs> what the f <laughs> losing their minds. And then House of the Dragon comes along, and they all they gasp. They're like, "Oh my god, could it be?" Oh, thank God, my prayers have been answered. They're finally mm -hmm. back. Have an experience. Sure. You don't look at you a know? painting and be like, "I think they use yeah. the wrong brush here." Yeah. That, actually, That's, yes. That, actually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. Also, sometimes people might say that it's terrible. Have you ever been in an art class? Jeez, There's cold. nothing wrong with people saying it. Why are you saying <laughs> there's something wrong with that? It would be more like I'm going to paint this realistic picture, and the sky is like purple with polka dots on it. Yeah, and the grass is blue, and hamburgers eat people. And you're like, wait, wait a second, hold, it. wait, wait. This sounds What's like a dream I had old? once. I don't. This is not as you have described it to me. Imagine the teacher was old. correcting a student's work, and the student was like, "You went into my work looking to hate it." <laughs> He's like, "Okay, it's still shit." Yeah, but like, you know, Yoda tells Luke, like, don't bring your weapons with you into the cave of evil. That's a bad idea. And Luke's like, eh, I'm bringing them anyway, you know? But because he brings them, he finds conflict. Yeah. What you does this are, have you to are, do you with You are kidding anything? me, right? <laughs> well, wait, do, wait, is he trying to compare yes. this to the, you can't use wep- what a what a fucking retard! He's, what he's, he's, oh, no. he's saying the Yoda saying your weapons you will not need them before going into the cave is the he make Luke makes the mistake there that we all make going it, into Disney Star Wars with our blasters ready. You know Vader wasn't actually in the cave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like did that escape this guy? Uh, hey, you know I, maybe. How do, uh, he could have been. Um, you know, it, Rags, media literacy is a. <laughs> like, let me, let me sit you down. Uh, uh, oh, it no. Hurts, it hurts my brain. It, my brain hurts. Imagine this guy. He sees Vader around the corner. He's like, oh, God, he's here. I just, What's Luke doing in the Darth Vader helmet? <laughs> maybe it's not. Yeah, maybe when you're going to the cave where you're going to trip balls, it's not good to have a lightsaber. <laughs> you know, you might cut yourself. I don't fucking know. Imagine. Your loaded handguns, you will not need them. <laughs> <laughs> like we're about to boot up the next episode of Acolyte with this guy. And he's like, "You guys are you guys are in hate mode, right?" Like, um, I'm just I'm just gonna take it for what it is, mate. Like, you know, maybe I'm, I am. Mm. Maybe I am in hate mode <gasps> because hating is fun. Hating is hating cool. can be very fun. Stop pretending that it isn't. <laughs> hating is fun. Hating it's is fun. It's hate. very easy. easy. That example either. I've seen somebody else say. I think it was in reference to canon. It was like someone said, "Oh, you only lose what you take in with you." In reference to the Odyssey. So, well, okay, if I take in canon with me, I lose that, do I? <laughs> Pretty That's much. Disney, yeah. that stupid argument. Also, the, the cave is there to teach you a lesson. That's sort of the point of the cave in the script is that Luke yep. takes in what he, you know, fears that that is the conflict within him. This guy's approach is no, go into the cave and you'll see absolutely nothing. That means you've got nothing going on. You're basically brain dead if you go into the cave and see nothing, which I imagine this guy probably would. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say. <laughs> that's probably ooh, accurate. Soda. <laughs> <laughs> I see a refrigerator. <laughs> you know, a lot of people went in to this show with their blaster belts clipped in, being like, I'm going to go see what's wrong with this show, you know? And it's just... Yeah, maybe I do feel a bit defensive. We gave, we gave it the best fucking shot. Star it Wars. failed miserably from its first scene. It was terrible. Mm. Like, what do you want us to do? Lie? Why do, why do I feel the need to be strapped with a gat while I'm walking through Moss Eisley or whatever? 
when I watch these shows? Why? Why? What do you think put us in that mood? Mm. I didn't used to. I didn't used to feel like I had to go armed into these places <laughs> that I once called home. But he, but now I do. What happened? It's. Again, it's pattern recognition. This is like the equivalent of one of those influencers to go that goes and visits ISIS, you know, and just thinks, oh, nothing will happen. It'll be fine. Listen, there's precedent, and you, you, we have we're pattern recognizers. What humans do. There's not a lot, of, like as a as a viewer, like you're required to bring your suspension of belief. No. That's suspension of no, disbelief. No. My suspension of belief is already there. <laughs> my belief is already suspended. We, we were there a long time ago, man. My suspension of belief. <laughs> At least to say, like, it's like going into a wrestling show and being like, "Hey, I think it's all fake." <laughs> and I was like, That's "No, you." Not... It's not even I close know it's to fake. that. Yeah. Everyone it's, knows wrestling is fake. Well, but that's why knows. that's why it's so wonderful and charming. Well, I was, I was just about to say we know that movies and TV are fake. Everyone, yes. every, yeah. like, why? You... Wait, you telling me movies are fake? This is oh, what I mean. Like, he's, he's like, you're supposed to. It's not even about that. That shit gets broken Star Wars is all a on its own. Mahler. The, the equivalent to what he's saying would be like you watch, I don't know, Lord of the Rings, and you see someone cast a magic spell, and you're like, oh, that can't happen. That's not real. Yeah, this isn't even relevant, yeah. honestly. The thing is, I'm. I'm plenty immersed into the shitty world of the Acolyte. I, I take it for what it is, I pay attention to its <laughs> rules, and then I'm like, wow, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, someone, he could have made, if I wasn't taking it seriously, someone could just be like, why are you, this isn't a real world, more. It's not a real thing. Like, why are you so immersed? Like, someone could make that argument if they wanted to, but I love that yeah, he thinks that this is all have... solved by suspension of disbelief, as if we can all just turn it on at a whim. I've always hated that. Like, you have to earn it. You can't just make me switch it randomly. We get immersed in bad stuff all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's just it's just what happens. You Madam Web was in... a, 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 a journey, down. you know? I yeah. was gripped oh, by yeah. Madam Web throughout, and when that I, Pepsi I Cola there. sign landed on the villain, I, I felt that hit. I knew what was happening there. It was painful, but it was right. I think a way of thinking about suspension <laughs> of disbelief should be, in terms of a relationship between a writer and a um, you know viewer, reader, is that the viewer is already probably giving you a lot by ac accept accepting your story as being like a series of events that they're, you know, treating as though it's, you know, kind of real compared to, well, I know that this was written to evoke a bunch of feelings in me and it's all deliberately, mm -hmm. you know, orchestrated in that way. They're already giving you a lot to like, especially if you don't like science fiction or fantasy, they're already very much meeting you halfway. So at the same time, it's like, what's your job to... You know, like you can't you can't place the onus entirely on the viewer of like, well, just you know, if that thing pisses you off. Just nah, don't, don't let it pit, don't do that. Just be happy, enjoy it. Like, never, ever, ever take any issue with anything that's being put on the screen. Yeah, you're. This is why not how you are constantly going to get conned and duped your entire. Because he's obviously disliked something in his life, and therefore he'd be like, why don't you just like everything? It would be nicer. It's a nicer world, isn't it? Just have suspend your disbelief, man. Pretend it's what you wanted. The famous Pretend line. Pretend it's what you wanted. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Spend your belief. <laughs> See, it's a wrestling show. Yeah. Give yourself into it. It's a space fantasy show with wizards. Yeah. You oh know? Like, oh, you oh, just, oh, it's, no. It's really space wizards! Oh. We did it! We did it! Space fantasy with wizards! It's like a bingo, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah. Yay, we did it! Ooh. <laughs> it's like bungo. To it. Why, why is it, just... just like very quickly, why is it that all of the people who apparently hate Star Wars hold Star Wars to higher standards than all of the people who say they love it? Like, people why is this, this always the way it happens? They do it with everything. How do, mm -hmm. how do we say that the thing, if we say that the thing was shitty all along, well, uh, that's a strategy of a kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Like, yeah. oh, you think it's bad? Well, it was always bad. It was so always bad. Suspend like your they... belief. Turns out they were convinced by our arguments that the acolyte was shit. They're just like, yeah, I like shit. Look at look at the original trilogy. Yeah. And we're like, hang on. <laughs> we didn't, we when didn't I was when I was growing up watching the Empire Strikes Back, little little rags in front of the TV, well, in front of that that loud ass CR TV to be business. I was like, man, I'm so glad this is shit. So I'll never be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of have fun not get super angry and then you know go whine about it on the internet oh we are having fun you're yeah, whining yeah, about it on the internet can't, right I'm now having tons of fun. i don't like people getting angry stuff, why can't though? why can't people get angry over this why are they not allowed Bro, i Tell fucking me. love whining on the internet <laughs> it's fun the profession what it's for leads to anger
Just enjoying that silence. Why aren't we allowed to be yeah. angry? Tell me. Because Dang, angry I, I... Uh, is perceived as bad. Don't be it's angry. Always just... Angry Don't be means angry. passion. I'll take anger. Anger means you're you feel something. That's the start. No. <laughs> you're too old. I know. To maybe be angry. maybe 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 they're afraid. It's like, oh, if we're all angry at it, maybe it just goes away forever and ever, and we'll never get it back. So we have to be positive, so we at least get those breadcrumbs oh, of poop on the floor. I've always moments. loved that yeah. argument. Like, the more negative you are, the more likely Disney won't even make Star Wars anymore. And you're like, oh, oh no. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe if you wouldn't have <laughs> been so nice the time. all the time, they would have made something better by now that is also Star Wars. That's a crazy idea right there. But I, I don't know, it's just always just positive. I would flip it around. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just annoying. And obviously, it's not working like in in a broader sense in like the no. the mainstream because everything is just going down, like everything's going down. Yeah. Money, viewership, everything. From where I'm sitting, uh, rewind, I don't know, four or five years, and uh, the perception of Marvel and Star Wars was way better than it is now. It's uh, oh yeah, significantly dropped even in. I mean, every year, you know, like the, we were we were a little surprised with the accolade. It felt like everybody agreed this one was shit, and what we've got left for the people who like it are basically saying, eh, it's "Just it's it's fine, it's fine." Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fifth episode yeah, was okay. It's not the player, is it? No. But if that's what how it makes you feel, I have to confront the way that criticism makes me feel. You know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but. I'm I'm trying to like make my peace with it because last night looking through some stuff, which is the first time I've ever looked through like some Star Wars like internet stuff in a long time, it just mm. kind of confirmed to me like, oh, yeah, it's a real good idea that I don't do this. <laughs> sure. No. I, but, okay. Okay. Is, because people said mean words, or I might mean, never yes. do it again. <laughs> he discovered standards. There's definitely a lot. <laughs> he discovered that people <laughs> with different opinions, and he's like, wait a second. Out this there, terrible. And, like. I know some people too that like they were real big Star Wars fans, yeah. and more and more in the Disney era, they're mm -hmm. kind of like, you know what? I don't think I'm a Star Wars fan anymore. I just sure. I like Star Wars, but I don't think I'm a fan. And yeah. I'm like, I think that's fine. If, yeah. if 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 you've grown out of it, I suppose, or if wait, is, uh, what if, I don't like is, is that what they said? Or did... well, of course, I grew out of it. If it's meant for twelve year olds, mm -hmm. it's just it's 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 it puts it all on the person who's like lost interest. It's like ah, we'll see something about you has changed. It's not that anything about yeah. the media has changed. Exactly, in yeah. It's not that people have grown out of it. It's that they're tired of, of getting shed <laughs> constantly like, delivered to their door. How come now. I haven't... Yeah, I haven't grown out of the original trilogy. Thanks to oh, Rex, you remind me of... Um, like, we're discussing this on Open Bar, how sad it is when you find out like the whole OT thing. They'll be like, oh, you, you, you still like the OT as well, even though that's like... For, and you're like, oh, God, what did you like the OT for? What did you think the <laughs> OT was good yeah. at? Like... You start to worry, it's like, oh, we talked, didn't like it yeah, for the we, same reasons. We, we, yeah. Well, we've, yeah, we've talked about this. What, what exactly is it that you fell in love with? When we, we, I think we talked about this during um, in Mandalorian when we saw Luke again. And Luke was just a complete, like, he wasn't anything like Luke Skywalker was. He didn't really look like him. And he didn't really sound like him. You could tell something yeah. was off, and he behaved in ways that were just bizarre and strange. And we had this big discussion on... Well, you're, you're you're clapping and you're crying and you're shitting and coming everywhere. But what what mm. exactly? What did you fall in love with, exactly? Because clearly there is a difference between what I love about the original trilogy and what you loved about the original trilogy. And I'm starting to think that you just fell in love with iconography and sound effects. Mm -hmm. You didn't fall in love with well, and the it story is a and the characters. Deliberate trick. JJ talks about how this was the plan with TFA to transpose everything you felt in the originals into this new stuff. It's just like and it worked temporarily. It always works temporarily. It's never permanent because yeah. it's never like authentic and honest and the source is not the new thing. It's the old thing. Um but they're still trying it. And, and at this point I, I don't even know that they know they can do anything else. Um, Andor is just, it's, it's described by everybody as just a strange anomaly. It, 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 like, how did it even get made at this point? Who knows? Gotten to the point where, like, these stories aren't connecting with you? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Enjoy the Star Wars you like, and then if you don't want to see more, you don't have to see more, you know? Yeah, I'm perfectly like, fine. Enjoy what you like, and you don't have to see more. 
I don't even know. Like, what is, it acceptable, so is it acceptable to continue watching and criticize it publicly? I hope so. Am I allowed? Well, it should be. I have his permission? I hope it's legal. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not sure. He's dead. It's so funny because it just goes the other way again. It's because then it's like, oh, I didn't watch it because I don't really enjoy Star Wars. And it was like, wait, well, you didn't even watch it. How do you know you're not going to like it? It's like, okay, so what am I supposed to do then now? Like, should yeah. I watch it or not? What do you want from me? Fine with that. But, like, I'm at the same point of, like, yeah. if, you, if you like Game of Thrones and you just yeah. want to watch Game of Thrones, you don't have to watch House of the Dragon. Oh, God, what a fantastic example. I you was, can watch whatever you'd like to. Like, when I it, yeah. had seen uh, The Long Night, and then episode four, and then The Bells, and it was like, Ugh. if someone had said, so at this point, you're sure episode six is going to be bad, right? I'd be like, yeah. And it's like, so don't watch it then. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking I'm going to see the end of this story. Like, you can't. Yes. No way. And then it'd be like, how's the dragon? Why watch that? Now you expect it to be bad. It's like, you know what? I do. And then I watched it. I was like, oh, it's good. <laughs> it's like, yep. you know, oh, God, I was wrong. Exactly. This yep. is what I mean. Like, this whole going into, you go into hate it. It's like, well, what if it's good, though? Yeah. Isn't that crazy if that happens? I guess I, I guess we'll find out when I watch it. You yeah. know, if you don't like House of the Dragon, just yeah. watch the ones you like. like my, but that doesn't mean that people I've watch them, Why is it always presented I've as like a them, revelation? Though. You know what? You can just choose to watch the things that you want to watch. Hmm. I've, you know, this is a totally unfamiliar concept to anybody uh, in the world. So, you know, I'm sure many people who watch this video will go, Oh, shit, I never thought about it that way. And then give it some... This is pointless. This is mm -hmm. a pointless thing to say. It's not going to convince anybody. Why even bother? <laughs> For some reason, honestly, he's made it clear they don't expose themselves very often to alternative opinions. So many people yeah. rattle off this perspective, it makes me think they've never heard responses to it. And they actually, yeah, that they genuinely are stunned by somebody saying, well, no, I mean, I can watch something that I don't like and still extract something from it. Whether it is just pure, like, schadenfreude of just laughing at a terrible thing, yep. or, yeah. you know, learning, learning things about storytelling, which is an important mm -hmm. one. And also just anyway. making it clear to the people who made it, uh, you're not going to get away with this. No, Not everyone will just yeah. lick it all up and go, wow, that was juicy. I love that. <laughs> and, and the reality oh, is, like, these guys, in terms of, because, I mean, this is kind of, you know, like, I presume these guys are Star Wars YouTubers, like, the health of your ability to keep doing this is yeah. uh, reliant on Star Wars being healthy. Star Wars is not healthy right now. It's yeah. in a very bad place. You're not going to solve that problem by telling the people who don't like it to stop watching it, and alternatively, that the that it's 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 not helpful or productive or worthwhile mm. to be critical uh, in a public way. Both these things are just detrimental to the health of your of the series that you essentially are relying on in, to some extent for the content that well, you do. Yeah. There, like, I'm not even kidding. I, I think that's what I find fascinating about the conversation around this show is it, it really, it feels like a case of, you guys need to understand, like, Star Wars can't continue like this forever. Uh, it will eventually, you can't just infinitely lose money on projects yeah. <laughs> forever. Uh, the only like reason it's lasted this long is because of uh, the juice Kathleen Kennedy has. Like, a lot of people fear her. She's got a lot of power because she had such a great reputation before. It's the only reason it's continuing this way. Nobody's firing her. Nobody has the balls to fire her. Yeah. And she's she the executive continue... producer of Signs. Oh. Yeah, she, that's probably yeah. the clout she's throwing around up there. She's like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the EP of Signs, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You'll listen to me. <laughs> no, it's also like the point has been made look at their set all that stuff but still these guys are considered nerds and they they have trouble with the concept of there's a lot of people out there me included i'm gonna watch this shit anyway i've always watched it i've always watched everything most of everything that that's just something i've always done What's, um, even when i knew uh, like i knew a tour was going to be a shitty movie but i fucking went and watched it anyway I, I watched all I even of heard it. Willow, for yeah. fuck's sake. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm oh, watching yeah, this stuff that anyway. That sounds rough. Yeah. You know, I didn't. Now, uh, with, with Drinker told me to watch the first four, I was like, it's just the first four, right? I ain't watched any more than that, right? And he was like, yeah, just the first four. I was like, thank you. It doesn't <laughs> get better, by the way. <laughs> what? what? Now, what, I, Willow? Yeah. No, yeah, it doesn't get better. Just, just no. watch the movie. It's charming. Um, but it's the, right. um, when it comes to... Yeah, it's, a, it's charming. Um, it's all right. it's yeah, yeah, it's charming. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it comes to how do these people here, these Star Wars people, um, think? Like how how do how do they think we're supposed to find new things to like? We have to we have to watch stuff. Mm -hmm. We have we have to watch things to to see if we how, like. How I mean, would, would you am, am I, like Andor? 
You guys love Dandor. That's the love thing. You, the whole yeah, argument right. he's making is, is uh, premised on the premise on the fact that we will dislike it no matter what. But that's not true. It's provably not true. So, with every episode with a potentially new director, a new d approach could be a good one. Should we just stop mm -hmm. because it's likely it won't be? And at that point, it just sounds like mm -hmm. an admission of how shit it is from them. It's like uh, we did the episode on a haunting in Venice, and yeah. like I, I understand that the first two were not yeah you know, all that good. But we really, really liked a haunting in Venice. I really, really liked it. And On retrospect, would, I actually quite known... liked the Nile, one, a death on the Nile, better than okay. I, I remembered. Oh, nice. Yeah, but so you changed your mind when you saw something. That that's uh, insane, kind of thing. Wow, well, <laughs> that's not a thing. Oh, that happens. You. What What Take was the back. one with Daisy Ridley? That uh, was Murder uh, on the Orient Express. Yeah, that was. I, I, I like that one. I, I like the. I want to see the original. Because uh, I've seen comparisons. The original's good. It look pretty cool, but I didn't like the new version. Uh, really yeah, liked Haunting in Venice. Fine. Did you see that, Gary? No, I haven't, but I will now. You should. On honestly, really yeah, good. I would guess I that recommend. would be the one out of the three you'd like the most. Okay. I could be wrong, though. I, I really know. liked we'll it. We'll see. I'll watch it with the missus. We. House of Dragon need to be ridiculed yeah. or told how wrong they are. Yeah, but know? there's this... Wait, wait, wait. Let's roll it back here. I don't wait, know. Wait, what? What was happening there? Yeah. Watch the ones you like. like my... But that doesn't mean the people watching House of Dragon need to be ridiculed yeah. or told how wrong they are. Yeah, okay, but... so your friend there just called us vile <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for disliking. Uh, I'm not going to say, he, did, he didn't use any of his specificity, but his reference was someone getting a fact wrong, which is, that doesn't make you vile. That would make you mistaken, if true. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that they weren't actually wrong, because the Acolyte is so it fucked up. They probably were correct. They probably were correct, yeah. So, you know, don't be... It, they always try and take that sort of uh, accolade in the, so to speak, not real war. They're like, you you guys always make fun of us for liking things. Like, you, you guys make fun of the people for disliking it all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you know. there's this, I don't know, I'm trying to choose my words correctly. There's this. Go no filter, bro. Do it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Tell us it. how you feel. Show us, show us, show us some passion. Just do it. No Ironically, I, I think the word he was looking for instead of correctly was carefully, but... Yes, you know. yes. <laughs> I guess you do want to choose your words correctly, I guess. From your own point of view, yeah? Your own standard correct choice <laughs> from, from, a, from a certain point oh, of from view. From a certain point of view. This um, kind of aggressive ownership a certain type of fan will have over Star Wars. and they'll... If you just translate it until we care about the IP, sure. I yeah. care, yeah, I, I care about good storytelling... Mm -hmm. And I believe in the potential well, um, that this cultural juggernaut and, potentially could have. And, uh, and you know, there is, there is an element of aggressive ownership of trying to convince people who don't like it to stop watching because it bums you out. Mm -hmm. There is a level of aggressive if, ownership in so, trying so that to exclude people in that way. Yeah, that aggress aggressive ownership is totally okay when you bought the franchise for $4 billion because uh, aggressive ownership is why it's worth $4 billion. Yeah, you're, if you're absolutely right. Goes the down mind the made it this fucking valuable. It's, it's undeniable. So, And the, you yeah. know, the fans are also Sorry the people that caring. got hyper-inspired by these stories. And, you know, you shouldn't have recognized better than anybody as, uh, as fans of, of nerd stuff, IPs, whatever have you, that when you've got something that really inspires you to that degree, then someone starts peeing on it, uh, it don't feel good. It's like, wait a minute. Mm. That actually feels bad. Stop doing some, that. Some, some people are yeah. into that, though. Yeah, a little bit. You, know, you, got, you got a few of them. Yeah. yeah. They'll come up and they'll tell you, hey, you having a good time? Well, you shouldn't. And here's why. And then, you could uh, no one say yeah. that. Oh, uh, yeah. The boring quit you're having not, you're fun. You're not the inverse. Quid, you're not having fun, fun Lamar. He's not Dude, the inverse. Didn't, didn't they just do a first. thing of telling us, hey, you're not having fun. Stop not having fun. You should have fun. Uh, you need to be have you. Uh, have fun. I think quit having fun is definitely in the same category as that, yet you live in society curious. It's yeah. one of those ones, isn't it? Or, what's that one where the guy tells the person to shut up and let people like things. It's another one. What's that one? You know that one? Well, the, like the, the... the memes that with one word change flips the person who posted its mind. They're like, wait a minute, what? It never happens in reverse. That's yeah. crazy. What? Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, it's... Look, right. How do you unironically tell us to start having fun when we're explaining how it's not a fun thing and then be like, stop telling us yeah, to stop having fun? Yeah, exactly. It's the opposite of that. You're the mad guy. We're all sitting here having fun laughing at the Acolyte and you're saying quit having fun because quit we're laughing fun. at it.
Yeah, I'm That's willing right. to fully. I don't care yeah. that you you go ahead and you enjoy it, but it's surprising to me that you made clear at the beginning your enjoyment is dependent on not engaging in conversations about it. That is interesting. That's report curious. on the quality of the uh, well, material uh, here. I'm supposed to be enjoying. It is a bit strange because there there have got to be everybody's got like something that they particularly like as a piece of media, whether it's a game or a TV show not or a film. That uh, it's probably hmm. not matched in terms of general feelings about it, you know. <laughs> but like, like Elden Ring, the... <laughs> <laughs> like well, Elden that's Ring, an mm -hmm. example of the inverse, I suppose. But how do you maintain that perspective, even when a bunch of other people are telling you that you're wrong? It's like, well, I mean, how much confidence do you have in your own arguments and your own rationale for it, good or bad? Mm. So you um, fight people I online until you lose, and when you I, lose, I think... your opinion changes. Aha! I think that's yeah, uh, that's, that's the way oh I'm being described. It's like your lack of the acolyte is flimsy, um, because seemingly just watching some people talk about why they think it sucks makes it collapse. Because if they were all just like totally wrong, like it wouldn't matter. Surely it wouldn't make that much of a difference to you, right? Maybe you'd be bummed out that a lot of other people don't like it when you think it's so awesome, but like you certainly wouldn't be feeling bummed out about it actually being of low quality. That's the kind of thing that happens when the arguments are compelling. And then your well, opinion what, changes. All of us talking about the Lord of the Rings extensively over decades has definitely made it lower in our est estimation, right? Everyone oh, here, I yeah. sure. Oh, hate yeah, it. totally. I yeah. hate Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Boo. Whenever I, when I, I just find the show, I like Hobbits. <sighs> no, I Tom Bombadil. <laughs> Whenever I find a new show that I like, I can't shut up about it to people, mm. you know? Yeah, Crazy. I think that's a good thing. I want to keep telling people. Meanwhile, like when I watched Black Sails, I was like, I want to keep telling people to watch Black Sails. When I watched Arcane, I was like, I want to keep telling people to watch Arcane. That's a good is. thing. Well, and if it's like, I can't enjoy Rings of Power unless I, d I block myself from online discussions, like, oh. Interesting. <laughs> there might be a reason for that. Uh... Hmm. And they give all these reasons, and if I don't agree with those reasons, they go, oh, shill, you know, like... Aww. Well, you are sitting in a Star Wars. <laughs> you, you are sitting in a Star Wars theme studio. I'm sorry. He I mean, said I, I like all that. of it. I like all of yes. it. Yes. I like all Star Wars. Like it's not impossible financial interest to authentically in enjoy all of it, but it does feel a little like on the side of. If someone said I despise every last piece of art that ever existed, you might be like, "Ooh, <laughs> you're in a bit of trouble yourself." But. Okay, I would just I would just need to see these arguments. He said he doesn't even have these discussions, right? He said he avoids them. Mm, I have um. I know. So someone in Discord said this. They said that these guys rated both Arcane and Fallout a ten out of ten. Oh. So hmm. if that's true, I'm not at all surprised. Oh, see, now the fun part not. about that is just it just it's how much it devalues the praise of Arcane. Oh yeah, From like a ten mean a ten is meaningless. It doesn't Aww. mean anything. Their their review. <laughs> oh, I, I is, just mean is I just mean it's, this is this is the nature of how like toxic positivity I guess would manifest when you say that one thing is a ten that I have a very favorable opinion of, and then another thing is of equivalent quality when I think it is like basically the opposite of that. It just like devalues whatever the nature of your well, praise probably was for Arcane. Let me guess the Arc the uh, sorry the acolyte they probably give like a nine. Yeah, like they're kind of like yeah. the IGN, yeah. right? Where everything skews like a seven or above. It's nothing ever scores like a, even a five out no, of ten. It's not perfect. It's like I'm. It, another. That's how they'll phrase it. Well, the show isn't perfect, as if that's like hedging their you know, their very the reasonable story. opinions. And they'll, and they'll say uh, the reason it's not a perfect ten is because I knew who uh, Smiler Ren was before the reveal. It would have been perfect ten if they'd hidden that better. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. It's so aggressive and so, and I'll, I'll well, just use I'll use the word the, arrogant to be <gasps> like, no, no, no. My opinion is so right; it is now jumped into the realm of objective. Which you dude, already so said that me. about Many your response of... to people earlier. Remember when he said people are objectively wrong? Do mm. we need to have the like? Do we need to sit him down in in the little just... chair like a ten year old and be like, <laughs> yes, opinions can be objective. He, we need to fucking... rid your mind of this notion they can't be. He already laid out the groundwork. He said there's people talking about the show, and then they say the show is bad because it breaks continuity, and then they'll cite examples, and they will be objectively wrong. And then he's like, it's so crazy out there. People are saying they're objectively <laughs> right. It's like, y like, y like you, <laughs> like what? what? <laughs> I mean, it sums it up. As a you start. know best. They all do it. They all do it. Every single one. Yeah.
<sighs> but they don't think <laughs> you they know? do it, but they yeah. do. It's, it's, so, it's always so great. They just pretend like they sit in their little bubbles like, I'm not taking part of this, but let me shit on them real quickly. I'm above all this. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. distance myself. I'm this myself. The final oh, world. Objective word. nerds over yeah. there, those objective voids. Fuck those guys. Yeah. And the other opinion objective is dismissed voids. as, well, you're <laughs> just a shill or whatever, and it, yeah. your opinion isn't valid Which, at all. I mean, and, you know, I keep saying it. I don't know how much you agree or anybody else agrees, but like, we're very politically charged right now, you know, especially in the United States of America. Are we? <laughs> just, I'm not. I'm just, not. The conversation about the acolyte does not need to veer into the election, but oh, no. okay, fine. No, get no, going. No, like, yeah. Either way, we're going to have like, between Trump just, and the acolyte. <laughs> needs yeah. to I, look, I, I threw up my hands in the air ages ago. There's going to be a retard of the White House for four years. I'm here to make fun of the acolyte. I, I don't <laughs> fucking care. Woo. Jeez. We're all so political. It's like no, speak speak for yourself. Because we have an election coming up, and do we? What's that going to do with the acolyte? <laughs> <laughs> you say it, everybody's like, mad. Everybody's mad. It's the, it's everybody's the Bongo mad. card Trump mentioned. We're so close to Is being it, able to cross. Though he's way. right. It, it's, I was it's waiting a, for that. Then debate. It's a politically charged <laughs> time. This is why in the forums <laughs> regarding stuff like Teletubbies, even they are incensed. They're having and then debates. He's like watching the acolyte, he says, <laughs> "You know, you know, this reminds me of the upcoming British like parliamentary election." <laughs> please, please don't <laughs> remind me of the upcoming British parliamentary. election. Election. It, it's what all do these, you mean? These, these hateful, arrogant bigots who don't like the acolyte are spreading the MAGA agenda, and it's a sad sign of the Damn. state we live in today. Rue. I want to hear Trump like, and Biden debate the acolyte. Yeah, I do too. Really oh my God, God. It's about it's time. Time. <laughs> acolyte, pretty bad. Like, p politics like and the way that you talk about things go from like, we have a disagreement to if you think differently. You're an immoral thug, you know. You called you people vile. What? You did <laughs> call us vile. Also, we get we get called Nazis because we didn't like a Star Wars movie. Yeah. So, yep. I don't know, man. Often, I a day. lot of this has fallen it's, on deaf ears for me. So it's so yeah. unbelievable the amount of people we've covered who have no idea the shit they say, but they'll absolutely mm -hmm. feel it when it's said to them. You know, like ah, oh, yeah. it really it, it seriously is tone of voice. It's uh, it, it really is like tone of voice can completely overshadow the actual words coming out of someone's mouth. It's as long crazy. as I say it nicely, I could say any say nasty, nice way, disgusting say thing I want. Exactly. Meanwhile, somebody can actually say something that's incredibly tame, but they throw in a swear word like fuck or shit, and it's game over for them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's it really is one of those things you got to pay attention to. It really is. No, like both sides of the spectrum do this. It's we're, the system's designed to keep us fighting so that we don't oh, unify. My nice, oh my nice god, god save. Oh. Nice save. <laughs> yeah. Go, okay. Yeah. Well, We're all just god. waiting for how this relates to how the acolyte this is shit. Reminds me of, <laughs> look, all right, I learned this from the Hunger Games. Is... It's all about making all of us fight so that we don't see the real problems. Oh my god. god I'm so bored. I'm I know how it works. Things, you know? <laughs> That's just how it works. But right now we have the combination of a Oh, by the way, just uh, it's, oh, all, yeah. it's, all, it's, it's just all how it works. You could just choose not to do that. At any point, you could just make the decision. To At any point in time, you can choose to conduct yeah. your life in the way that you believe is like ethical. No, <laughs> is he breaking? Even if you <laughs> like, he's recognized it, but it's like you could just choose not to do it. At any point, you could just be like, you know what? I'm not going to be a party to that system and that culture. I'm not going to be that way. <laughs> Instead of throwing your hands yeah, up you and saying, "Well, that's just how it goes," I guess. <laughs> Look around. It's like it's like that that riveting, itchy and scratchy episode that was directed by Quentin Tarantino. Okay, <laughs> where Quentin Tarantino was talking about how you know violence is in our society. It's like in breakfast cereals, man. And then itchy and scratchy just lopped his head off and had a dance. <laughs> <laughs> they decided they were mavericks. They blazed their own. Exactly. Path. I heard that, that um that because of that Tarantino didn't want to do like a cameo on The Simpsons. I don't know if that's true though. I hope but that's not. funny it's to me. Funny, yeah. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> AI getting very, I, very, I very not true. powerful, and that is including with all technology, including he brought in AI, AI. By the AI, way, AI. No, yeah. we we going everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. How next? does the acolyte affect Ukraine and Israel Palestine? <laughs> I need to know. Yeah, how about we make some NFTs about this? Yes. <laughs> oh, how many God. Russians is Smilo Ren gonna stab yeah. in the jungle? The way that engagement know, is farmed, the way that. Like your aggression and the the things that rile you up, bro. It's not that deep. I love the how show he is says just these bad. things like that.
profound right, revelations right. when there these incredibly these really boring trite observations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, and why are we even talking about this? I thought we were talking about uh, uh, I was about to say Ahsoka. I thought we were talking about the acolyte. <laughs> Well, Fringy, you're gonna feel like a really big, dumb, stupid head when he loops this all back yeah, around, make, and it all makes make sense. sense. Yeah. He's bringing it home, guys. Come on. I, I sure hope it all makes a few sense more talking again. points. <laughs> He's gotta bring in just COVID at some point, <laughs> and he just stops. Well, this is how Germany right. lost World War II. <laughs> True. <laughs> have they have they like used a uh, like a Lego box and like painted it blue and done like uh, all of the marks and stuff? I kind of like it's... that. I'm just looking at the. The thing that they've got their microphones on, like I kind of yeah, like. Yeah, it's the like way um, an upside that. down, like some sort of a not a not like a carton or a pallet kind of thing, maybe. It's uh, effort. Like a fruit. I like it. Cool. I, like yeah, it. I do. I like yeah, the, it. Yeah, they got the they got the stands there. Yeah, it would make it decidedly less cool if this was set, something like yeah. Disney sent them <laughs> as part of the podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. If that happened, then yeah, then I wouldn't care as much. It looks custom. I don't know. It. I don't hate the they studio. It. It's like just it. the hosts aren't it's working just for me. Yeah, yeah, it's the hosts. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, <laughs> there's just like a perfect storm, especially around the acolyte that perplexes me. It, it ain't a perfect. No, we. Where were you for Boba perfect Fett? Where were you for Obi Wan Kenobi? Where were you this for Mando season storm. three, the Jack Black episode? Yeah. Come on, where were you? <laughs> the storm has passed, and we're just this like is the man. storm's fought. Oh, how refreshing <laughs> this light rain is for that hurricane that has since passed. <laughs> but not in that. Well, yeah, thing. this is if like the aftershock, and it shakes, and you're like, "Oh shit!" I just noticed that. Meanwhile, all the buildings around you have already collapsed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's peaceful yeah, now, and you're like, "Oh, you know, it's you know, it's you know, everything's destroyed, and everything's in ruins, and we hate everything, and it's it's all terrible now." But you know, it's it's not loud. It doesn't like, you know, the story beats and stuff. I'm perfectly fine with that. But Are there you? seems to be okay. like a real. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is that you don't you don't like recognize when people are that. That's a problem. You'll say like, well, no, I'm fine with people who are like this. It's just interesting that those people don't exist. You know, when, when you actually start to... He doesn't like the like, vile it's people, certainly okay? Interesting. Just the well, vile it's just ones. The thing that you're focused on is certainly not that, um, because you probably don't think that there are that many people who are falling under that category. They just don't like it for the reasons you've deemed as legitimate. Uh, agenda of animosity. This time, agenda, agenda of, of animosity, animosity is an agenda of a bad animosity. name. Yeah, agenda of animosity. <laughs> yeah, that I have not felt in any. That I have not felt in any other point in Star Wars. Um, I'll oh, give him. Really? I'll really? give him that. Um, uh... people are angrier than ever with Disney for how yes. they treated Star Wars. But where have you been in terms of yeah. noticing? Yeah. The, every step oh, along the dead. way. He's not been watching. He's not been paying attention uh, to the conversation. Yeah, well, stick your head back in the sand that. then, I guess. He has. He's lying. Yeah. He Were you around for The Last Jedi? <laughs> that was worse than that. That was a little while ago, from. yeah. Yeah. It's disappointing. Sure. Because, man, when I was a kid, and I would just, I would leave the theater, watch an epi you know, episode four years two, ago? Attack of the Clones, <laughs> I'm going to go online and talk about it. Yeah, episode two was really shit, though. But, you know, <laughs> it is quite a terrible film. Yeah, it's, it's not the worst of the three, though. Well, and let's just... And it was just all these... It, like, plenty yeah. of people were shit all over back then as well. It's, you know, it's primarily really older fans just shitting on it. Like, this is the... That's fine. That is okay. They can do that. Yeah. They're okay. It's very much allowed. Maybe they should have made better movies. Yeah. Uh, what? How dare you? You took that back. Saying, you know? Worst movie ever. George Lucas doesn't understand Star Wars. No, I like, mean, I... there's, you know. Well, I mean, the guys. Well, the, the guys thing is, got some opinions. It feels like there are certain, like everyone right now, even people who liked uh, the new, some of the new episodes of Doctor Who, have been agreeing that RTD no longer understands what makes Doctor Who work. Like, yeah, yeah. And you know they do that thing every time. This this happens with James Cameron, happens with Ridley Scott. It's like, how could you say that about the people who made the thing originally? It's like, I don't know, I just did. How about it's that? not controversial in but like any other art form. Everybody kind of assumes that bands will st like stop doing their best material when they yeah. hit their thirties, and writers tend to stop doing their best material when they hit their fifties. Like every other art form hits this peak point where most people who've created a thing lose the thing that made them great to begin with. Either they get too comfortable or they, they try and, and go off in a brand new direction that doesn't work, or they don't have the inspiration anymore. Like it's all these many, many different theories and inspirations as to why that is the case. But it's not controversial to say that that normally does happen. I don't see why film is any different. 
I do. It's not. <laughs> you know, like the arrogance of that statement a little way. Like, I understand not liking something. We've gone over this before. There are fans that yeah. know uh, an IP yeah. better than the creators sometimes. It exists. You uh, should recognize it's possible. That, I'd see that. I'd say that's basically every IP. There are some autistic neckbeard be, yeah. in a basement who edits the wiki and maintains every element of lore and canon and fact and fiction, and he breathes that shit far more than the author does. Yeah, especially if it's There's an author a lot that's of made many worlds, right? And then the fan is just a huge fan of that one world. The, the author's gonna be like, that's that's great, and you probably do know better than I do at this point, and I'm glad for yeah. that. Like, why couldn't you just say that? So it'll be like, you arrogant fuck, I created this world, you can... Vile. Vile. man out of my room. Something, but not liking something to that point, I, I hated that. That was the worst part, and I always remember being like... I, and I, I truly don't feel like the sequels got to that point. I mean, really? You Why? don't feel it. <laughs> Do you, you remember the sequels agree. was so. Rise of Skywalker was so bad, it made Patrick Williams have a meltdown on Twitter. Where he was, he was like, fuck <laughs> yeah. you, JJ. No, I mean, you it was so life. bad that even the, actors, the, even the actors weren't even pretending that they were uh, excited about participating in Star Wars anymore. They were just mm. saying, like. I mean, what was it that uh, Oscar Isaac said? Like, if he wanted another house, he'd do another I Star Wars movie? I distinctly Why remember think... Rise of Skywalker was a joke to everyone. Um, everyone. Meanwhile, meanwhile there was a lot of them. hype around Revenge of the Sith. Like, yeah. I don't want anybody to send it otherwise. There was a lot of hype around Revenge of the Even Sith. Even the people who didn't like Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones were like, all right, well, this is the one with Vader, you know, so all right, I'll give this a shot. You know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And I think, if I remember correctly, that? the trailer was pretty bitching. That I famous... think they're... I mean, just the fact that Disney has basically abandoned the sequel trilogy as like an yeah. era is like, man, we're we're we've, we're making the High Republic. What do you mean? We're getting the rainbow. We've already right. It, it tr <laughs> it's very true. I stand corrected. <laughs> that, um, you fool. Uh, but we've 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 squeezed all the juice that we can out of the prequels. I feel maybe if if Acolytes next or uh, Ahsoka's next season might tap into it a bit, but I feel like that has already been. Like, like, juiced for all it's worth, and they're moving on from one thing to the next. It's the meme with the Reaper going from door to yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. Right. Dude, you that know, guy is tired. Like, He's got a billion doors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too many doors. He, He's like, boy, I mean, I love killing, but jeez. Love the idea he opens up the door break. and it's Star Wars, and he's like, I did this one already. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's already on the floor covered in blood. It's like, yeah, you gotta hit it again. I mean, it's certainly louder now just because there's more people online, mm -hmm. but the... No, louder now because more people feel the same way. I mean, that's another thing I'd like to see him address, as for people who uh, make content, breaking it down. They give a voice to a lot of other people who feel it's not getting addressed publicly enough. The, uh, the absolute yeah. destruction of a legacy. How does he feel about that? I don't know. The vitriol of the prequel hate vitriol back in the early vitriol. 2000s was... Like scary, and maybe that was more scary. Scary, scary. Dude, maybe things were scarier when you were younger. Maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. the internet isn't for you. It was maybe. scary. Well, that's scary. Shit about okay. something. I don't know, man. I just like the it's idea spooky. that he comes on to talk to you about how scary it was at a forum where someone said Attack of the Clones was cringe, and then you just come away from a Mobile Warfare Two lobby like, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> There's like 17 people who slept with my mother last night. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> She's getting around. I don't know. She is a busy I got lady. Old racial slurs I didn't even know existed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how I learned about races by first discovering the slur and then having too. to track that into a to like. Oh, there is a people. Is that, okay, all right. Just because of my age, but like it feels scarier this time than it had even in the Scarier. sequel era. Yeah. I, mean, I just think anyone pussy. who says that is just advertising how infirm they are as a person and I don't want to take them seriously. Like how how are you scared by online discourse it's like that? Scary. Embrace People it. People don't like Star uh, Wars and it's scary. Talk it through. Maybe convince all of us we were actually being way too harsh. Or maybe you'll find some insight and you'll decide, you know what, yes, Star Wars is going in a horrible direction and we shouldn't encourage it. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, for me. I don't sure. know. I'm not insane. really sure why, but I, mean, I am sure why, just because like you're getting all of these buzzwords and all of these... Uh... Yeah, because you guys never use buzzwords. No, <laughs> no evil, evil people, oh, racist, buzzwords. fascist, troglodytic, homophobic, <laughs> transphobic, etc., etc. All those people are mean to me. Fuck yeah. you. Like, ways of speaking that you generally reserve for more objective 
uh, discussions. Mm-hmm. Then you do. That's so- what you said. There's no such you thing. You don't know what it is. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. You it's just all opinions. There's no. There's no such thing as objective opinions. Like an opinion can't be based on some matter of fact that exists independent of minds. It's madness. Something like art, you yeah. know, and it's just. It's real strange. Sure. I'm just really uncomfortable right now as a fan. <laughs> well, Maybe, okay. You shouldn't well, be. Well, no, you right. really shouldn't. You should be more than comfortable being like, no, the Acolyte's bitching, and here's why. Because I break things down yeah. for a living. I know why. And other people are getting these things wrong. Here's why. We covered John Campier. He thought he knew why people were wrong. He was wrong. And that's huh? okay. <laughs> <laughs> he had the, he had the confi- confidence to go to Campier's yes. class or whatever and break that down completely wrong and then contradict himself but man he had the confidence to do it god bless him so why, why he would doesn't you even un- have a star wars themed studio why would you even no. be uncomfortable if you don't engage with all that stuff anyway at least according well, to he, your own words he dipped his toe and it scared him he's gonna go back to not doing it ever again probably okay well I'm scared. Fine. I'm scared. then tell us why everything is so amazing and great and why can't uh, they just like and why are you even yeah. online putting your ideas out there into the world then because he mm-hmm. thought this was a nice, happy flower place with p- pixies and bunnies, and you ruined it, <laughs> Theo, with your Elden Ring takes. Wow. You made it scary. Oh, God, Theo, bad, I guess. Theo, the destroyer of everything. Yes. I mean, you might I'm be sorry worse I than like Joel. hating so much. Listen, all of them were warm-ups. Now we're on to the main event. Uh, we, got some, we got some Red Letter Media opinions to check out. Oh, oh God. Right. Oh, have they been doing the thing again? I, yes, they I, have. Fair warning, Evans. some of these will shock you. And I want to go into this saying, everyone's always like, oh, she disagreed with them again. It's like, yes, I also really like yes. their channel, okay? It's all right. Yeah. It'll be fine. I want to explore yep. some of the things they talk about, because I, uh, I, have, I have opinions. It's been confirmed in the credits that it is Coyote Bundy. Uh-huh. Uh, hundred, he's probably can live for hundreds of years. He's yeah. much older in The Phantom Menace, and then he gets he's, killed. He's like a Spock. He get, yeah, yeah. He gets killed in Revenge of the Sith and, uh, during the Order 66. Um, and so they're like, Coyote Mundi's like, the Sith have been extinct for a millennia, you know, in the, in the, the Phantom Menace. When, yeah. when Qui-Gon's like, I think it was a Sith Lord that attacked me mm-hmm. in the desert. Mm-hmm. And, oh, they've been extinct. Well, no, they haven't. Uh, they're talking about it in this room. They're not talking about a Sith Lord. They're talking about uh, for, some yeah. kind of uh, non-authorized force user. And, tr- and my turn out. This didn't uh, age well. Uh, all, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 sorry. They, it didn't age well, but you didn't even need him to explicitly no. label himself as a Sith in episode five. No. You don't even why are we that. at? Like, why are we, why are we trying to, like, carry all this, you know, for... Like, it's, it's just clearly, like, oh. Well, the stretching rich, the, and the jumps. Like, why, why, rich. why this? It's rich that Mike will get that tedious about Star Trek and yeah, then go, look at the Star Wars, Wars guys. Oh, it's oh, like, Gary, bro. We'll, <laughs> get we'll get there. Because, yeah, yeah uh, as as an avid, I imagine, Rags, you're the same, avid enjoyer of their, uh, their Trek breakdowns, even when I haven't seen the shows they're talking about. Uh, they yeah. went through all of but Picard season care. one and two and three, right? I believe. Yep. Uh, season one and two... Did they, they do did three? I thought they did three as well. Yeah. yeah. Did they do three? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, they liked it. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. Out to be yeah. a, not a Sith. I don't know, yeah, but yeah. but but then there's controversy over his birth year. And and Wikipedia, the Star Wars internet database, changed his birth year mm. in the canon to reflect mm. uh, the show. The show, and then then people are like, well, his birth year uh, was established in the books not the phantom menace and the books are not technically canon and i was like oh i mean there's people starving around the world <laughs> yes oh. there is and here and here you are Come talking on. about the acolyte so yeah <laughs> this, this is a really awkward place to be you should never as people who spend all their time ripping apart b movies from the 80s yeah who telling... made their channel ripping apart the prequels Let's telling people they are cringe and inconsistencies but caring yeah. about a wikipedia entry when you're talking about them talking about the wikipedia entry like what yeah, come on at? the amount of on, care that, if this was star trek they would be having a fit about it yeah. talk about how terrible the writing well, so is rags, if it was star trek if it was a thing they cared about they don't know why it's annoying people beyond a simple number change on a wikipedia site like they don't know the broader is what Gary was mentioning earlier, right? About how it reflects the race, 
And then, of course, the wider implications, why did his age change? Because they had to drag the guy who made that statement back in time to be a part of what we assume will be the cover-up, quote-unquote. Mm -hmm. they're, they're busting lore everywhere to be able to tell their little fan fiction. That's why everyone's annoyed, and it's something that if it was done to Star Trek, they would be making all kinds of points about this. Oh, Yep, they'd have their notes out, and they'd be talking about that one episode in season four of The Next Generation where this one character has a cameo and says this one line that establishes this thing, and they'd know it because they really care about Star Trek, and if it's a thing I care about, well, that's, that's fine, though, but Star Wars? And Who thing, cares about Star Wars? It's fine to not care about this, but to go as yeah. far as saying if you do care about it, you shouldn't because there are kids starving in Africa. You're like, oh, jeez, all right. What yeah. the fuck are we doing? Oh, come on, really? <laughs> are you going to do that? Sight yeah. error. God or damn, they were quick to get on that one. Oh, yep. Here, here Ooh, comes this. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yep. Look at that, boys. Someone get in there. We have to update it to Leslie Headland's shit lore that she just created and manipulated. Ah. Uh, then you scroll. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. I could cut this yeah, to this um. On. All the Minker, Mr. Plinkett's yep, uh, videos, yep, yep. all their Star mm -hmm. Trek videos, I can do the same fucking thing. This video, yeah. the one they're doing right now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's yes. crackheads in LA. Why are you on fucking YouTube? Why are you YouTube? talking about Star Wars? Yeah. Get out. They're going to the crackheads. Well, so, uh, what I, because I hadn't seen the video, and I saw someone say they made fun of Theory for caring about Star Wars lore and compared the nature of starving children in Africa. And I, I saw, I was like, no, they didn't. Uh, that they wouldn't, they'd know. And then I saw this, I was like, oh, fuck it, hell. Damn. Was I, born prior to 132 BBY. Huh? I don't understand. How was he born before 132 BBY? But here Man, they say that's awkward. BBY. It really is. Uh, I, don't know. I might have to make that video what do you, now. What this is so like, what is, yeah. What's their proposal of what should be done? What would you like? Well, theory you shouldn't do? care. You should move on. He should care he, about the starving people in Africa. <laughs> like, I don't know what exactly the fuck they're saying. And only the things that I think are important. I just don't. I don't. I just don't really care about starving people in Africa that much. It's just you know, it's like I'll, here I'll make donations and this and that. But it's just like, come on, you can stop, stop. Do you? How much do they care? What have they done? The, the problem they're, is they're using is, they're this, using this, him this for an, an analogy. Impossible... It's yeah. an impossible standard to enforce. Every single person will always have these individual things that they get more focused on than, like, big global problems that exist in, like, in, in parts of the world. The idea of just throwing this up, because, especially when it's something that they do. They talk about movies. So how can they do this? How can they... they, how can the, they the movies they the talk about, they're I'm higher not using, class. You know, what you want, but I'm not using starving Africans as, like, a yes. weapon to attack other nerds with. Like, well, that the, seems the weird. weirdest thing is the the arguably primary sort of series they create is looking to make fun of things people made ages ago for low yes. budget. Like the the whole idea is to be nitpicking things that people worked really hard on under a low budget with low talent. And now that's not me denigrating the show at all. Best of the worst is really fucking funny. But how can you yep. put yourself so far above a uh, theory caring about law being accurate? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense, and it's and I think a lot of people be like, it's just a joke. It's like, well, but like, how does this? Well, no, okay. it's, it's, well it's it isn't a just a joke because it... they think that uh, like Star Wars theory is basically wasting his time and that what he's doing is pointless and and stupid and selfish. So it's a joke, but yeah. you know, like, if the what joke is, is why do you to... care about this? Then the joke is technically a kind of argument for that position, which is just cheap and silly. Well, the joke is like, trying to Theory's say something. He's in a way better position now to actually donate money to help people in Africa because he cares about Star Wars law because he's made some cash doing it. So, you know, he could be doing both. Why? Because they just manipulated the system because of a shitty show where the showrunner has no idea what Star Wars is. And this is what, and then, you know, the counter argument to that, well, it's like, well, you don't love this franchise as much as we do. Um, don't laugh at us. You'd be mad about Star Trek if they fucked with. Ooh. Yeah. So this this joke yeah. is a very oh, weird okay. joke when All he's right. talking about the counter argument to the argument he just made. Yeah, I'm confused. What a now. strange joke that he would need to supply the counter argument. Be self aware enough to know that everyone would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why would you ever make this point?" They think about this a lot. 
they, they think about it a lot. And Kirk, and, and we were, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they were. They were very oh, mad okay. at every small well, change ever made to Star Trek's lore that fucked up things that came before, as they are welcome to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then, but yep. they just said, and we were. Are they just going to move on? Is that them, sw is it basically lampshading the whole thing here by being like, and we were, moving on. Well, no, that, that, that oh, makes well, you so massive hypocrites. Anybody who's unfamiliar with the lore of RLM's channel, they think it's much fairer to care more about Star Trek because it's more of an intellectual IP versus Star Wars, which is more of an action adventure, fun, we, we mess around. Wait, really? Can be flim yeah. As far as they're concerned, Star Wars has more flimsy rules, while Star Trek's rules need to be rock solid because a lot of the primary storytelling is based on it being rock solid. When you know how the counter arguments is, uh, to that. Fair, is it? How long does Star Trek need to be like floopy and shit for before that <laughs> starts to eclipse the idea that Star Trek should be uh, like rock solid in terms of its lore? How many bad Star Trek well, shows I think would it take before the standard flips? As someone who's seen a lot of Star Trek now, or at least enough to speak on this, uh, I think it's a, a sort of miscalculation. Uh, Star Trek very much pays attention to its rules constantly, and moving things out of place will have severe repercussions, but. Star Wars is no different than any other story like Star Trek, where if you move the right thing in the right way, you fuck up a shit ton. That's how it always yep, works. Exactly. Exactly. I'm you also can't... not sure, like, yeah. just because Star Trek obeys more rules, that that makes it above starving Africans. <laughs> yeah, right? It does. I mean, it's okay to exploit starving ac uh, Africans to make a joke, so <laughs> yeah. why not? As long as the joke's against the other nerds. Star Wars fans, We yeah. are, but... Uh, Those dumb nerds, you know. Yeah. The Nah. Don't you understand? Yeah, they yeah. hang out with Macaulay Culkin now, so they're cool. Yeah. I don't think oh. Cootie El Munde is quite up on the same pedestal that Captain Kirk is, but yes. Well, I was happy to see Kai Adi Mundi. So it's not the principle of it, it's just, is the character famous Important enough? enough which, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean... I, I'm guessing they couldn't get Yoda, so they just threw him in. I'm, no, I, I was convinced that they chose him specifically because of the line. We're going to see it in the next really? three episodes. There'll be a reason. Like, he's going to be a part of the cover up, or he'll have a line that will recontextualize his line in Phantom Menace. It, it could be as bad as, you know, if anything like this should ever occur again, I will have to claim that we knew nothing of this prior. You know, something like that. We need to be <laughs> very careful not to give this show too much credit. I mean, I've been guilty of that. In the I past. get it. I, I'll happily nope, yeah, concede yeah. <laughs> I, I overestimate it if it happens, but that's my assumption for now. Because I was just like, oh, that's that guy. Because you know what it, you know what it did? It wasn't like, here, here's, how, here's the scene. It's like they're all talking, and, and we have a special Jedi who's, uh, who's coming in today to, to discuss this situation with us. Who is it? Camera pans up, music swells, the door opens. <laughs> Jedi Master Kai Adi Mundi. You know, let's... So what he's talking about, so he, and I'm inclined to... Jangle. Well, what I'm being relatively honest, what he's saying is really annoying when characters who aren't super duper ba duper important but uh, in the story but are important to fans get crazy intros because it's like meta bleeding into the story. I can get yeah. behind him somewhat on that, but my whole that frustration, as is everyone's, is with how they're handling Kiari Mundi's role in this. Like, the yes. writing of it. Whether or not they give him a grand intro is really not relevant compared to his role in the story, I think. I mean, look what they did with, well, uh, Mon Mothma in Andor. Like, she's a very pretty minor character in the original trilogy. And then they've, you know, they've done so much with her in Andor. It's like, oh, you're taking this minor character and, like, really fleshing her out in a very interesting way. Like, oh, interesting. Now, all right, that's one way to do it. Very interesting. And look what they did to her in Ahsoka. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, that didn't happen. Oh, I'd rather I agree, uh, frankly. Uh, Theo, Theo, you know, there are starving Africans. <laughs> True. Right All right, across, sure across the that. ocean. I guess right? there are. I guess there are. Uh, so I, I don't Muller think makes they analysis be before hearing the sentence, let the man finish. I just defended him before I let him finish. I didn't even attack, so. Well, that's, that's weird, because that chat was like, but you had finished, and they still got it wrong about the... Th the that's that's I do find that well, I always find that fascinating. Every time that happens, it's it's worth recognizing that you're probably like showcasing a bias for whichever thread is being covered because like yeah. you just see less of that when it's well, some rando. It's my or somebody that we've covered a few times who at this point you're like, oh yeah, that guy's a clown. But like whenever it comes to the one that you like, then it will be like, let them finish. I just find it funny. 
Um, is, it would be my bet that that person didn't have any problem with us interrupting the prior three uh, people yes. we covered. That would be my uh, guess. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Um, yeah. It's like, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, where you're supposed to get, I, I got chills, chills on my spine. It chills. It chills. It's Coyote Mundi. I, I cried. I cried butterfly tears. No, no. Can we, can we just not like said, recognize about... the obvious issue, which is, is that we just don't like it when people don't adhere to the lore. We'd, li we'd like the people who make these things to have a bit of fucking respect for the fiction, if, if that's all right with you guys, if that's not too cringe, if enough Africans haven't starved yet, we would like to <laughs> show a little respect for this work of fiction. If that's uh, the, okay. the point he's talking about, like I said, is something that I do think we all agree with, but it's just not that relevant to the conversation that uh, characters that are but important outside of law. Angry. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, you yeah, don't... sure. It could have it been. He was just there, and he was just talking in the background, and I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of connects. It connects the... <laughs> the funny thing is, it obviously doesn't. It's the whole problem. It is it doesn't, he, he shouldn't yeah. be there. Well, yeah, because, like, <laughs> if you're talking about the idea of it could have been more of, like, a overt that he's being imbued with greater significance than he should because of the meta, none of that addresses that he shouldn't be there because he wasn't born yet. Yeah, it's totally irrelevant. The you know the prequels and this so just very subtly no one no one made a big deal about it. It's like okay, this before and some some sort of product that we released on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted this to happen with lightsabers, and I always thought it was the case. So you'll understand what's happening here in a moment. But this is just a section where, <laughs> where Mike is talking about his perspective on lightsabers, and uh, a certain okay. edit has been made by myself that I feel is pretty obvious. Because uh, any any old Joe Schmo could get their hands on a lightsaber and yeah. swing it around and fucking destroy tons of people. Well, yeah, with with how often they leave him just lying around and never pick him up. Like, yeah, a bunch of Joe Schmoes do just... Yeah. As though they're fucking serial prizes that they're not, they're not worth a yeah. shit ton of money. When, when you walk away from a bunch of dead Jedi in the middle of a forest, I mean, no scavenger is going to find all those lightsabers. And well, remember, what's her face... And... May didn't take uh, Trinity's lightsaber. It just left it on the ground. Yep. Yep. God knows that now. Just has the, it now. It's like, oh well, yeah. Nice. We we talked about this before, but the idea of like a li a lightsaber is one of the most sought after objects in all of the Star Wars galaxy. At least it should be, because like only the Jedi have them, which means that a Jedi had to fucking die to leave this, you know, ownerless. And we have it, and it's like contraband, probably. The, the Jedi are probably like, no, you can't have those, almost certainly. So people who have them, it's like a black market secret. Like, ooh, we have an actual genuine lightsaber. You know, and like, oh, that's a big deal. And it, to the point where it could be like a really cool plot point, you could have had it in this show where part of the mission is you have like, oh, we have rumors that someone is selling a lightsaber. It's like, well, we got to go track down this lightsaber, make sure that we get it back. And that's like a, a plot issue that maybe is a lead that takes them somewhere. The idea that we're trying to reclaim a lightsaber that used to belong to a fallen Jedi. Crazy. Of awesomeness. Wow. Yeah. And when Han Solo turned on Luke Skywalker's lightsaber on Hoth to cut open the belly of the Tauntaun, he was a little uh, awkward with it. Yeah. The lightsaber is just like pure energy. Yeah. And in order handle. for something to be so powerful and cut through anything, it has to have a counterbalance. Like a desert eagle. It has to be <laughs> true. Extremely weird and heavy and awkward to use. Like a normal person turning on a lightsaber. Heavy. I don't know about. I don't know about mm. heavy. So weird and awkward. Like I said, this sure. section is about him talking about his POV on lightsabers and why they should be a, almost a Jedi-only thing, that you require the Force to properly wield them. It's not a perspective mm -hmm. I've not heard before. Um, right. And it's a I way... Like, like, you know, people found it interesting as an item that Han turns on the lightsaber when he's not a Jedi. Like, that, that's like definitive proof that anyone can. Obviously, at this point, anyone can, for sure. But, like, he's kind of awkward with it, like he said, but it's like, well, that could be answered by the fact that he was well, fucking it's freezing. A, well, it's just got a button on it that you click, yeah. and then it, it's a piece of technology. Um, I would imagine that a lot of, the, a, a lot of the, the association with Jedi comes from the fact that the Jedi specifically trained to use these and are instructed by people who already know how to train these. So there's a very clear, like, lineage of trainers and trainees that the Jedi are almost exclusively. So you can't just like teach yourself. Yeah, for the record, I think 
for anything Jedi other than a tool. Make use of the Force to assist in like the dexterity and uh, I can anticipation that, yeah. I can of you know that. moves and stuff. Yeah, but as for being able to hold it, turn it on, wield it relatively normally, I feel like most people can do that. Yeah, to use it as a fairly like a very good utility, then yeah, I think most people would be able to. You know, in the same way that you would use a jackhammer or a power drill, you know, it takes some yeah. level of learning and understanding to, to master its use. The lightsaber would be the same way. It's so powerful. Let me finish. Yeah, okay, Shut you up. Can't, you can't. I'm letting you finish. I'm letting let you finish. And you turn it on. It's like, and it's like, oh, God. It's like trying to lift up Thor's hammer, right? Uh-huh. And it's, mm. oh, well, fuck. Oh, and baller. Unless yeah. you're a Jedi. Are you being sneaky? That's mastered the force, which is things that you move with your mind, that's when <laughs> you're able to wield it with perfect precision and accuracy and fight with it. Interesting. Hey, it's just a joke. Interesting. <laughs> like, I ain't making any point. Okay? Hey, I mean, it turn, turnabout's fair play, as has been stated by people before me. And that's what makes you special, or else any old asshole could pick up a lightsaber See. and slaughter anybody with it, and you wouldn't need I could pick up a lightsaber. No, you and just... couldn't. No, you couldn't. You are, you pick up a you pick up a light you pick up a lightsaber and you go attack a a, a, tr a troop of of trained Navy SEALs. Tell me how that goes. I really like that counter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like what are you gonna do against bullets? Yeah, we don't like, talk about bullets. Let me shoot your ass. Okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe the the, the block. That's the, that's the thing. If you can't block with the lightsaber, it's fucking useless. No, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as useless. But yeah. <laughs> Se severely diminished in its potential, I would say. Mm. Here's the thing, Still though. very um, useful, though. Well, I mean, it's incredible, the power of a weapon like a lightsaber. Laser blasts go at, like, like oh, you could physically see a laser blast. I fucking hate that show. Let's go with your eyes, so, yeah. you know. It's like, remember in Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> When the guy fired a phaser at, at Picard and Riker, in uh, in the episode with the space bugs, yeah, and they they go, <laughs> okay, and they jump that, onto the. <laughs> that's a shitty episode. That's <laughs> 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 the response. So that's a shitty episode. <laughs> so a blaster, a blaster's moving really, really quick, and you yeah, you they have do move to, quick. Like the preci the precision of lining up the width of your lightsaber. Yeah to the width of the blaster mm. bolt and angling it in such a way that you can specifically redirect it like you're hitting a like like you're hitting a uh, what what would even be the analogy you're using a stick to smack a I don't like a marble back at somebody else specifically like that takes insane amounts of coordination that yeah. I don't believe that I, and I'm happy to believe that is the I, force element of a jedi that helps them Sort of I can believe that too. Yeah. That is not something I don't. I just that is not something that a normal, unassisted human can do. It's just mm -hmm. unless they have like insane bionics. Like maybe I could buy that Grievous could do it. Maybe, but like you'd have to have like cybernetics and be special if you're not specifically using the Force for that. I, I believe. Yeah. Fire a machine gun at a Jedi. They ain't hitting that. You. You'd have to move faster than the speed of yeah, sound. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Well, Rich. that's when you use the force to rip the gun out of their hands, Mike. They got you covered. They got all the bases covered. I'm sorry. Like Lord Vader did with Han Solo. Yeah, yeah. Or you do, you do a Neo. I think it's kind of funny you called him Lord Vader. Lord, Lord Vader. Vader. Yeah. Lord, Va Lord Vader. Lord Vader. Lord Vader. Vader. And you can stop all the bullets in the air. I hated that one. I said that the Force Awakens. They did? Yeah. Kyle oh, Ren did Ollie grabbed the yeah. laser bolt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was okay. That yeah. was cool. <laughs> anyway, next. Yeah, oh, well. about the lesbian space. I've, I've just like uh, flushed oh, yeah. away so many opinions I have about those movies to cleanse myself. I don't even know how I feel about that anymore. I don't even know what no. my original opinion was. I, I don't even know, and it's kind of nice to not know. <laughs> I got to make room in my head for more Acolyte episodes. We had, to get, we had to get rid of... We had to get rid of Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is yesterday's news. Smilo Ren is on the menu for today. Exactly. Yes. Everyone was mad about the Lesbian Space Witch episode, but that was my favorite one. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me why. Do tell. No, do tell. Oh. <laughs> I love to... Because, I, I, like you said, there are... Star Wars has the worst parents in the world. Can I say this? 
You can't let your eight-year-old decide for herself that she wants to go off with the creepy monks. I'm sorry. And when you say the creepy monks, which side are you referring to here? <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't, just, just yeah, either of them. Yeah, well, because if anything, I'd be like, thank God the Jedi are here to get me out of this freakish lesbian cult. <laughs> Kinda. Like, what, because she was born with the cult? Not ironically, yes! She should yes. stay with the cult? Get is that, me out that of works? here! They are, uh, they do some weird shit. They prayed to the, the double moon of death. Who knows what they're up to? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, she said she wants to do that. She also probably wants to be a pirate on the sea. She's eight years old, she can't make those kind of decisions for herself yet. Well, they're forcing her to, to, to be a witch in the coven. You know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is oh, well, well all right. Moving on, I guess. Pretty, pretty good counter. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're yeah, I'm sure he liked the uh, the co-op a lot in uh, Picard season two. Oh, he didn't. Oh, which was the ah, which was a uh, uh, mm -hmm. Romulan warrior space nuns, basically. My favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gu guarding the secret of the uh, tentacles coming out of the space butthole. Mm. Uh, yeah, they good stuff. Get that at. Yeah, Star Trek's a little different now than it was, mm. you know. Yeah, not the same. It's yeah, the same. I feel like something was a uh, yeah something something is not quite the same. Mm. Parents in the world, sure, but so they they do. They well, first of all, they're forced children. They they were conceived in the same manner that yeah. Anakin was. Yeah. And, no, and yeah. to me, that's like yeah. No, after, no, they were yeah, not. I don't even. I don't no, even, they were not. That was not. No, how they was. were not. You say that so. You say that so confidently, Rich. Yeah. Tell me what you know, because <laughs> I I don't I don't fucking know anything about what's <laughs> happening anymore. But you say it so confidently that oh yeah, it's just like just like Anakin. There's, There's always been lesbian the space witch. Sorry, after you. Oh, I was gonna say he does say he, there's always been lesbian space witches in Star Wars, not space witches. He says lesbian. Rich mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. Good. I mean, maybe statistically, the inevitability that someone with the Force could be considered a witch and is a woman who likes other women. So, I, like maybe <laughs> okay. statistically speaking, maybe <laughs> individually, it was, it was sure. one, yeah. Now, it's a big galaxy. Yep. By sheer weight of numbers, you know. I sit corrected. It's a statistical anomaly that we are getting lesbian space force witches. Uh, we're gonna say something there, platoon. Oh no, I was interested. Like the one of the theories I have heard for why it doesn't trespass on the the prophecy with Anakin is precisely that they were not conceived in the same way. That's sort of one of the the preemptive coping strategies that's been made. But it's it's also yep. like, mm -hmm. at least semi defensible, right? Like you we don't we know where Anakin came though? from, and the the argument has been well, he was conceived by the midi chlorians themselves without any outside influence was one of the theories. Whereas we know with the twins that that was the manifestations of lesbian sex drive. So like they they are very different things. Yeah, which is weird considering that they said specifically that we don't control the force like a power, but like you made someone with it. That's yeah, that's no, like it's weird. not a force that you it's... wield. It is a thread that you pull, and that's yeah. that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. We pulled, pulled the thread, the thread. into yeah, we pulled Animate that thread children. all right. For kind of all this, like they were talking about the thread. They're like, ooh, it's like it's like yes, yeah, so, okay, the force is a thing, and these witches use it in a different way, and they're like ostrac. How? How do they use oh, it in a different yeah. way? They're like Anna. I we talk about episode two. Anakin can float a fruit. They can float a fruit. I like it. What's the difference? Well, they, they made we it clear, know. right? We don't know they, anything they said the about Jedi anything. view it as like a weapon when it's not a weapon. Yeah, we just use it to float flora and create life. Well, and, it's and, not like and then Jedi. of course attack people, but it's just yeah, not and then to torture yeah, Torben. You know. Yeah, different sized, and they're hiding, and they're like you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because the Jedi have said you can, no one in the universe can use the Force they but want us. A, they want a monopoly on Force use. Yeah, or, or I guess they're just trying to like make sure that nobody does anything. The amount of speculation we have to do, and this should be like the show really exploring this, and everyone's like, I, it's because the Jedi want to do this and that because of this. Mm -hmm. Is like a lot of this is just like it's you know it's in, in varying degrees of reasonable conjecture, you know. And we still don't know why. We still don't know why is this the case. What would happen if they didn't? None of this is explored. It's like sort of stated, kind of in some yeah. aspects. But there's so much that's just left unsaid, and we have to be like, well, like I guess it's the, the, the ABC. I think super bad with it and becomes like a villainous monster. Who gives them the right to decide exactly what what is a good or bad use?
Interesting. Well, I wish the show would have made the show this, would like, talk yeah. into that to any <laughs> say, degree this, whatsoever. This really is this is everyone else's work. This is not the show's work at all. Everyone's like, no. Everyone already knows that that's kind of where the show may be going, but they haven't oh, done no. anything about it Look, yet. Look, okay. Look, all right. In in the prequels, the the first big old guy that you know the the big bad, all right, of Sebulba? that story, the guy opposed to the Jedi screamed unlimited power as he electrocuted a guy to death, all right? Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. we have a general sense of who, you know, what the concerns might be of somebody who decides mm. they want to use the Force for evil. <laughs> I mean, yeah, th that's the thing. We dismiss any legitimacy to the Jedi's concerns about Sith users because it, who gives them the right? But then it's like, you've already said more than what's in the show. You have. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who force, get, yeah, how come I can't have a nuclear weapon? I don't know. Who give them the right? They give themselves the right. Exactly, Mike. Exactly. Uh-oh, uh-oh, but careful. I thought we don't want politics in Star Wars. I, re I remember that politics in Star Wars <laughs> am are bad, so I, I don't know. I'm getting mixed fair, signals here. He did go back on a couple of those things, including uh, recommending J.J. Abrams take control of Star Wars. Mm. So mistakes were made. It's okay. Mistakes were made. Jedi are kind of the ones dictating how the Force is utilized. And so I think it's so fascinating for there to be this introduction of this character who utilizes it in a different way and comes from a different... Yeah, for evil. How is it different? <laughs> for evil. <laughs> that isn't even, that isn't even Wait, different. We've seen it, this before. Dude, That's yeah, arguably yeah. why it does Jedi like one control. of those times where you, you do need to remind people it's the George Lucas thing where he explains, like, the light side is balance. That's the point. The balance is not, oh, well, you know, we need about an evil, even amount of light side and dark side. The light side is the balance. They didn't use it for evil. They just tortured someone. That's different. Mm -hmm. If you torture I, I someone for justice, I, yeah. then... I think, I think what annoys me is, like, there is, there really is, and it's something that has been absent, particularly in Disney Star Wars, of, like, a meaningful exploration of, you know, Anything. providing, like, real like different developed perspectives on you know like the the jedi and the sith right or, or you could have like different attitudes on what the nature of the dark side is rather than what you typically see which is oh yeah power woohoo you could have somebody who is more pragmatic or you know they believe that essentially any morality that people attach to it is arbitrary and that's like their perspective and exploring it in that way but like we get the way more boring one of well you know the jedi maybe they're not so good it's so boring I yeah. think they've also Stop foreclosed the chance of actually doing a more interesting thing with it as well, because you have Smilo deliver the line, I've embraced my darkness, which basically is the villain telling you, no, I am a dick, and I'm fine with that, as opposed to him genuinely having a different moral point of view with the Force, which yeah. would be interesting. I, I'd like to see them at least try and do well, that. Yeah. But if he's now telling you, no, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just a villain, then well, they say, well, how much can you do? We memed about Carl Jung, right? But you could do something about some guy with the idea of, like, integrating the shadow or something. In, as like his interpretation of the nature of like being a Sith or, or something along, you know. If we... There is there is something interesting to be said philosophically about the Force that the dark side can exist, that it is yeah. something that exists within the fabric of the Force. It is real. Exactly. And it's what I yeah, assumed like, they were going exactly. with with the dyad situation to begin with. Is and I think that is an idea that they would have been pinching from Star Wars Visions when they also create another Force dyad. They attempt to create a single Virgins in the Force, and it creates a light and a dark side aligned person because that is just the natural way the Force seems to operate now. So I wouldn't be surprised if like that's what they're doing with May and Osha, for example. I don't know what Smilo Ren's backstory will turn out to be. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if he turned out to be like the secret third child that the witches were hiding. Oh, and they were so terrified of it. Because there is a scene in episode three when Osha, the younger version, says, it only feels weird because we're the only kids here. And the two women like doing their hair look at each other suspiciously. And I'm pretty sure like that seems more important to me now than it did at the time. And so if he turns out to be secret third child, they hid because they were terrified of the darkness within him or whatever the fuck tried again. But the force keeps creating a light and a dark side <laughs> bifurcation like that. That would be predictable. So I but then again, it wouldn't be the worst thing they could do. So they probably won't do that. What you're missing what actually happened, which is that they tried to conceive a child out of pure force. They created a boy and then they were like, oh, fucking hell. And they kicked him out into the woods. <laughs> like, we we fucked him off up. a cliff. Try it again. Oh, maybe yeah. that's what uh, Smilo is. Yeah, I mean, it's a good theory. We'll see. It's a different spiritual community. And, um,. It's 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 new politics, Rich. It is the new politics, but it's why I, I, I kind of fully I'm fully on board with that. They're they're um, assholes. Well, I'm sorry, they're just assholes. Uh -huh. 
What? Huh? Why? Is he saying the Jedi are our souls? Yeah, but why? The, uh, yeah, it's 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 good and evil are subjective. And are the witches evil? From I... my point of view, it is you who are evil. Right, right. This hasn't really been discussed in the show at all. <laughs> what we had no. was the Gooba the scene where they said the Jedi are good, <sighs> the Jedi are evil. It, it, it... Which is, I, I am I'm sure they made fun of the, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Like, you surely they made fun of that. Well, you guess... are lost. <laughs> Which was very true and based of Obi-Wan. <laughs> In a galaxy where sort of every choice is made by light or darkness, your character really encourages individualism, and I think it's really cool to see that. Uh, that belief that... Uh, what is that? Wait, I don't what? even know. Individualism. <laughs> she was, she was oh, so about this. How does, how, she, how does individualism even address the nature of the dichotomy of good and evil? Like, but it's not even how, what they do. She, she it's throws not what they do a child all. on the head to ascend her into a lesbian cult. That's yes. not individualism. <laughs> How can you? How can this be the analysis? It's a cult. Oh, it's oh, a crazy oh, cult. Oh. The entire is thing they were doing with the that? twins as well was about de-individualization because they were being just made clones of each other. Yeah, and mm -hmm. remember, she didn't say yes, you can go with the Jedi. She said, "I'll talk to them about it." That's the best she got. <laughs> and also, yep. I, my guess is the reason why he said it is because it, there was that one line where she said it's not about good or evil, but it's about power or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why he's, but like, that's one line that doesn't even like really mean anything on its own. It's just, <laughs> by the way, kids, if anyone, if an adult ever tells you that, run away. Well, remember, the thing she says is it's like, it's about power and who should be able to use it. It's like, okay, well, the basis on which you're going to decide who should have power is probably going to be morality, right? So good and evil, you know? Yeah. Right and wrong. Pretty much. And the, who, these stories are really badly written. Who, like they don't have like development. Yeah. Anyway, her first reaction to the notion that anyone in this cult wouldn't want to be a part of it is, "Oh, you'll grow out of that perspective. You're just wrong." Yeah. I remember when I was an individual like you. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Well, you're all individuals. I'm but not. I'm not. <laughs> yes, we're all individuals. I fucking love that scene. It's because so Life of Brian is funnier <clears throat> than yes. the Holy Grail. <gasps> I don't know if that's controversial or not. I don't, I don't know, know either. <laughs> I, I, I don't know either. I, it's, it's, I don't know. Don't, you're not just one thing, you know? But I also think, you know, Mother Anna say I represent... What are you wearing, woman? What is, what is going on here? What is this? We've come across a couple uh, of ice cream cone dresses wild. before. Pretty wild. This Jesus. is like, this is like something you'd see in the, like, in like a Hubble Space Telescope photograph. <laughs> this is... What is going on here? Wearing a it does nebula. look more like a you know? weird, like sci-fi space witch in real life yeah, than she does she in the show. Yeah, well, well, she should have worn the costume from the from the TV show, and I've been like, yeah, that's a thing. That's a, that's yeah. that's a thing people wear in California or whatever. Oh, a lot of people they said Hugger Games. Like she does kind of match Hugger Games. <laughs> yeah, she does. But I also this think is a, <laughs> she's wearing one of those, she's wearing one of those battle pass outfits. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite I finished deluxe the season. Kid. Pre-order yeah. Acolyte to get pre <laughs> The lady on the left, she's... Junji the... Ito dress. <laughs> this is the difference between a free uh, player on the left and a premium Battle yeah, Pass yeah, player yeah. on the right. Yeah. They got all the bling. And you're like, uh, what can you do on the left? She's like, I lamps. can change this to a darker right. color if I want. <laughs> That's about it. Like dresses in real life versus dresses in gacha games, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You no, know, Mother Anna say represents a philosophy that is that is about more about connection to life and less <laughs> more about connection <laughs> to life than the Jedi. Yeah. Huh? It's about what connection oh. to dogma? More about connection to what? life than it is connection to dogma, says the cultist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they, they <laughs> the scream Jedi. evil cult. This is they, unreal. They scream I, evil cult. Like I, the lack of self awareness is fucking baffling. I just don't get it. There's there the is that line. To the Jedi. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Yoda actually explicitly states in, in Empire when he's teaching Luke about the Force, you know, the Force is connecting you to every living thing yeah. the tree, the yes. rock. He just goes through the long list oh, of things he can see because the Force connects you to everything. This is like. That's why when the Jedi show up, the kids are like, oh, thank God. You, thank <laughs> yeah. God you're, you're somehow less freaky Help me. and weird <laughs> than these people. Like, take me yeah. out of here. You gotta wonder, like, how did. You know, especially if you've got people who are essentially, you know, newcomers to, to Star Wars who, you know, in certain cases indicate that they basically don't know anything about it at all. Do they ever, like, wonder why people like Jedi so much? Why, why like, mm. it's. 
people are big fans of Luke and Obi Wan and Yoda. Like why they like knowledge, these characters. defense, skill, it talent, excessive training, like Yoda's, achievement. Yoda's awesome, man. Like Yoda Yoda's is awesome. so great. I love mm -hmm. Yoda. If it was like the, the element... perfect encapsulation of what the Force is, or like the Jedi's attitude on the Force, that even this small little fella, you know, being the most powerful, wise uh, entity like in the world. And meanwhile, um, you've just got people saying, oh, well, you know, like what we've got with our character, it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's really like a positive thing, not like the Jedi with like their negative things. And that's yeah, like the all extent their death of the and stuff. Yeah. The Jedi are so far removed from their inspiration that you can't even draw the lines if you didn't already know that going in. Well, part of it some... is that they don't, you know, like it's, it comes down to as simple as, you know, like the idea of, oh yeah, balance of, of uh, is, is when you've got so, like the same amount of good and evil, the same amount of light and dark, as opposed yeah, to the idea that like the attitude that the Jedi have is the aspirational one. That's the one to pursue because it's like peaceful, yeah, it's balance. Mastery you know? over yourself and exactly. you know, diligence and determination and discipline being able to rise past your more basal instincts to be the like the most like self-controlled and you know like best version of yourself. Um, the, well, the this... idea is it's harder to be Yoda than it is to be Palpatine. Palpatine yeah. is like the path of least resistance, direct path to power. Anyway, they're yeah, a cult. I... Meanwhile, these guys are all about life. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're mm -hmm. a cult uh and and isn't it weird like w nobody mentions uh, like th why why aren't there any men and then when men show up that would be kind of weird like what's that what's yeah, that what thing right things? there what are they doing <laughs> you know nah and, it's just uh, accepted uh, wh wh why why would the witches be evil i don't know I, I, they torture people you look at them like i they indoctrinate I hate to people say it, but like oh. they they well, don't even pass the vibe check man like the just Jedi look showed at them. up and they were like, hey, what's up? And then they, like, mind control stunned, like, one of the Jedi. Just and, yeah, you know what? They did Didn't it. one of them say, I want to, why not just kill him? <laughs> Who's going to yeah. miss if, him? Um, <laughs> I mean. Because I want to be fair, right? The Jedi apparently broke in. Okay. If you did. would, If you had done the mind stun on sight and then said, leave now, you're like, you're trespassing, blah, blah, blah. That's not what happened. They walked yeah. in and they had themselves a chat. And then they were permitted the uh, ability to see the kids and to speak to them. And then Sol was like chilling out with uh, it was Osha, right? And then it just yeah. cuts to her being like, I'm a torture Dorbin now. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> that, that seems pretty dark sided that of seems, you. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, like that's awfully dark of you. Interesting. If anything, it was really annoying that all the Jedi reacted to that kind of eh. Like Kel Naka looked a bit worried, but that was about it. It's just like, damn, I think I would have had a bigger reaction to them torturing one of us, but eh, okay. Why, why would the witches be evil? I don't know. Because they're, the torture, they're using yeah. force in an unsanctioned way that the Jedi's don't approve yeah. of. There's probably a good reason it's not sanctioned anymore. to torture people with the force, just FYI. <laughs> it's, just uh, torturing people in how general. Casual they, yeah, they might have just uh, sanctioned no good. torturing in general. Did they they not under their thumb. They, did they show them doing anything particularly they, evil? They no. do yes. The torture, yeah, the torturing of the guy and basically I mean, the brainwashing of children into the yeah. cult. Yeah. Do we know the implications of using the Force to create life? Yeah, influencing we... the midichlorians, if you will? Yeah. It doesn't how surprise you, me that the Jedi get a social security number? invested... Ooh. If the history for the Jedi is their knowledge of crazy Force users that cause immense damage on a massive scale and they want to make sure they catalog throughout the universe, Force users. You know, you can leave the Jedi Order as a Force user. I mean, mm -hmm. let's... Like, because you, you just extrapolating on what we've already seen in the Star Wars, just the movies and the shows, the kind of shenanigans and crazy shit you could do with a disciplined control of the Force. That's like... like yeah, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to think like, oh, maybe there's some like reasonable aspect that the Jedi have of why they feel like they're justified in having control over it and why they want to have anyone who's sensitive to the force being a part of the order. It, At least we, on the books, they didn't even... because Osha was able to leave voluntarily, which is like, oh, okay, yeah. that's a thing you could do. You could choose to voluntarily leave. At least they have your name down as like, okay, Osha, last name, you are like, you can use the force 
So, okay, we know that. And we, you know, we have reason to believe you're not like evil or terrible or whatever. Your reason for leaving the Jedi is, you know, not like a, it's like being honorably discharged it's, or whatever. Like we, we don't have to worry about you, but you can't be part of the organization. What's, what's so weird to me here is the amount of criticism we're levying against the Jedi and how they function when we've got a clearly worse cult by comparison mm -hmm. right next to them. Whoa. And they're just like, no, nah, these guys are chill. Let them do their thing. It's like, um, <laughs> did you watch the <laughs> show? Them, so like, when uh when when Mace Windu went to get uh Palpatine, would they be like, well, what you know who who is this guy right to impose his will upon Palpatine? You know, like try to he's just exploring the Force in his own way. Yeah. Why are we doing this now? I don't know. Why are we I'm, up I'm stuck on the part where the guys who ripped apart the prequels and Kurtzman Trek are okay with this. I I, I really can't get past that. Yeah, I don't. There's I, a I, little I don't bit know. of an well, inconsistency oh, here. Uh, just a lack of interest, like it's not yeah. particularly engaging or interesting to them, so they're not really. Well, they. I yeah. don't know. I just get that sense. They're not very. We, we as people have mentioned, we did cover the, their coverage of Obi Wan Kenobi. They liked it. They defended it as good stuff. Mm -hmm. It was fucking yep. abysmal. It's often cited well, as the worst been, thing Disney all did. Episode over it. Mm. It has been a bit of a strange thing to watch. Is there a uh, strong reluctance to to say that Disney Star Wars has delivered anything worse than the prequels? Yes, they've um, got. That's a big chip on the shoulder about the prequels, which is interesting because uh, okay, you know, we, all right, but we have happily entertained uh, plenty of criticism for the prequels, but it's just like I just Absolutely. I have to, like I'd be lying if I said the prequels were worse than the sequel trilogy. The prequels have be. more merit than the sequel trilogy. They By have far. more merit. Absolutely, they, do. they have yes. better qualities on their own, and of course, in terms of rich ideas for like a for a for an era of Star Wars, like God damn, the prequel era was like ripe in terms of the adjacent stories that were sort of being developed in all of these cool new locations that we got to see. Like, the idea that the sequel trilogy or these shows are better quality than the prequels for all of their many faults is, like, that's crazy to me, but... For me, yeah. it's enough. What they did to Han, Luke, and Leia is already enough to put it below the prequels. That's already enough. And mm. they did more than that. They did way more than that. I am... Um, yeah. they Actually, I as uh, like Aiden Paladin actually in the chat has reminded me of in Dragon Age. Uh, you guys remember Dragon Age? Um, but in, in Dragon Age, you have the Chantry, which is essentially um, this organization that takes all the people who can use magic, and they say you have to be a part of this organization and go to the towers and live within these sanctioned areas, and we kind of like control you basically because of the potential destructive power that magic has and summoning demons and fireballs and lightning and all the crazy stuff that magic can do. And the Chantry is, uh, they kind of have like a, almost almost literally like a leash on all of the of the mages to the point where they have like phylacteries with blood samples of all the mages so you can't escape and they can always find you using magic. And if you do bad stuff as a mage, they, uh, they like essentially turn you into like kind of a, an emotionless zombie who just like does stuff for him for the rest of your life, and you're not allowed to be a a a, a mage, a, a magic practitioner outside of their organization. You're like you're not allowed to do that, and you're gonna get captured and whatnot. And that's like it's a really oppressive kind of system that ultimately does a a a thing that has you know potentially or that fights against the very, very negative potential consequences from people who can, you know, summon demons and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, at least it's something. And that's that would sort of be like the super authoritarian-leaning version of the Jedi that we've seen in a fantasy setting. But to be able to compare them to the Chantry and the Dragon Age um, lore would be... Well, it would require them to actually study the Jedi and their rules and their way of teaching and the potential side effects of what the Sith are capable of, which they just haven't, haven't really done at all. So, they do not. Um, uh, so they do this ceremony. The, the, the impression I get is very much that the Jedi just don't like anybody using the Force. Which seems to be pretty immoral um, that they're deciding. Can we be a little I bit just more can't believe it. to the like, Jedi? Yeah, like, the, the, why might they like, not the like that? Of the Jedi Maybe they just they, don't want... They're worried about in, people like Palpatine and Darth Vader. In, yeah. In the Acolyte like, people... show, Osha is released from the Order and she's gone off to do her own thing. Do you think they know whether she's using the Force on a day-to-day? -day? She probably is. Remember, she's trying also, to use it like, in the in the prison capture ship. Mm -hmm. That's right. Remember, this is like we're talking about reading people's minds, controlling them, 
telekinesis that's basically untrackable. And like then it's, in the case of dark side powers, electrocuting people. Yeah. yeah. Choking them out. I'm not even, I don't like, even say I that agree whole or disagree. Sith, Sith thing a thousand years ago. Didn't know. Uh, or 900 years ago in this. Didn't but. Count Dooku leave the Jedi Order as well? Yeah. He was pretty yep. fucking yep. powerful. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they let him go. But I, I think it's just annoying to me because like, it's almost as if the, the explanation for why the Jedi would want to oversee the nature of how the force is being used in the galaxy is so obvious that it's almost like it's it's like disappeared from the conversation. The Jedi don't want Sith going around electrocuting people, like choking they just want people to control out, taking people. over the galaxy. They don't like freedom. Yeah. This is the thing is too. Like we, are, are we all forgetting the line, with... the awkward as fuck line that felt like it almost didn't belong, but is still there? We will test your children. You know we have the right to do that. Yeah. Well, with we your permission, with your permission. <laughs> permission. <laughs> it's it's so clunky because it's like, oh well, that makes it way less bad. Uh, now, like if you had just said, we we will take your kids and we will test them, it's like, oh. But when you say with your permission, it almost makes the rest of it sound a bit weird. Yep, it does. It almost seems like it was tacked on. It almost seems like it was ADR. Yeah, it might have been. Who knows? Yeah. Oral, with I'm your permission. Exciting. Other people can't use this thing that binds all life together, Mike. I think it's sort of like the U.S. government doesn't want you making your own medicine. It's more like the like the Christian. Okay, but do you, do you un yeah do you understand? Do you, if we that's not a terrible parallel, right? There's a reason why a government wants to make sure that people aren't just selling medicinal homebrew stuff to people. Like, it, can can we extrapolate that to ooh, what's the comparison with the force? People just using the force, training with the force, and what well, that but, could cause for a society at large. Yeah, it depends on what we're talking about. Remember in Batwoman when the fucking girl had her own full on hospital versus someone oh, just yeah, doing, a yeah. you know, like yeah. someone doing like bandage or whatever because someone's hurt themselves at home. It's like, of course, you don't need the government approval. And like to Batwoman doesn't want to deal with the nature of okay, what if she makes a mistake and someone gets seriously hurt or dies? What's the yeah. legal remedies for somebody who suffers, uh, like any have... you know, like mistreatment by her hands? We yeah, can't in the same way that from hero though, that would be cringe. Putting a band-aid on somebody unsanctioned is totally fine, and that would probably be, like, using the force to, like, oh, I, there's a fork over there and I need it to eat. Voop, telekinesis, now I've, I've lifted the fork into my hand. No one cares about that. The hospital in Batwoman would be like, oh, I'm going to mind control people with a force. I'm mm. going to read their yeah, thoughts up, against yeah. their will. Yeah. Well, uh, someone just super chatted as well, saying uh, there was a debate over whether or not to even accept and train Anakin. Yeah, the guy with the highest midichlorian count in history, and they didn't yeah. even... Yeah. God, what's, what, what, they're just fucking up their whole cult point of view here, the Jedi, aren't they? They're not controlling Anakin. They even said they kind of want him to go. Like, none yeah, of them... They, yeah, they, and also that people can just leave. It's, you this can what just I mean, leave whenever bullshit. you want. They, can't, like, uh, they were told they can't leave the lesbian cult. And then, and then also just the nature of uh, the, the difference between them is that the Jedi as an institution has accountability. Yeah. You know, they are like accountable to the Republic. They are a, an institution that has... There's a building a, with their a, a name on it you can go to. Well, it's just, you know, if they, if they screw up, they have to answer for that. Um, that's like the nature of the way that the institution exists, where there is no such thing for the witches. They signed the, the Sokovia Accords. <laughs> Yeah, There's the also witches could strong theoretically... implication that the witches do the dark side as well. So the witches have already, we know they have fled galactic space. We know they were hunted down. Mother Anus Eye, whatever her name is, drops <laughs> in the line about people being afraid of their power because it's unnatural, which is, of course, a reference. Um, they have been experimenting with the Force. It's, it's that they are teaching children something, not that the children are Force-sensitive, that the Jedi are alarmed about, it seems. In front of the bottomless pit, yeah. It's like, I don't know, it, it's, it's bad vibes, man. Well, and I think it's worth inspecting that this cult is generating force-sensitive human beings from thin air. That's uh, mm -hmm. yeah. that is something to inspect. I think this is yeah. This yeah. is like the, that. this is the Dragon Age demon summoning thing. Like just a, with the different coat of paint is like you guys are just just summoning demons. Like yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're nice. They're fine. We get along. Determining they're the oh, and obviously all of this analysis is done well before they've shown us the retarded episode where all the Jedi do go crazy or something. 
Yeah, no. kill everybody. Because we're judging this strictly from what they showed us in uh, episode three, which is what everyone is judging this from, which is why I'm confused that RLA have come to these conclusions. The only ones who get to determine what is the proper sexuality people can have, and you can't be gay over there. Maybe. I don't approve maybe, of that. Maybe. maybe. Or, or you I, can't, I, uh, <laughs> you can't enrich uranium on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so do you agree or not? Because it is dangerous yeah. to do fucking uranium yeah. in your back garden. <laughs> like, I wouldn't recommend. That's against the law probably, right? The Jedis want all the guns. The Jedis want all the guns. They no, let, they, they don't they, want no, the they, fucking no, super no, weapon no. to establish, uh, poof out of thin air. It's like, hey, we made this person. By the way, he's like super evil and can destroy worlds with his well, mind. It's so funny, right? Maybe it's we just want to argument because there is guns. Everybody's got guns. You get, you're trying to make a oh, bad yeah, analogy. Yeah, the Jedi here. are not the yeah. sole force <laughs> yeah. in the universe. That's, yeah, yeah. And, like obviously they. It's just, you could say they have a monopoly on the force, but you know they aren't the army of the Republic. Like they're, they're, they're the cops. They're, they're Apparently they're the cops now because they read Miranda I mean, rights. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this is this is the part that's confusing me is the uh, Mike's suggestions. I'm like, so you saying what the what the Jedi are doing is good or not? I'm not sure. Rich is clearly saying it's bad. And the, the confusion oh, yeah. I'm having is obviously, if the Jedi's worry was that some guy who gets to use the the, the the Force without understanding it properly and gets a bit mad and goes crazy and does dark side stuff, you know, he could maybe kill, what, like, uh, nine-ish Jedi, one of them being someone called Jackie, one of them being someone called Yord, maybe, that could maybe That'd happen. That'd be crazy. Oh, oh, what's to stop him from going down to the bazaar and just snap necks? Just like, boom, 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 just snapping necks everywhere he goes. I'm just saying, we've seen all the evidence we need to see that the Jedi have a reasonable position somewhat before we find out anything else. Yeah. And how reasonable is up to the show yeah. and the discussions they have in the show and the things we learn about the Order, what they teach and how they execute this, you know, the, this uh, authority that they have. And that, that, that should ideally be a central core concept that's been explored. But and the only thing that's said, been explored in the show is there's a bunch of women trying to indoctrinate their made up daughters and singing badly on a planet. That's that's <laughs> the only thing this thing that's the only thing that's been established in this show. I don't know how you could get anything, but this is the worst Star Wars ever made out of episode three. The power I, I just of don't. Men. I, I can see that, that that is what they will probably try and do when Smiler gets to give his point of view, is that they will they will go back in time, we'll get another flashback sequence oh. where we see that it's the Jedi who are responsible for turning mere dark side users who are not evil into evil dark side users by their attempts to control what they're allowed to learn. I think that's the critique it will leverage. I don't think it will be satisfying, but I can see them doing nope. it. In a, in a well-written show, that could be an interesting premise. Mm -hmm. We won't Tons. see it. Nope. Be 27 minutes long with six and a half minutes of credits and a, a minute and a half of intro. Nobody and else all will be any. revealed at the end of episode eight. Thank goodness. <sighs> Ooh. Guns. The Jedis want all the guns and nobody else can have any. The, the, okay. the witches, the lesbian witches. The How do you make sense of that when they allow people to leave the order and do whatever they want? You could leave yeah. and you could take your gun with you. Yeah, you have yeah. your gun. They're just like oh, the, the militia. I'll the show is kind of weird on that point, actually, because for some reason they have actually decided in the Acolyte that civilians are not allowed to have guns. Because Yord keeps telling her to give that stun gun back. Because she's a civilian. <laughs> and and civilian that's true, yeah. But he doesn't, it's, but, it's but he doesn't take it though. Yeah. And they're telling us that civilians can't have, have guns. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's just it's hilarious. hilarious. The lesbian witches, they're just like the militia out there. I suppose, I suppose. I, I just see, like, yeah, maybe they... Uh, the, the, if you fuck around with the dark side of the forest, yes, you could become something really bad and become a danger. Yes. That's wow, you're almost is this there. A, is, this a Waco, <laughs> is this a Waco analogy? Is that where they're going? I don't know. That's the kind yes. of the point I'm making. So Everybody died Altaria in the fire. Authorities tell us that the most serious or perhaps the most dangerous kind of devil worship comes in the form of underground cults. Most of them are very secret. <laughs> you mean like the lesbian witches? <laughs> Interesting. Usually <laughs> organizing clandestine rituals in the dark of night. Oh I, 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 that, and that's interesting. It's the most interesting. No, but it, it could be. It's it not. Be. Yeah, I was about to say it could be, but we don't we get barely, anything. Yeah, we barely have the shadow uh. of the premise. Like, let's not pretend it's anything more than that. The idea of an idea. It's so weird how much people do so much work for the show. All the stuff they're saying is happening wasn't in it.
as if as if no. the show is not the the that's, responsible for doing the work. That's Star Wars now. I mean, they, they conflate so much of the EU which doesn't exist in Disney Star Wars. Okay, they got rid of all Maybe of it. They oh, they love it doesn't exist yeah. when people were trying to cite it for Kiati Mundi's age. They they yep. love decanonizing all of it and then just randomly using some of it. They love just yeah. taking like, bits not, out that they this want. This does not belong to the acolyte. Like meaningful deconstruction, observations, potential criticisms of the Jedi, and more compelling arguments trying to be made in terms of like understanding the nature of the Sith or like characters creating their own arguments that they believe are like internally logical for it. That exists in other stories, many of which, many of which are no longer canon, of course, <laughs> because thanks mm. to Disney, mm. it's not stuff yeah. that is present in this show. Like no. all of the stuff that you do when you, after you've watched it and you know that it's something that the writers have said in interviews or whatever, like writers, directors, and actors, and that it's something that is clear that they're attempting to explore that idea, but not doing it very well. When you go off and have your own conversations on streams and stuff, when you start adding all this stuff in, you have to understand that this is not part of the show that you're talking about. Yep. This is stuff that you've added, but you're using it to complement the show when it's not present. The but show doesn't there, make arguments. You've got to have a moment of thinking about if all the information you got was from interviews, from promotional material, and then your own interests, and then you're using it to say it's what the show's got. Like, you're the ultimate sort of mark for the show. I mean, yeah. it's essentially... They got you. You know, it's, we've, we've talked about it before. It's interesting to... I mean, I, it seems to not work as well anymore. But, like, you notice it with Marvel projects. I'm going to sound like a broken record on this, but I do find <laughs> it fascinating. That, like, usually a Marvel project will lead with Marvel essentially setting the um the, the agenda for what that project's going to be. So you remember that with Secret, uh, with Secret Invasion, oh, it's gritty, it's grounded. And then you started Winter seeing Soldier. that in a lot of, like, reviews. Oh, it's gritty and grounded and everything. And then the Marvels, it's fun. It's a fun time. It's a fun time. And then you see reviews like, yeah, it's such a fun movie. It's a fun, fun time. Man. Um, These sorts like of they like- copy and paste just what they said your own in the beginning opinion. in the advertisement. Pretty and much. I was like, let's do this. This is my review. It is quirky and funny. Well, well, essentially, the, the Secret review. Invasion one was crazy because by the time we got to the last episode, yeah. someone was goofy shit in all of the MCU. Yeah, yeah and, and yet they tried to market it as being gritty. But like at the end of the day, these are all none of these things mean anything. Like it's it's just badly written. But like right. it's it's worth recognizing how the agenda is being essentially set for what you're going to be focusing on and not just going along with it because they said that that's what it's about. They have to work harder than that. If they want their story to be like a gritty, grounded story that makes you think about like the current zeitgeist or whatever, then that's something that they need to do for themselves. If it's going to be fun, it should be fun self-evidently, not something that needs to be told to you constantly. Right. And in this case, the idea that this is going to be deconstructing the Jedi when thus far it's just been completely hapless and stupid, the idea that the show should get any credit for it is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. thing to come out of star wars in a little while is like the the um the ethics involved in who can use the force and who can't and blah blah blah, blah. And there like, is okay, no there is no exploration of that. no That's the thing. It's it doesn't here. exist so tell present. me tell me three differences between the jedi and the cult just like tell me three just to give me three differences that aren't that aren't just purely aesthetic Right. Mm -hmm. Tell me anything. Tell me the biggest difference between the two, other than you know, like why why should one have it over the other? Like, well, give, give me one this. example. Give me one example in the show where they debate the ethics of There's using the force. Th no, they just state like they don't let us use it. They're dicks. They're yeah, dicks. we. There's nothing to explore. You'd have to just make stuff up. There's nothing in the show. There are no lines you could point to that are substantive in any way. There's not a yeah, well, there's no dinner scene. There's no yeah. there's no scene where they go back and forth and each give their perspective. It's just me where, where Soul sits down with Osha and breaks down like, hey, this is why the Jedi feel this way about the Force. Here's like what, what we think. Here's, here's what we think. Our yeah. general philosophy. Um, uh, someone said RLM never said it was good. They've described things in the show that aren't in it, and if they were in it, it could very well be an interesting good show. That's the issue. A lot of people are inventing shit that's in this show because it's so awful. Yeah, but like uh, it, 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 they it haven't said it's bad something. either. There's there they've been they've literally just said there's things that work for them. Yeah, in this and uh, that's their prerogative. And besides, absolutely. I don't. But, um, I'm less interested in the you know broad statement. I'm more interested in the working, and the working is bothering me so much. Like 
man, there's such yeah. an interesting approach to do this, 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 this. And it's like, what scenes are you referring to? What do you think you're talking about? Give me a if, line. If, we're, if we're, we're headed towards episode six, and if we're still waiting for one effing thing to work in this show, by mm -hmm. the way, things should be working by now. Like, some things should be working, and they're not. ...involved in who can use the Force and who can't, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, yeah, what, what they just show up. Um, it says they're, like stationed on that planet mm -hmm. I, I don't know what they what they do there on the others the... they're clearly there to harass the witches by <laughs> they're clearly there to harass they're the not, witches. they're not doing a very good job uh... if they've only shown up once and that would have been the final time and they and thought it, it was taken... uninhabited or they, mm -hmm. they would have just left yeah. in the morning it's they didn't do a very good job harassing women they, <laughs> <Ethan> <laughs> we can give them some pointers we can give them pointers. for how to harass women yeah we're, we're experts yeah. at it yeah they're, they're not doing a very good job to be honest yeah with you. two out of ten very <laughs> bad at harassing women definitely kid needs back to harassment school for you, yep. you. <laughs> i mean that's school. clearly that's clearly their motive yeah. for being there yeah <sighs> such a Okay. Yeah. Like the only yeah. it's funny, we haven't even been given the, the Jedi or Evil episode yet, but we've already yeah. we just going with it. It's like all right. Yeah. Yeah. Did some kind of like toxic gas explode and kill that? Like how'd they die? Yeah. And I, I certainly hope that's resolved. I uh, I think that's that's gonna be like the end of the scene. Okay, We're gonna then, find out that's gonna be the the major thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean if they committed mass murder, uh and there's a reason that the Torben guy killed himself. Okay, okay. Which I, would be I, that, that, and I think that their explanation of that is going to be like not terrible. great. I just don't see how <laughs> well, I haven't you, included. You could possibly go and come they had a whole bunch of speculation on who Smiler Brand was and how the story was going to unfold, and they actually put a tweet out saying, "Well, we were completely wrong," which is fine and fair. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, everyone has speculated right. different things. We can't all be right about this sort of stuff. The the show itself is so nonsense that mostly anything can happen. It, it's mm -hmm. got yeah, to be related on the to table. This. I mean, really, other there's not too much to talk about with the story because we're only four episodes in. We're I mean, only talk, halfway through. Halfway through a <laughs> season. <laughs> that's, that's Imagine. I'm not that's even kidding. Talk about there. Like that's, four episodes that's, into that's House sad. of the Dragon. There's not much we're, to talk about because we're halfway through a season. We're only four episodes into this eight episodes. How much season. has happened Wild. in two two quieter episodes of House of the Dragon? I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so many things happen so many things oh. every episode is just like this happens and this happens and this yep. and that and this and that it's the kind of thing fringy always talks about it's writers who are interested in seizing opportunities rather than just like being completely uninterested in writing whatsoever and then the filling of... the time essentially it's like well yeah. shit i mean i got a tv show here i guess i gotta fill it with stuff to do rather than holy shit i got an hour to play with here yes yeah. awesome. damn um you know, you well, saying... in these episodes, they, they they there's so much things where it's like, wow, this is nonsense, and also I don't need this. And then they have like these large, these long panning shots. It's like, why are we? You have like twenty minutes left. Do you do you want to use that for like Hurry character up. development <laughs> or? I keep saying it like this. They they have this thing where they have the shortest episodes in in TV right now but they still feel feel too long to me yes it's Episode fucking four, insane I it was that uh, one. yeah it, nothing happened they walk through long. the forest and a guy turns up and that's basically it for one episode an entire episode where nothing happens and, and you the, can't really get away with that if, you, if you're now yeah. saying there's not enough story to talk about that's the reason why the only funny noteworthy thing about that is that jackie has the line you've experienced more death than i have oh my God. lol not anymore <laughs> Dude, in in the last episode they cut away to may Stealing Kilnaka's lightsaber and cut away again. That's it. To, from a fight, they cut away from that. Uh, and the fight, the first fight between uh, Soul and Smilo Ren gets cut away from two times, like after they speak two lines and take two yeah, hacks yeah. at each other. The wipes, the, the padding the time wipes. and the wipes. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's um, look, remember in the episode four where we have the little bugs, we have the bug set up. Yep. And the bug payoff was like pointless. And yep. Like what? When we finally got the payoff for the bug, it dragged him the away. Bug trees, it it <laughs> dragged him away, and that was it. That's how they get away from him. They decided to have that be. Oh, that you know what it reminds payoff. me of, Rags, is uh, TFA, the end of TFA. The the world splits in two to separate oh, yeah, the hero and villain in order to prevent <laughs> like story from continuing. It feels like I mean, we're just gonna of. drag him away, so you don't have to decide anything further. Okay, you're like, mm. all right. It would be, it, yeah, it's it's mostly that you have these already short episodes. So much time is spent on a setup that was completely pointless. 
and like weird and bizarre. He's like, oh, we have to set up the bug so when the bugs carry him away in the next episode, <laughs> it doesn't come out of nowhere. So that people will say, oh, yeah, yeah, they set up the bugs. Oh. <laughs> he got carried away by bugs. That's a he real got, thing. That's so hey, bug. He got carried away by you know, bugs. Uh, the bugs put up more of a fight than the trained Jedi Knights. I know. <laughs> they really did. Yeah, uh, Mel was just like, saying like how it's actually remarkably small for TV show episodes, and yet they go on for so long. I was just thinking about the mm -hmm. first Smiling Friends episode, like the pilot, the 10 minutes, how long you can talk about everything they achieve in that 10 minutes, and all oh, the yeah. different forms of jokes, different styles of animation. Is it unreal, and uh, this is reminding me of what Theo was saying at the beginning, right? With uh, and this is something I think I said in my video about uh, approaching Dark Souls Two with metal. You you don't want people to think it's their fault when the game is fucking them over. And in the same vein, I don't want Mike to be saying, "Oh, it's just four episodes. We can't really talk about four episodes." It's like, no, you should mm. be able to talk about four episodes. <laughs> That's remember definitely what happened, yeah. three, Do you remember what happened in three episodes of Arcane? Oh, yeah. Remember what oh, happened in one episode of House of the Dragon? Right. We talked about it for three hours. I don't think we can... That's where yeah, imagine uh, we'd said, wow. like, oh, it's only been four episodes. Episode. Like in the show. Like fucking loser. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things <laughs> oh. you say, and you catch yourself when you say, oh, we can't talk about the story. We're only four episodes in. Like, motherfucker, what have you been watching? What, what do the moving pictures mean? Are you just sitting there in a drug-addled haze with drool coming out of your mouth? <sighs> and you All know right. if you last segment turn it on and it it annoys you or you don't like it it's stop watching it oh, uh, uh, okay uh, star trek uh, you you covered this so this yeah. is the, the reason the reason okay. this is at the end well, yeah. is because i never <laughs> thought i would hear this argument from them and it's really sad yeah. cuz it's a it's a tried and tested crappy response to a situation and you know, before we get into the hypocrisy, of which there is plenty, it's such a shit argument. Why are you even making it? What's the point? If you don't like bad movies, stop watching them. Oh, so wait, they, they have, review movies. They yeah. have a show that is designed to find and make fun of bad things. Yes. Yeah. They covered the fuck out of Picard, even though they despised it. Yep, and said they were going to stop, and then went ahead and, didn't. and did it. Yeah, they had. Remember the thumbnails? It's increasingly like their heads are exploding and lasers and blood. Is <laughs> yeah. what everyone... it's, it's, this is what I mean. Funny. It's like what happened, guys? You used to fully understand why when they do this. You, you guys are famous for the memes, being like, "How does it feel to watch all of your favorite franchises go down in flames?" Like, why? Yeah. Why are you now pulling the card of, "Hey, if you don't like it, just don't watch it." So what's going? They don't on? want to be yeah, part of the mean, discourse. What do you mean, watch them go down wanna, in flames? Yeah. Why would you watch yeah. them go down in flames? They, if you don't like it, don't watch it. You don't what? believe that. Like if you on. didn't watch, if you didn't watch this video, they spend uh, most of it distancing themselves, showing all the discourse, then distancing themselves from it before they even really get into a review of the acolyte. Yeah, we're it's not like, like those other channels who just uh, yeah. thumbnails and da da da. We're not like them because starving Africans or whatever. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. We're 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 really gonna address the show and talk about yeah. it or something. Ugh. Terrible, shitty coverage, waste of time. That's that's yeah. the, the the beginning and end of it. Like, yeah, we did that. We gave Star Trek Discovery a chance. Yes, and it it, it started to really get on. I gave. I'm glad you picked Star Trek Discovery as opposed to Picard because you had no fucking argument there. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> whoops. Yep. Fucking uh, the Strange New Worlds a chance, and it got on my nerves the first like two three episodes, so I stopped watching it. And for the record, there are several shows each of us have not seen through fully to the end because they're shit. It happens. Uh, Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, I, gave I, up I was going to say, who three. even watched season five? Anyone like, in the no. world? I don't think so. And, and we stopped watching. I didn't watch the last two, three seasons of Discovery. And you know what? When you start something. So you watched the first two. <laughs> you watched two seasons you, of something that was bad from the beginning. Yeah, you telling me you thoroughly enjoyed the first two seasons, Mike? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, press so, X so to doubt on like that one. The yep, yep. Are you going to finish the Acolyte, or are you going to stop watching? Yeah, what, what's going uh, on? Yeah, just watch what's it all. Gonna Something. I'm surprised they talked about it at all, to be honest with I'm, you. Yeah, I, was, I, I, was a little, I was a little surprised to see that Acolyte video drop at night. I'm like, what's this about? And then I saw. You want to see the Andor one? Yeah. yeah. 
the Kenobi yeah. one that did it for me. So. I, I think it was uh, Chris. Chris Gore said this. Uh, Red Letter Media, th- like, I, I love their channel and I still watch their stuff. Right? Yeah, same. But the, it, they, they like with this a lot of stuff. They want to be the final word. That's why they they wait a little bit. You know, they want to be the final word. And believe me, they will be back for the end of the series. Promise oh. you. Like I'll watch, I watch their best of the worst, but like, I just don't, I'm not really interested in their sit downs for a lot of stuff. Um, like it, like a review on an old movie or something like that. They, those can be good, mm-hmm. but I just like, they're like the compromised in a, in a sense is like whenever you talk about Star yeah. Wars it's like, Oh, I liked your Andor video, but like, but you guys like filleted Kenobi. I have no fucking clue what, what's going on here. Is it just like scatter shot with you guys? Like I feel we should be way past that. You should be good at this. Not not like terrible. Well, do you remember uh there's, the thing with the TLJ video? Best. It was like Mike was sort of rocking back and forth, ready to just rip into TLJ, but Rich was kind of chill with it and Jay had plenty of compliments. It's like an mm-hmm. awkward video to watch because Mike is clearly very upset with TLJ. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's uh they have a, they have a really strange relationship with Star Wars. I don't know what else to say about it. Something, yeah. And you watch twenty minutes of it, and you stop it, and you never go back to it. That algorithm knows that you've done that, <laughs> and that algorithm takes note of how many other people have done that. Then why did you keep watching Picard season you one and two? Watch seasons. If you, you believe seasons. this, if you truly believe that we need to do this in order for algorithms to recognize we're not interested and for the shows to ultimately fail, because as you guys know, all the coverage of Willow. Got it a second season. In fact, they're still going to this day. They're on season three. It's unbelievable. Whoa. You've got to stop reviewing it. <laughs> Hello. Remember Batwoman? The um, the sheer coverage. We generated a practical fan base uh, combining Jay Longbone <laughs> as the selves. Then they're on we season We are the largest online now. fan community of Batwoman. Yeah, they didn't yes. get cancelled. They're still going. Amazon definitely didn't spend a huge Wait, amount of time really trying on? to stop people criticizing Winds of Power, for example. And, right. Like, that's just... <laughs> It's just like I, the hate argument from hate watching is bullshit. They, like, there is one way Disney can make money back on the acolyte, and that is if people pay money to subscribe to Disney Plus to watch the acolyte. The which algorithm not. is which they're not going to do. Obviously, not. the algorithm telling them one thing or another is not going to convince them to renew if they're making no money from doing it. Exactly. You know, and and if if you don't like the content, just pick a different content. Ugh. If it's unsuccessful and nobody watches it, it goes away. Yeah not how it fucking works the acolyte at all yeah yeah, like how are we how is this pot this one right now that we're all watching or taking a part in how is this generating revenue for disney he just talked about star trek discovery it made it to five seasons people weren't even fucking watching it to hate on it by the time it hit season four yep they still got their fifth season seasons this is what i mean it's just like why they know this they know better than this it's so weird to see these points coming from them Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's but I don't know. Weird. I don't know what it is. And I, I, I do think a little bit if uh, it's a bit of a reflexive sort of I want to distance from yep. almost everyone. Like they want to be on yes. a little bit of an island, which I understand, I guess. Yep. You don't want to deal with all the drama. Having, that, you know how you do that? You just review the acolyte. Interesting yep. and insightful <laughs> um things to say about it while having interesting and unique personalities. Yeah. And then the division will be made clear. Um, it, yeah. You don't do it by going out of your way to make sure that despite how you might really feel or compromising on your ability to be objective, you exactly you, you, try. You don't, you don't pad your acolyte video with clips of star Wars theory or me or anybody else <laughs> in their thumbnails. You just or review the acolyte. <laughs> That's well, all you I, need to do. I also, I just don't understand now, any time in the future, that if they release their full season of Acolyte coverage and they hated it, why can't we just pepper why the whole thing watching? with pictures of Africa and stuff? <laughs> you well, me? Yeah, yeah, now, I know, dude. Uh, why did they stop watching? Pretty, uh, pretty uh, disappointing. Pretty little disappointing. Bit. Like I said, never wanted to hear that argument from them. The uh, If you yeah. don't like it, why no watch it? No self-awareness. None no, well, and I, I'm sure they tell you. Well, no. It, to be fair, with Star Trek, we were we were we were trying to break it down. We wanted to make sure, you know, but like they would just come up with some random excuse for why it doesn't apply to that. 
Like, but you sure. didn't want to. You didn't want to break the acolyte down, or like, well, what, and, um, what are you trying to tell me here? The fact that they would have to have a built-in excuse for stuff like best of the worst, they would probably say we have a lot of fun doing it, and they'd be like, you know what, we have a lot of fun breaking down the acolyte the way that we do. Yeah, yep. exactly. I love their Star Trek, and, and there's a lot of friends. there's a lot of Star Trek clips in their their acolyte video. By the way, a lot, a lot of references to Star Trek Discovery in that first hour. By the way. Not a surprise. And yeah, I enjoy listening Not to them talk surprise. Star Trek because you can tell they're very passionate and knowledgeable on it. They like to break it down even to the point where Dude, it's... Dude, I love their little... trivia videos. I thought yeah. those were awesome. They're very fun. Yeah, yeah, really fun. Despite so, uh... the, you know, the African blood on their hands, uh, I really enjoyed <laughs> watching those videos. Not thinking about the starving children while they're doing silly Star Trek trivia. Yeah. 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 What it's about the shame. Ukraine guys? Yeah, it's a shame all those, uh, you know, all the all the bodies in Mogadishu. But you know what? We got mm -hmm. some good red letter media videos for it. So hey, I know, think people might have died the while good. they were recording the Star Trek uh, trivia video. Wow, oh my god, it's very shameful. Shame. Well, shame. Um, that is the uh, the Fleen Brigade. <laughs> we got a good the look. Fleen Brigade. Brigade. Uh, the Acolyte is uh, is a fascinating event. This is definitely the Acolyte arc for Efab at this point. We've still got three episodes left. So, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. But uh, for, for now, I was going to say, uh, Gary must head out. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. I, hey. Uh, Bye, I'm Gary. sure you enjoyed all the references you get to have. All your thumbnails making it in Sony videos. Look at you. You're famous. Yeah. Yeah. It's like second time. It's like, <laughs> Jesus. I'm catching <laughs> strays from Red, Mr. Red Letter Media. I'm just I'm just waiting for when you're uh... on those thumbnails. Yeah. I assume oh, you got to go oh, to work yeah. on that Bluey video. You got to get on that. I do right <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. The woke intersectional feminism of Bluey. <laughs> that's yeah. that's my next video. Destroying the West. <laughs> yeah, it, makes sense. it all makes it's sense. It's destroying bro. Western civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very much appreciate uh, guys, it, dude. and uh, hey, just before you go, let people know what's uh, what's happening. What, what are you putting out? Where can they find you? Uh, well, unfortunately, Az has died, so we oh, had again. to replace him. That's yeah, again. Shame. Yeah. Uh, so That's we replaced him with this brew, and I am gonna go. Uh, a very busy day, hanging out with my kid. We're gonna watch Dark Man. So, hey, cool. There you go. Well, all right. Well, just, just so people know, you you run a nooner. You've got you got regular oh, streams yeah. on. Is it? Is it Monday for you? It would be Monday morning, right? For the House of Dragons? No, Sunday that's, night That's going to be right? Sunday night. So I got my Forbidden Frontier woo-woo uh, ancient civilization stuff. And then after that, I'm with you and Ryan and Fringy this yeah. week. Uh, we're going to talk about House of the Dragon episode three. And I can't wait. <gasps> Freaking no, can't really wait. Really I'm right. put it in my veins. Nom, nom, yes. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, so uh yeah. always a pleasure talking to you guys thank you very much we appreciate have, it good have a good show thank you chat have a good day see you around bye-bye we will bye -bye. see you later Toodles. what a very nice man it's a it's a pity he was labeled as vile and, and disgusting <laughs> by all of those videos it's, it's, it's ridiculous you never know what to expect um what is Gross, well, man. Uh, I suppose now we can bookend the stream with the uh, the other half, uh, so to speak. Of any, uh, is what? there anything else that you'd like to uh, to talk about, Elden Ring, Theo? Since uh, oh, awkwardly man. this was placed into this episode. Man. <laughs> wow. Uh jeez. Where do you want me to go, man? Like, <laughs> I well, don't know, dude. If you don't, if you if you're not feeling it right, then do not worry about it. I, I was just, more so. Just... I just think it's. Uh... It's hard to, because I think it is so comprehensively broken. I think no. it is Man. like, I think it is really, really non-functional on pretty much every level. And okay, uh, I guess there's one thing I can tell chat. I don't know if you guys are going to be willing to listen to me. No, <laughs> Souls Combat is not deep. Okay, you need to understand this. It is the game in which you press the circle button until you're allowed to press the R1 button. This is why combat is going the way that it is. Difficulty has to increase somehow. The way they found is through delays, unconventional telegraphing, adding extra AoE effects and whatnot around attacks, so on and so forth. That's a reality of the games, and we're seeing the rubber band stretch further with every, with every installment. I didn't think it was going to break so soon. Eventually it's going to break for you too. Okay? <laughs> well, all right. Sounds bigoted, I don't know. Why do you think, Theo, that the DLC has been so exceptionally well-received? Uh, Jesus. 
I think honestly because it plays into FromSoft's crowd pleasing aspect, like it is a huge spectacle. Basic like I said, basically every boss has some huge spectacular thing they do, usually at a phase transition, and then they will have some other enormous combo anime move that they do after that that's really, really visually impressive. Because if there's anything that FromSoft still has, it's a lot of skill in terms of presentation. It's oh, not yeah. a presentation I'm personally interested in. I think it's very gratuitous for my part, but you know, they can sell a scene and they can sell the weight of a swing when they're not actively distorting the rules of animation and physics in order to make that swing delayed. So I think it's just a lot of those things. It gave people a lot of what they wanted. So I think one could believe, because I think a lot of people could agree with that who do like it. They'd be like, I do like the process of gradually figuring out a boss. I do love the spectacle. It makes me feel like I'm in the fight. And uh, even I suppose you might try and argue to them that what they're defeating... It reminds me of, uh, do you guys remember Super Meat Boy very well? Is, yeah. Um, yep. yeah. Is that good. boss that, right, um, yeah. I forget what, is, he's a big block of meat, and, and he's gonna, I remember taking serious issue with it when I first played, because he's either gonna slam his left fist, his right fist, or his head down, and to avoid those, you need to be in the, either of the two slots that he's not hitting down, and, uh, there's probably some level of indication, but if they were not in any way, shape, or form, and that is literally, like, unstoppably either going to be luck or just trial and error. That's going to be what's yeah. happening there. And um, it seems most people are willing, uh, uh, are susceptible to, or, or, you know, like, they'll understand the argument that trial and error is not what we want. We want, because um, something I picked up, and I did speak to uh, Theo about it, and I think uh, Mel's on a similar position. It feels mm. as though as the games have gone on, that the enemies have lost a lot of their physical presence in the sense of, being susceptible to gravity uh yes. they mm -hmm. they move in such ways now that they are no longer there's nothing that you can draw from them as existing units in the world they could act in any way because they're magical beings of all kinds of different things so you know jumps up in the air and just whoosh 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 attack 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 and you're like ah oh, now's my chance to go no attack 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 and you're like okay fair, yeah fair enough and you go back. Uh, there's there's memes about this online for people who love the game. They're saying that um, uh, when does this mother? When is it my turn to attack, motherfucker? I saw that about the um, the the big floaty lion man. And um, and yeah. I think I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, you got to figure out where it is. You can't just be handed it. And um, I think there's there's a piece of nuance in the middle, maybe, or talking about uh, how openings are created and and whether or not. There are better or worse ways of doing so, and it seems that Theo is at his wit's end because he does not believe that they're designing um, with like a skill of intent as opposed to uh, relying on things that just work because uh, that's, most people will deal with it eventually. That's sort of the thing, right? Is I don't want to come off as if I'm not down with a bit of trial and error. I'm down with some trial and error. It's pretty much an inevitability in any game that poses a challenge because you do eventually have to just figure out how things work. What I would like is what I'm looking at and what I see the enemy doing to give me any indication as to its intentions and what it's physically capable of. But there's, a, some, there's something a friend of mine said to me that really, really struck me when they were fighting, when they were watching us fight Rolana, and it's that her swords seem to like change weight between swing combos. Mm. Like her swords are a different, they have a different sense of physical weight and presence depending on which moves she's doing, she's doing due to the sense of like the fact yeah, that yeah, yeah, she yeah, either yeah. speeds up or sometimes there's the double overheads that come at you like blindingly slowly in that they seem to want to convey that there's a shitload of like weight and power behind this, but it doesn't hit any harder than any other attack really. So it, it's really, really jarring in that sense, and I see that all over the DLC. Mm. <laughs> this is a Beowit original. Um, <laughs> very good, very good. Ah! <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's the, it's the brush strokes, the lettering. It's all... I, I yeah. would show it if it would fucking load. There we go. It actually just deleted a thought totally I just had. Fine. I wanted to say something. No, I just see starving kids in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, good, it's a good meme. Well, uh, Theo talking about the weight of swords, does that trigger anything for you? Uh, no, it was, I had the thought before that. It, it, it's going to come back eventually, don't worry. They always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you sounded... Oh, it's, it's back. Okay. Uh, so, 
I, the feeling I got from just seeing a couple of people fight uh, enemies that I've fought before, uh, bosses specifically, I feel like the, the, it feels like certain builds are just not viable at all, almost compared to other ones. And I don't mean it in a way it's like, oh, this one is stronger and maybe more reasonable to use. It seems if you use like something very slow, you just have to stay back until you see it's like, oh, there might be an opening there, and then hit, and then just go away. Or I have I have a build that's more that sounds stupid the way I'm phrasing it because that's yeah that's how it works, metal. You fucking retard. It's like yeah, okay, that's what I'm not not exactly what I meant though. <laughs> Because if, if if I used my my build uh, with the uh, uh, fl fl flower of blood river of blood, um, if you, the problem with that enemy, especially with Rilana, is the camera can't keep up with the fast movements she does when you stay close, like she, because she spins around you like crazy, and then the camera goes like boo boo boo, and then it's like oh I want to dodge right, but then the camera moved already, so I dodged in the other direction or something like that. Yes. And it's like, oh, that's not where I wanted to go. So I don't f never felt in, felt in control. So um, it's like this thing. It's like, why is this still a problem? I don't understand. Maybe if, if the camera can't handle it, don't make her do these crazy things that move around you. That's the thing I wanted to say. Yeah, is like we've known that the Souls camera has been frankly dog shit for a long while. Like it's a really bad camera. However, its badness mattered less in the older games because the older games didn't have as much visual clutter and visual information that you needed to process. This doesn't excuse their badness, this just means that in Shadow of the Erdtree, the badness is exacerbated by how they're choosing to design things. And frankly, it's been over 10 years at this point, it's not funny anymore, FromSoft. Fix the <laughs> fucking camera. Like, uh, something like the Dancing Lion. So first off, it flies. This pulls the camera like down towards the ground, which it cannot go into. It scrapes up against, which causes your character to take up more of the screen. The lock-on point is fairly high up its body, and it raises up the front of its body a lot as well, thus you know pulling up the camera again. It swings around wildly, and it's covered in particle effects and mm -hmm. cloth physics and hair physics, and then lightning phys like then lightning effects and then cold effects and wind effects. There is stuff everywhere in terms of visual clutter and a spinning camera that is constantly tilted upward to deny you a proper sense of depth perception in terms of what's on the ground. So like, mm. when something's flying in the air and it fires something down at you, it can be kind of hard to tell when it's actually going to reach you when you're locked on. And if the solution is don't lock on, I don't want to be hearing that, fellas. Like, <laughs> um, because not locking on, I've tried it and I've seen the gameplay, it does not improve matters because the camera does nothing on its own and you have to babysit it with the button you use to, with the digit you use to press the button to roll. Yeah. So I feel, I feel I, at this point you have to play with mouse and keyboard actually if you want to keep up with the camera, I guess. Pretty much. Have you, have you heard about how uh, jumping is actually apparently a pretty damn viable response? Yeah, to you, get I, you, you get iframes yes. uh, with there's, jumping. There's That's a lot you... of moves in the DLC that are very good to jump. Some of them are very, very clear because they will like they will send out a shockwave exactly along the floor. Like it retextures the floor almost. It's not even like visually raised at all. Then there are others that make it a lot harder to tell because they are si slightly elevated and your jump is like doesn't take you very high. And it doesn't give you many frames either, so it's hard to tell when it's actually the correct response. Yeah. Um, how are you, you so, feeling uh, on Mesmer? You, you, you have more positive oh. things to say about him, right? Mesmer's good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't Mesmer's believe awesome. it. I Mesmer's really, really like really Mesmer. Good. I like him a lot. Uh, he's got a lot of the Elden Ring rot. Like one of his uh one of his spear thrust attacks, he like goes into the posture, he brings the spear back, very clearly telegraphing a thrust, and then as he as he goes forward in the motion, he drags it along the ground, slowing its momentum, and then snaps it up to catch you at roll catch timing. So, you know, that's pretty AIDS. And in phase two, what well, like he has his fair share of anime attacks and his fair share of tracking. His fair share of everything I think is wrong with bosses in Elden Ring, but some fucking how he manages to be good despite it. So like, you know, congratulations to the developers on that. <laughs> that's, that's funny, I think that that's where we differ, because I, I don't mind these specifically. Like, there's some of them that I can actually, like, accept and I don't mind. 
but like the especially like the whole crazy snapping stuff that's the ones mm -hmm. that are like ugh. it's it's when it's when i think the visual in information is like actively lying to me and it's not a faint not yeah, a clear yeah. faint in the video game i've played video games with faints they're not common because it's a hard thing to implement because it's the person like they are making a legitimate attack but then they're watching for your response to adjust what they're doing to counter your response right which is in a video game, we'd call that input reading, probably. But <laughs> yeah. well, it was um, a whole. It was a, it was a very prominent mechanic in Mordhau. I have almost a had a, have almost a thousand hours in Mordhau, and mm -hmm. yeah, there was a button specifically for fainting where you would try and, you know, you'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna get you," but you'd have that window where you could, if you wanted to, yep. you know, press Q and pull back your attack, and if you got someone to, you know, preemptively block, they'd be like, "Oh, there's a window," so. Mm -hmm. I guess, like, part of the thing in that regard is because your primary and almost only defensive mechanism is rolling, uh, that severely limits what they can do with attack timing and things like feints, because I can only roll at a set speed. I can only roll, like, they come out at set intervals. They can only come out slower than those intervals. I can't speed up my ability to roll, and my ability to roll is quite slow because of the animation commitment pillar. So it, designing something like a feint in that regard, it has to be designed in such a manner that I can then roll it again, I guess, if they are watching for me to roll. But then that sort of defeats the point, because then I just roll twice at normal roll timing, and <laughs> I don't know, we haven't really achieved anything. That's a funny tidbit, it's very easy to poison Relana. Or it takes like, or it takes like six or seven much. darts. <laughs> Regarding weapons, just quickly, uh, I used a Colossal Sword for pretty much the entire thing. I used the God Slayer Greatsword. Um, I picked up a Light Greatsword at one point, and I kept trying to use that on regular enemies, but then I would find regular enemies that didn't get staggered by it, but did get staggered by my bigger weapons. So my bigger weapons were just a lot easier to fight them with, so I just did that instead. But for bosses, I found I was getting consistently like one attack per opening more or less regardless of my attack type like my weapon size so i ended up just using whatever my biggest weapon was for the biggest hit and the most stance break it, until the final boss the final boss was uh hostile to that shall we say <laughs> uh not to mention he has a couple of attacks that are as of yet not consistently dodgeable mm. um you are he not a, a fan move. of Prime Radan or whatever the fuck he's called, right? <laughs> it's fucking Radan again, bro. <laughs> he's got his like, he's got little tootsies. So far. His little it's so fucking tasteless. Like, they actually did the what if you fought Artorius in his prime, bro, <laughs> thing. Like, I don't know, man. This cannot be the same company that made Artorius. But I guess it is somehow, and we live in a world where that's the reality. But yeah, um, that that's important to me that people understand. Radan has moves at current that are not dodgeable. He has a move in phase one and two where he like swings both of his swords, bringing them together, like a cr crossed in front of him, and then does like an X slash in front of him. Uh, the first two slashes of that, if you roll the first one, the second catches you. The only way this is not the case is with picture frame perfect timing and uh, positioning, because there's micro terrain all over the arena, and you need him to be slightly elevated so that the second one goes over you. Cool. Like, this is not the sort of thing <laughs> that you can actually. This is not the sort of thing that Souls games can ask of you. It is not reasonable to do so. <laughs> The um the dance from Melania was was considered unblockable for at least a while, right? Or it's very yeah. hard. Yeah. I think the way I did it, I mean, it was two years ago. I think when I saw her starting starting to do it, I just started running away. So the first and second probably gonna miss, mm. and then roll through most of the third one. I think. That's the funny thing with Melania, though, is the difference between these attacks is the attack I'm describing from Radan is his fastest attack. It's oh. his quickest one. And yeah. Melania, it's like very clearly telegraphed, like, I'm going to do a huge thing now, you better be scared. Which I, I still don't think Waterfowl is a good move, but the fact that it is so slow indicates to you that, you know, something big is about to happen, maybe, I don't know, create some space. I, don't, I think it should maybe be easier to roll at point blank, or perhaps there should just be more things like Waterfowl Dance in the game to condition a player to understand that rolling is not a be-all end-all solution to everything you run into 
but the game we're in is one where rolling is like the designated solution to just about everything you run up against, so I don't know if that's a great idea either. You'd have to pretty fundamentally redesign Elden Ring to make that make sense. Well, someone's got a quote here. I'd rather be able to circle strafe to win, EFAP. <laughs> it's weird yeah. to uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> attribute that to, to that's, EFAP. That's what he's, yeah. Yeah, that's what EFAP's saying, not me, not I. <laughs> but all right, fair even, enough. Like, I even remember, um, even like The Witcher 3, you would have like your roll that was longer distance, and you'd also have like a sidestep. It's like two different yeah. kinds of dodging, so that you didn't like put yourself far away from the enemy for a dodge. One was riskier, but kept you within melee range, and the other was like, oh, yeah, I need to get out of here, kind of. You'll see this with a lot of more competent action games, is they have like variety of speed and distance in terms of the responses you can have to an attack. You will have your quicker options, your slower options that gain more distance, verticality is usually on the table, parries are a thing, and I don't mean like souls parries that just stop the enemy from attacking or reset them into something else. I mean like a timed block essentially. But in a, in a game like Elden Ring, or the Souls series, you're pretty much just rolling. That's all you really have at your disposal. Maybe you can block, but the nature of blocking means it's easier, but worse. Maybe you can parry, but not everything is parryable, and mm -hmm. parrying is sort of destructive to fight flow in its own way. What would you say is the uh, key aspect for why you prefer Mesma over uh, the others? Uh, articulating why a Souls boss is good is kind of a difficult intangible to me. Uh, I just watched Metal get roll caught twice by delayed attacks and tilted. Sorry. Um... Oh, th th <laughs> this is me at full tilt, by the way. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm probably like half an hour before I just go to bed. Uh, that just that just <laughs> makes me mad. Like you roll at a pretty reasonable timing, and you're like, actually, this one's coming down slower. Um, the thing with Mesma is, uh. It's essentially just a flow state. You find with the better bosses or the good bosses that you can enter more of a flow with them of like getting through their stuff while finding your opportunities to punish, right? Um, and understanding, uh, also, you know, just understanding what they do. <laughs> Being able to see what's going on in their moveset and tell approximately, at the beginning at least, how you should respond to it. Mesma has a lot of long, complex, and fairly modular strings that mean there's a lot to learn, but also a lot that you can figure out quite easily. Um, and I don't know. It's Again, it's intangible. The fact that I can get into a rhythm of going through all of his attacks while also managing to get damage in myself. Well, I mean, you know, it's... Uh... A complicated dance. Do, do you yeah. have any appreciation for them creating a very large amount of DLC? Um, I can't bring myself to give praise along those avenues when I think just about everything in the DLC is bad. Like, no. I think the legacy dungeons are the legacy dungeons are the most shocking step down for me. They are like empty, and they are littered with graces. Like, there is a bonfire every two seconds. I remember the people I was talking to while I'd play it, I was just, like, baffled time and time and time again by how frequently I was getting graces. There's a point in one of the legacy dungeons where you have your first bonfire as you enter the region, then you do a little bit of level, you end up in a more vertical part of the level, like you go upstairs in the big building you're in, uh, do a little bit of walking across tight beams, fight some rats, uh, and then you find another grace up there. And then you head down a ladder and you can open a door behind you, and it leads you through one room, then through another door, back to the first grace. So you base it's essentially a useless shortcut, and two two graces that don't need to exist. Like the second grace is more or less directly above the first one, such that I'm never going to need to use the shortcut, or I'm never going to need to use the second grace. Hmm. Dude, I had spans where like I would fight two regular enemies and like one bigger enemy and then I would find another grace. It was crazy. Do you recognize you have the hottest take on this game? <laughs> I, I do recognize that. Hopefully I can explain it and hopefully people Good. will be willing to hear me out, but seeing the responses in chat hasn't made me optimistic, I'm not gonna lie. I, thought well, I, was I wouldn't harsh, expect, I, I mean, you, you can't, <laughs> the thing is, there's a big difference between ranting about how you feel on a 
on a stream yep. and having a video with as cleared up thoughts as possible and video evidence supporting what you're saying, you know? I mm -hmm. suppose I, I'm curious about the nature of the conversation since um, from sort of the outside looking in, it does seem like get good is a prevalent response to uh to like uh negative sentiments towards yeah. Elden Ring. Whether mm -hmm. now whether or not that's accurate or not, I suppose is a different conversation. Maybe there are some instances where people uh they just gotta get good, all right? <laughs> there will oh, be sure. there will be cases of skill issue. Like that is real. Um I suppose um, I just find it interesting that it's almost at the point now that like that it that it's it can be difficult it seems in any way to criticize uh uh, like a FromSoft game because of the the meta surrounding yeah. it is uh, long and uh, and and you know it's feels like it's kind of steeped a little bit in uh, particularly the you know the fair assessment that a lot of game journals are are not very good yeah. at video games. <laughs> <Case> <laughs> That's just real. Head. Good old. Well, dude. I, <laughs> I appreciated the meme that to unlock this <laughs> DLC you have to beat Moog, and it was like, so there'll be no reviews of this game. Then. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, no, that, that's funny. Yeah. It's good memes. Like it is good memes. For what it may or may not be worth, I can. I'm like pretty good at this video game at the very least. I'm good at Souls games. Like I said, I've I've done some pretty wild shit, particularly in Sekiro. The thing is, Theo, is you got to make sure to put that footage in your video. So the people, yeah, the people I guess so. You're good at video games. Yeah, like right now, I we're showing Metal dominating really... Rolana. That's right, <laughs> exactly. I would good be job, Metal. I, Thanks, this man. is probably going to come across as egotistical. I'm fine with that. I'd be pretty happy to put money on me having a much stronger understanding of all of the boss move sets than like a lot of people. Not everyone, of course, but I understand how these bosses work like really well now because I spent a lot of time fighting them and learning them. Because I'm not using ashes or anything like that. I just have my sword that I hit them How with. How much have you uh, put into it? Uh, the DLC took me like 60 hours, I think. That's a long DLC. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Content-wise, it's pretty dense. It's there's oh, there's yeah, lots of stuff the, in it. The things I'm seeing a lot of celebration oh. for is that it's a big old chonker. Oh. Which, I think for anybody who enjoys the way that it's built up, that's probably a really <laughs> nice meal of a, of a DLC. Yep. It's worth when celebrating she... the fact that it is large. However, I would caution that with it is large in part due to the fact that it is adopting open world game design, which often seems to be anathema to good content, especially in a Souls context. In a Souls context especially, the sort of level design you need from a Souls game for a lot of what it's doing to work, I can't imagine... Like, It feels to me like you would need infinite time and money to make a Souls game in an open world sized space and have and maintain the encounter design and level design of something like Dark Souls 1. Oh, Mel's losing it. <laughs> oh, this oh, is, this is just, very close for <laughs> before I just. I remembered. I, I remembered a really funny thing. You'll want to hear this metal. Did you know this boss has an input read heal punish? And better yet, this boss has an input read heal punish that is a faster version of a move she already has, specifically so that it can catch you while you are healing. Oh, I mean, I had a feeling because she always threw shit at me when I was trying to heal from far away. I didn't yeah. know it was like a faster move though. <laughs> yeah, the, the sorcery wave thing she does. Yeah. Uh, she does a faster version of it to heal punish you. That's me. The normal version like she does takes longer to come out. They're missing the opportunity to have an enemy that talks and when you heal says, hey, stop that and throws stuff at you. Think, you know, it'd be fun. I've joked about this. What I think they're missing is an enemy with a grab attack, where if they successfully grab you, they just reach into your bag and start chugging your Estus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's that mine I now, would buddy. fucking love that. <laughs> it was funny, because this is the first time I'm watching back by my own stream there. I'm just fucking rolling around like a crazy person. Yeah, like when, when I was about to ask earlier, when those little crescent thingies fly towards you, what are you supposed to do except just spam your dodge over and over um, and over? The I think, solution I, think... I found was you can sprint past the first two, then if you jump the sec the third one at the right timing, you will fall under the fourth one, and then you can <laughs> roll the last one. Yeah, oh, well, I, think I, I think I went... That's intuitive. Uh... Yeah, that's... Thank you, Rags. Thank you for fucking channeling me. It is, there is no understanding of what an intuitive response might be to half well, the things that happen. Look at that nuke, dude. Game. I'm saying I'm like I'm a I'm a big gamer kind of guy, and I don't play these games because Jesus fuck, why why would I ever fucking do that? But I'm looking at these moves, and I'm like, when I when I see this character, like 
I have. There's no way to know what's going oh, to right. happen. Why do you Why when do you I, think people want to play these games? Well, I just I, for, I, for I, the no, record, no, no uh, Theo immediately okay. regretting teaming up with Rags after that statement. <laughs> no, I, they, they don't, they don't really <laughs> deep into it. All right. So, but I'm, I'm like, there, a lot of this stuff doesn't like. Some of these are like, oh, you're going, you're arching back this way, so it makes sense you'll attack mm. this way. But then, like the magical stuff happens, and I'm like, oh, a lot of this is just well, like you. you just uh, what, what they what they also well, like to well, do, well, right. they like to surprise you with like a really big move that goes over the whole uh, arena. And so the first time, you basically never really know what you're supposed to do. Like she has one that has like a triple area wide attack. Yeah, the first time it has like a. Uh, is that is, is that gonna come flying at me? And then it just went down. I was like, "What?" And then I died. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I yep. guess I have to jump because... here." But that's just an attempt you just gotta have to throw out there. Because for that move, they decided to make all three of its hits combo into themselves. Like the each one launches you, and they keep juggling you, and the third one then like tags you. Yeah, but for the first time, it's pretty I did... cringe to design a move like that. But it's, that's fine. It's very easy to dodge the second time, though. I was like, "Oh, I just." Yeah. Jump the press times. the jump button. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, crazy. You guys should have got the pizza cutter. I'm telling you, I yeah, should've. maybe. It's yes, really maybe hard to. It was really random. One time, I got her to stagger down, and I could like uh, visceral attack her. I still don't know why that happened. That happened one time only, and I don't know why. People are still talking about difficulty in the chat. I'm. I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna. The problem I is the difficulty, why. guys. The problem is the way that the difficulty is designed. I like difficulty. I don't like difficulty of this kind. I think this is oh, deceptive yeah. design that is that does not result in a fun played experience. And if I wanted to play something that was focused on combat this heavily, I would go and play a better action game. I'd go and play Sifu. I'd go and play Monster Hunter. I'd go and play Devil May Cry. I'd go and play Bayonetta. Secular. I'd go and play Neo. Sekiro. Yeah, sure. Even Sekiro. I mean, even. Do you, uh... <laughs> it's, you know, on the lower side in terms of, like, action oh. game complexity oh. and depth. Racism. That's what that is. It's, it's fun you... and satisfying, but, you know. Do you think that uh, FromSoft would ever make a game like uh, Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1? Like, again, in the future? Uh, do I don't think it's bad? ever happening again. I would say I hard think... no. I think Elden Ring mm. 2 will happen next. Uh, I think this is, like... Especially with how much this is being rewarded, I think we're going down the direction of spectacle, of more of fighting bosses that do loads of big combos, of you know huge gratuitous anime moves, and so on and so on and so forth. I think that's just where we're going forever now. So this may come as very offensive to many people, but uh, no. I see Elden Ring as the McDonald's of From Software. <laughs> and, um... I mean, well, oh, wait, wait. I uh, okay. I've had some McDonald's meals in my life, and they can be entertaining and fun. And Elden Ring too, when it arrives someday, I'll happily indulge in a McDonald's meal. I'll have a little good look, see, go through it, and be like, "Well, that was that," and then move on. A way I've been referring to this game and this DLC as well now is it's Skyrim for people who think they're too good for Skyrim. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> like, you know, you know the sort of gamer sentiment of like, <laughs> yeah, Skyrim's like a Skyrim's such an empty game. There's nothing in it. That's that sort of stuff. You know, the people who are very, very <laughs> happy and quick to shit on Skyrim, then they'll go and play Elden Ring, which is fundamentally an extremely similar experience in terms of what it's offering you, in terms of how it is played in that regard. Like these people are booting it to bum around exploring stuff for a while. That's it what you do in Skyrim. It's, it's, as I'm you sorry. mentioned, though, aesthetically speaking, it is a gorgeous world uh, a lot of the time with mm -hmm. with creatures that That's are awesome. just. When you get that sense of seeing a big old creature, you're like, "Oh my god! Look, look at look at this craziness that's happening!" It's like that that can be enough for a lot of people, and I'm not I'm yeah. not uh, excluded oh. from that group of people. I I enjoy wandering around in a world like this as well. How often do you think it is a case in uh, Elden Ring, for instance, that like a boss will have the kind of emotional impact of some of the bosses in the earlier games, like uh, that big wolf? Or, in uh, terms of win? bosses, or... uh, it hasn't <laughs> happened for like three games. Well, isn't this a complicated <laughs> question? Because it would really be down to the person, or um, I, mean, I guess sure. I'm. Just I guess I can only speak to my own experience. Uh, I, like, yeah. The, the closest thing to an emotional experience I got was, I guess, Morgot, and that's just because I like him as a character, which is weird to say about a Souls game. Like, <laughs> it's, it's weird to find a Souls boss who, like, actively dislikes you, 
Like they know you, they know who you are and actively dislike you rather than just killing you because you're in the way or you ran into their room or something. No, no, no. He knows who you are and what you're trying to do, and he is not even remotely a fan. And the the performance by the voice actor really, really helps to sell it. It helps that Morgoth is probably my favorite fight mechanically in Souls at this point. Mm. Which is kind of funny because he's the easiest boss in the universe to trivialize. There is inevitably going to be a correlation between how much I like a fight mechanically and how much the fight had an emotional impact on me. So it's worth considering that. But yeah, most of what's going cool. on in Elden Ring, it's not doing it for me. They mm. nearly did a thing in the DLC with one of the boss fights, but the boss unfortunately has a cancer move set. So <laughs> I don't know. Better luck next time. <laughs> and essentially, it was kind of a rerun of Sif as well. So I don't know. I'm not willing to give too much credit. Man, I um, thought I was harsh while I was streaming this game, but Jesus Christ. You <laughs> knew Theo would be harsher than you. I, I'm sorry. Like, again, I can't recall having had less fun with a game. And part of that probably comes down to seeing, like, a series that I have quite enjoyed just continually go further and further in a direction I really hate. Um, because someone said, uh, it sounds very conceited of all of you. I would just go as far as saying this is because this is so far away from the normal accepted take for this game that it would come across that way. But what we've mm. said about this could be, you know, transposed into all kinds of different media. I just think that uh, we tend to have a very unconventional, and when I say we, I'm more so referring to myself, Theo, and somewhat with Metal as well, is uh, Elden Ring is quite beloved, it, it, undeniably. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, for sure. But like, I want tr people to try and remember. I have hotter takes than this. I've got hyper criticism <laughs> of Dark Souls Three, Bloodborne, Dark Souls One, even. It's um, mm -hmm. it goes it goes all the way through. There's this is uh, design that they've done that I adore, and then there's other stuff from just like you fucking assholes, <laughs> which you I think to some extent, depending on what you're choosing to talk about, a lot of people would agree. They'd be like, oh yeah, that was an asshole thing. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can take one look at Bed of Chaos, everyone is ready to shit yeah. on Bed of Chaos. Justifiably. It's awful. Until this DLC, it was, in my opinion, the worst thing they'd ever done. Oh, and I'd agreed. keep seeing people make the Bed of Chaos <laughs> comparison for, like, other bad bosses, and I felt I felt the need to remind them, no, 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 you don't remember how bad Bed of Chaos is. Like, <laughs> it, it was on a whole new level of bad. It like, was so unbelievable. Or just said Bloodborne is close to perfect. Like, oh. <laughs> I, dude, I love Bloodborne, but holy I love shit. it. But come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe Bloodborne not. is like such a funny thing for us because every time we play it, we complain about it. We're also like, man, this is awesome. I adore I it. It's one of my favorite it. games, but it's got <laughs> problems galore. Yeah. And I really like the bosses in the old Hunters DLC. They were really cool. Yeah. Mm. Ludwig. <laughs> what, well, wait, why are you going? Hmm, I just said I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the guy who gave up on Orphan of Cars, I did, you but it, it took me like eight hours because I'm no oh, good no, at these Oh no, the horrors! Orphan of yeah. Cars is old news. There's bosses that are harder than Melania, no, who's sure, harder I'm than sure, Cars. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure that's the case, but like it's you know, look, all right. Yeah, I really like that world. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, the art direction's I mean, really cool. It's so incredibly well realized. Yeah. God, it looks it's it's just such a neat world. Great. I guess style, I guess if I can vibe. if I can break the, some of the my negativity towards this DLC for a second, it did a few things that I liked. <gasps> there oh, is an area that is almost good that is ruined by backseating developer messages. Oh. <laughs> there is a there is he came so, so, he came so close. Like, hold on, hold have, on, wait. Do they have the yellow paint? best for last? Uh, not not the yellow paint, but oh, um, okay. essentially it is a stealth section. Um, but all over the floor are developer messages telling you essentially how to use the stealth again, but in like diegetic terms. One of those messages maybe would have been fine, but there is like three of them in the same place, reiterating to you how the game's incredibly simplistic stealth works. Like, it, you know how everyone got on Ragnarok's case for the backseating NPCs? Like, oh. it is on that sort of level. Mm. Well... So if I it, have if one it... more thing in terms of good. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, there was an experiential, like, lore moment that I unironically really liked. <gasps> the DLC did a thing that I can say without mitigation that I liked a lot. 
and it was just two items in a location with a track in the background. And that track was part of the main theme, which I famously hate, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but they did a cool thing. They're capable of it. It's just they don't do it much oh, wait, Someone anymore. just said, you guys talked more about Elden Ring than Acolyte. You might want to rename the stream. Like, That's what? That's not, true. <laughs> That's not That's really true, true at all. Did you miss the, miss the, the, the middle part? It was the middle really part. Like four yeah. hours? <laughs> Well, and I was actually going to say, we're probably. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, Elden Ring, Theo? In conclusion? Um, nothing in particular that comes to mind. I think I've covered pretty much everything that was very upsetting to me about it. I mm. shall be very excited to check out this video. Uh, feel free to answer absolutely not, but is there an ETA on it? Can people expect it at a particular time? Um, you know how this works, Theo. The faster you do it, the more interested <laughs> people will be. Yeah, I can get it out there for the algorithm. Um, mm. Currently, no ETA. I am working as fast as I can. I have mm. much motivation at current to make this thing because, man, I again, I would really love it if people would look at these games more critically, which sounds snobbish, I know, but <laughs> those are my honest feelings, so call me a snob if you want. Are you saying that they lack media literacy? Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, well, Game uh, Souls players, they kind of lack video game literacy oh in a way. Oh my god. <laughs> god you it's you will find on. when you talk to Souls players a lot that they have played no other action games ever, so they don't know how much better it gets. Well, all they know is roll and R1. I, I would assume that uh, the aspect that was helping, like the the you know the Soulsborne games, was the RPG aspect of it. That that was like a big thing that was playing into it, rather than like strictly the combat. You'd think so, but more and more the games continue to focus on the combat as the cornerstone of the experience. Like in this DLC, your levels don't matter because the Scadu tree takes care of it. Uh, nothing really matters other than doing boss fights. There is exploration, which to From's credit, there are some rewards in it, but it's come at the cost of the interconnectedness of an open world, which leaves one to wonder if it was worth it. I'm not sure if I would make the determination that it wasn't, but it is worth saying that they did try something there. But a large mm -hmm. part of the experience, and what makes the experience valuable to people, I guess, is the boss fights. They dominate the discourse, they dominate what everyone says about these games, and they are the primary talking points, and they're clearly where a lot of the attention went. Are you suggesting that From Software has been flanderized? Absolutely. Absolutely. <gasps> dun, like I dun, said, dun. Elden Ring is Dark Souls 3 turned up to 11, and Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree is Elden Ring turned up to 12. I suppose that is an interesting thing about the um about like FromSoft and their games is that it it's almost like uh again looking from the outside and it, it seems like they kind of there's still an attitude towards them of being niche games when at this point they're like massive. Absolutely <laughs> not. They know? are mainstream as fuck. Because like uh, I mean the fact that Souls Souls like has become a genre feels indicative of the massive. There's so many. Of, uh, yes, it's crazy games. now. Like the Demon mm. Souls, Demon Souls was very much that was a niche game. Like yeah. that came out at a time and wasn't like super duper popular, uh, but obviously sold well enough to justify making a sequel. And then even like as popular as Dark Souls was when it came out, that uh, it's kind of gone up and up and up and up from uh, from here, which is I'd, just very interesting. I then it still kind of maintains it and, and almost like it's niche when it's one yeah. of the best selling games of the year. <laughs> I'd say that Dark Souls 3 is where it made, like, the big break. That's where you started to be able to say Souls games are mainstream now. Yeah, I remember that. The hype mm. was crazy. that game was like an event. Mm-hmm. Well, and Elden Ring is their most successful game, right? By um, Elden Ring, for many, many, many months, I think, held current play accounts higher than DS3's all-time maximum on Steam. So wow. Damn. Yeah, so, not niche. Not niche even no. slightly. Well, and it, and it was already like a golden child for either analysis or comparison in any gaming video. I remember that being a yep. meme. Every time you did not analyze anything, you have to mention Dark Souls. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of interesting. Because, yeah, I'm sure this game is one of the most analyzed probably out there. Everyone's got to do a different kind of breakdown and stuff. And it'll be interesting to check out yours. I'm... um. You know, personally, I just, uh, I, I've lost my passion somewhat for this, uh, I guess, iteration, this installment. Um, like I said, I what think, do you think I'll... What would have to do to, uh, to make you more excited? 
well, other than the obvious, let's go the obvious answers first. Bloodborne two, I would be actually like <laughs> just, I, I'd be salivating at the the fucking steam loading bars. I would, I would just be You'd like, be like the road jack with the going, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> dude. If they did anything close to what I'd expect it to be, I would fucking lose my mind. Um, yeah. Then the you know Bloodborne remaster, I would also be crazy into that. Sekiro two would be like just oh amazing. But um, like I said, I expect Elden Ring 2, and I'd probably play it when it came out, do one playthrough and be like, yeah, that was that was a fun on the bun. Now I'll move on, because, um, yeah, I don't know, it's just not as engaging. And uh, I haven't really got a passion to exactly figure out why. Uh, Interesting. That's fair. Considering, mm. considering that you made massive, like, 10-hour long videos on... <laughs> On the back well, so of the day, that is interesting. some people forget that wasn't solely motivated by my hatred of Dark Souls 2. It was I was very upset with how Matthew Matosas was being treated by a uh, H Bomber guy. <laughs> really fucking pissed me off. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, of course yeah. all the slander that Dark Souls One got. When it's a game that absolutely <laughs> deserves criticism, it not in the it has like uh, the fuck going for the healing system in Dark Souls One as though it's not the fucking best one. It's so fucking crazy. They like mm. perfected the healing system and decided to never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny in a way, I guess. For my part, regarding future Souls things, I think I'm done. I, I think I'm cashing my check. Like, I was offended by this DLC in a way that I don't <laughs> want to support FromSoft anymore. I would like to not. Oh, yeah. But do you mean that because yeah, will you? I'm gonna playing. do my fucking best. Would you? Like... <laughs> would you play Elden Ring two? I would refuse? not. Would you play Bloodborne two? I would not. I don't think. Oh, really? The at this point, the closest thing they could get to grabbing me is Sekiro two, and I, like, again, I want to say I wouldn't play it. <laughs> like, mm. I don't want to play it. Who knows when the time comes? You know, like. Moods are fickle, but I am currently in a position where I want to hold to. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to support games like this I mean, anymore. You know, maybe when you dig in, you end up making a video apologizing to Elden Ring, and you say it's actually one of the <laughs> more <laughs> solid uh, installments in the action genre. Jesus, <laughs> maybe uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, let's not I rule guess. It out, you know, stranger things have happened. They have. Well, yeah. If ever I want more out of Sekiro, I can just play Sifu. So that's a thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sifu's good. Sifu um... is like if Arkham and uh, if the Arkham games and Sekiro had a baby, and it was like a good game. <laughs> they had a baby, and it wasn't cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, on that note, I suppose that wraps up the, uh, because there's just not going to be a huge amount of coverage of the Fringe and Rags don't really play, uh, I don't think they're going to play Shadow of the Earth Tree. I've barely played it. And then Metal, have you finished it yet? Or are you still going through it? No, I'm, I'm like halfway through. I, I made it to the last boss, but I have like three more areas to explore and I'm not going to touch the last boss before I got the rest of the Skibidi blessings because... I tried him a couple of times, like, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, he was, I think, a couple of days project for me. Great. <laughs> um, well, you'll but be... Uh... I went in there with 13 Skibbity Tree, and I refused to go and get more, because, <laughs> like, my, my belief is I will explore as much as I want to, because a core pillar of this game is player freedom. So I will right. explore as much as takes my fancy, and I will go and beeline progression or whatever when that takes my fancy. I'm not going to go out of my way to over-explore in order to get statistical boosts. Uh, yeah, they clearly didn't want me to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got the, my Skibbity Blessings offline. I was like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. go around and grab him. And that took me like 30, 45 minutes. And also, it's kind of funny because in this footage, you won't see me beat her because I just give up. But offline, like during my lunch break or something, I went and actually made the build a bit better because it's kind of funny because the build I'm using in this uh, in this playthrough is, to, is the, <laughs> it's the character I used for my killing bosses with items only mm. playthrough. So fucking crazy that you did that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Congratulations, made me do it. Way. That was a nightmare a little bit, but man, I, I I got some I had some streamer privileges there because I had w one viewer who was like, "Yo, I got all these items you need. I can just drop them to you." And and on this character, I have like nine hundred ninety nine of basically everything. So he basically took away the time for me to farm everything. So that was very nice. 
Because if you never, if you never farmed rot pots, I'll tell you, that's the fucking most annoying shit ever. Because it's only dropped by these enemies that are in the rot lake in Elden Ring. Incredible. Yeah, and the drop rate is really low, even with the uh, heighten discovery and everything. It was really mm. annoying. I don't know what it is we'll watch together, but I'm trying to load up your, your victory run, but it looks like shit, and I don't know how to get it to not look like shit. It just won't refuse it. I don't know. But yeah, so I, I, I grabbed like a couple of talismans that give me more defense. So basically what I was trying to do is like, oh, that looks like it's almost 40 ADP. What the hell? That's weird. Uh, well, why don't you give a little uh, commentary here on your victory run, Metal? Uh, I dodged to the left and back and hoped for the best in a certain rhythm. That's what I did. That's that's it. <laughs> it does seem, judging from the 12 minutes into this stream, you you had a bit of the benefit of having taken a break. It's just taking a break, and well, this is also me with like 400 more damage because I collected uh, items from the ground and put them into the bonfire, mm. <laughs> and also more defense in general. And I picked up the wondrous physic that gives you like 20% more defense and then 15% more defense from the great shield talisman. So I just kind of was like, okay, I got to a certain point. I just need more attack and damage reduction so I can just tank through it if I need to be. So that's, that's basically mm -hmm. what I did. And then I came back the next day and I think I did it on my third try or something. It's often the way of things. It's like yeah, yeah. you take a break and sleep on it, and then you just blitz it the next oh, night because yeah. you've had time to, I guess, process what you've learned. I think a lot of times I just don't want to accept it because I'm stubborn with these games. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feel. We all do. Whereas every time I just go back and come back, uh, go to bed and then come back the next day, it's like at least you get a couple of good tries and then you get it on the day. It looks like you should not be rolling those two middle energy waves, but you're just getting away with it. Like I, they I, hit you I, and I then tried, you roll, you know? I tried sprinting to the right, it never worked, so I just... I yeah, don't know, the second I two something. catch you if you sprint. Yeah. I thought I was supposed to jump, and that worked pretty well for me, but... Do, do you see that just now? Like, yeah. I'm judging around her, I don't know why. Like, the camera goes like, oh, you go this way. But it worked somehow. That's because <laughs> you want to stay in close to get your punishes in, but... yeah. Because Rivers of Blood does not have a, a lot of uh, range. Nope. That's, that, that's one thing I noticed immediately, because I, I used Hand of Millennia. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was the weapon. And that had, more, that had more range, but I just didn't get the job done. The damage cover mm -hmm. wasn't good enough. I don't like the summon sword stuff she does, because specifically the move where she summons them overhead, if she then approaches you and goes into a move, the it can be impossible to dodge both, I think. Yeah, I mean, depending on how she times it, you, you yeah. just, you just have to face tank it. I've actually kind of noticing that where by the time the swords are at you and you have to dodge, she's at the distance where you're just actually just going to take it. Yep. Yeah, do they expect and you to immediately sort of things. put as much distance okay. between you and her as possible? Is that the idea? The second she does the spell. Yeah, you got it. There's the problem is her AI is like inconsistent insofar as sometimes she will chase oh, yeah. you when you do that, and other times she'll just stand around and let you get the swords out of the way. It's also just not very fun standing around waiting for the four swords to shoot out so that you can roll them like once or twice and then get back to yeah. fighting. So here's the thing about me, by the way. This is, as, this is completely subjective, but you can tell by my non-reaction that I beat her that I did not enjoy this fight. <laughs> Overall. Stone-faced. Non-plussed. Yeah, because if there's like really good fights, I remember I was like fucking losing my mind when I beat Orphan of Cause for the first time. It's funny. Oh, you got to Radan. Oh yeah, Radan. Oh yes. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. I only did like three streams. So, yeah. Yeah, I I I I fought him like one. Oh, you two, don't three, even want times. me to talk about the lore in this DLC, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But, like... Well, so to be fair, you can sort of build it as a. You you guys are planning a, a Metals Forge on this, yes. Uh, yep. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, next week or no? I think Mark said he needed like two. He wants two more weeks, which is fine by me. That makes me that gives me time to experiment a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the that's the idea. Well, that's so a nice I know... to. Uh... Oh wait, go ahead. Uh, just a th thing in chat. I know I should stop reading chat, but chatter. I know Melania acts the same way, but the difference is Melania is staggerable, and Melania doesn't have summoned swords that she shoots at you. 
Okay. So <laughs> you can actually approach and hit her. Whoops. Right. I was going to say it's a it's a good opportunity to sort of segue into talking about what everyone's got coming up and uh, where they can find that wonderful stream where you guys are going to talk in depth about Eldon Rong, the Shadow oh. of the Erd Tree, with a whole bunch of people who've completed it possibly even more than once, right? Yes. That'd be crazy. So, so I um, guess I'm just gonna gonna start on, unless someone else wants to go. Go ahead, Mel. Get right in. I stuck shall in. Go ahead. But yeah, uh, Metal's Forge, uh, which uh, will be renamed at some point. We still haven't decided when, <laughs> because it's not only Metal's Forge anymore. <gasps> Such a Mark's Forge. So still thinking about wh what the name might be. I kind of like just the Forge, but I don't know if that's too generic and just gives you weird search things. I know there's like thinking that goes into this. But uh, I don't know. Well, I we mean, you could do it the way we often did it with a lot of these things. See what chat have to offer. See what they think. What name they can Yeah, chat. With. Throw some, some sh schniz out. Maybe even Twitter them at me or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, uh, we're going to do a forge on this uh, DLC and maybe just talk about, uh, you know, difficulty. Is it too hard? What's going on? Uh, I did invite Theo. He hasn't really said yes particularly yet, but uh, <laughs> get me in that a... coach. <laughs> um, also, and, and just for people who are curious, uh, like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, give him a bit of a reason to go and check it out. You'll, you'll talk about the law in that stream, presumably too. Yes, yes. Lord. I don't think anyone there. Well, I don't know. I think Mark cares. A bit. Mark is actually pretty savvy with the lore, hey. so if he wants to talk about the lore, he. This he, is he's... Drunkle, the Silver Knight, and he ate the moon <laughs> one time, and now his sword is made out of the blood of his sister-in-law. Oh my! It looks God. like Rags is also it's very knowledgeable. Rags, rags is an expert on Elden Ring. Yeah, apparently. I didn't know yeah. Rags was actually. So uh, Rags, you're obviously video. invited to the. Isn't lore that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Zanzibar, forgive me, you know. But yeah, we'll be we'll be doing that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, tomorrow, obviously, also a forge. Tomorrow we do something fun. We're actually <gasps> going to talk about uh, the Blade movie, the Aye. first one. Uh, so that's going to be a good time. There's a cool movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, uh, what Bringy's first... going to be there. Uh, oh, actually, one. got Mr. Meme uh, on the hook. I, I got him to do a thing. So he's going to be there. Uh, and uh, me and Mark are going to be there, obviously. But uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. I'll, I'll be streaming more Eldon Ring. I think I'm like the only one of us who's actually streaming that at the moment. Uh, I think Mark did it once, but he was like, no, I can't concentrate. Else, right? There's probably some guys out there. No, it's like, uh, like of, <laughs> of us. Like the, 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 yeah, there's I'm, probably like one I'm guy out there, out. maybe. Yeah, just shut up. <laughs> I think Gary's streaming it. He's already beaten Radon. Oh man, he's so good at video games, damn. He's level one. Just wait till you see the thumbnail. <laughs> Does it have a scissor on it? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's been, that's been going on. Elvira, I, I the feel like we've Lord. already kind of given yeah, away what's coming. Been over but, it. Hey. Uh, ongoing video plans have been shelved because I need to, I need to do the Elden Ring thing. I, I feel quite strongly about this right now, mm -hmm. so hopefully that's coming down the pipeline. I'm fast tracking it as far, as far as I can, I guess. So don't expect anything particularly <laughs> soon. Shit. Oh yeah, the psycho pressure. I, I was gonna say me. I didn't want to interrupt Sorry. you, but look at that. That was so no, funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a starting. I love move. your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Just the eyebrows go up. Yeah. Like, mm. Radar was mad at you. <laughs> That would have been a good clip for the EFAB as well. Such an over the top the move. But yeah, that, that's essentially what I'm up to. And you'll see me on the forge when Metal does his thing, assuming, yeah, the invite stands by that point and we haven't, oh, you know, course. come to blows or, or something, you know? <gasps> <laughs> Edric's good, actually. Fuck you! Metal is my <laughs> worst enemy now. <laughs> Exposed Drama video alert. left and right. Gonna be with Keemstar soon. soon. Gonna beef it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Uh, little Platoon, I apologize if you found this all very um, unrelatable because you, you don't play such such peasantry as uh, from software games, do you? Or do you not? I, I do. I <gasps> have played a bit of Elden Ring. The only one I've ever finished is Armored Core 6, though, but that's because nice. I'm slightly retarded where Gundams are concerned and I like them. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I played that all the way through. That was great fun. Oh yeah, um, I'm like, uh, was even awesome. if like you beat the last boss by exploiting the invisible wall around the arena, which I think is cheating, but nevertheless, <laughs> it works. It works. 
Uh, yeah, next up for me, more Acolyte. I'm not sleeping tonight because the next one has to be out tomorrow, today, technically. So, um, Good straight Lord, from here man. back to medicine. I know. The it's sacrifices horrible. you make to let the world know how cringe it is. Didn't you know there are children <laughs> starving? <laughs> there are children starving in Africa and they will carry on starving for as oh, long as it takes no. them to finish the fucking show. I might send them a fiver once I'm done, though. The horror. Well, uh, I'll be excited to watch. Are you going to, like, release a huge compilation of your excessive, vile hatred of the Acolyte in one huge video um, at the end? Uh, or, or is that... You probably won't be able to for copyright, right? They'll come after you if you do that. They will. I mean, I might have a go. I don't know how... But like, if every video is 90... It's going to be long, because they're all basically averaging, like, 90 minutes in length at the moment. So we'll see. I'll, I'll stick them together and see if I can add anything extra to it, and then probably get bored because of the copyright fight and not. But if I can do that, I might. Very much fair enough. Um, well, uh, appreciate you, uh, you three joining us and Gary, of course. Bringy, Rags, is there anything you guys would like to talk about before we close out? Um, well, I don't, I don't play Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. Um, liar, I, you know all about the lore, dude. So, yeah, you just I, outed yourself as a lore expert. <laughs> I, I, what do I do? I play might as well Apex be. Legends with a mouse and keyboard, so I guess I'm what you'd call a hardcore gamer. Um, but yeah, you're such a cool gamer. I, can, I have don't, your, can, you get, can I have your gamer tag? I can DM uh, you one day? No, no, you're not. All, you, you, you just drag us down, me and all my cool friends who play on yeah, the probably. mega, mega super streamer uh, level. I, I got a DM from Dr. Disrespect the other week, so oh, I'm uh, sorry. unless oh. anything bad happens oh, regarding him, no. we're going to be... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really hitting the big leagues. But, um, no. Yeah, I I've got some stuff in the works, but I just don't want to say um, when they're coming out because I'm not exactly sure. But uh, stuff is uh, stuff's being worked on. Stuff do be so, stuffing. There you, so there you go. Yeah, things are things are uh, happening. You know the deal. Just working, editing dungeon, working on acolyte with um usually, and then Halo will be coming out after that. Yes, you folks better appreciate me and Free sacrifice basically the concept of sleeping to get those out as soon as uh, after they record. Yeah, it, it is a bit of a bitch. Not gonna lie. You sacrifice <laughs> but, yeah. the concept of sleeping. Does that mean I lose the ability to sleep? Yes, you we, don't made, need we sleep. made a deal. No one can sleep until we release. The <laughs> you don't need sleep. There's people dying in Africa or something. I don't know. Um, and then as for Halo, the, we shall update you when there are updates to be had. We're getting there. We're getting close to uh, yeah. finalizing all of it. That's going to be a fun adventure for you, I swear. It's uh, it's definitely. Oh, and there are, uh, we've got there are two Super Chat catch-ups on their way out. We, as per usual, very much appreciate the uh, the support, and we will get to every Absolutely. last message. Absolutely, 100%. They're all saved, and uh, we're going to find some slots to record more for you as well as get you some more EFAP movies, war, arc, flames, and like I said, TVs. And we are getting pretty damn close to the next anniversary. <gasps> oh my god, yeah, the big are. three double O. The you big get three hundred! Hopefully we can get start. through that, and then it'll be the build-up to Halloween, which is going to be a big boy this year. Oh boy. Halloween! We've got plenty Boy, planned. Halloween's great. I've been I've been enjoying everyone speculating on what franchise we did this time around. Yeah, it's been my fun favorite to ones see, uh, are when they the label guests. it and they say like it's obvious it's this one and then yeah, it's, clearly, I like that. it's, it's the clearly this one. Yeah, because I heard them talking about this in this video at this time, and that was when they were recording, so it must be. And then that person cries when they find out it was actually uh, <laughs> the, the, the Leprechaun movies. They see the thumbnail and they're like. No. <laughs> I mean, I really to be fair, if, they were, if we were doing the Leprechaun movies, I think people would be pretty excited. Yeah. So, uh, oh thank you all so much for joining us. We appreciate it, and we shall see you on the next thing, whatever it may be. But for now, yeah. goodbye. That's right, everybody. Bye, we will bye, see bye, you bye, later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Ah, it's oh local. my goodness! Mike didn't even get that one. That was a mic no, destroyer. A little oh. bit. It, it picked up something. Oh, there we go. Not for that.